Hello, good morning. Oh man, my nose feels even stuffier today than yesterday. <laughs> Shit. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Tamarin, my shaky nuggy friend. Good morning, Skew. Good morning, Arnold. Shugazi. Krimnops. Cloud Chaser. Good morning. What are we tangenting? No tangent. It was planned talking. It was the plan the whole time. Good morning, Age Leaf. Default use. Timmy Tams. Stray Wolf. Good morning. Good morning, Bailey. You heckin' cutie. This tangent stream makes sense. We tangent from sex cults into actually finding out who killed the sun. I don't, I don't know. I have a lot of material for today. So I don't, you know, I don't think there's a possibility of finishing early. <laughs> I'd be impressed if I managed to. Cute, cute chat. Cute Bailey. Cute. <laughs> Good morning, Timmy Tams. Good morning, Blue Spear. Grounder. Tony. There was a time you would not have minded being in a sex cult with Alice and Mac. I'm, I'm pretty sure they exclusively recruited women. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I don't think there were men in, in Nixium. Nixium? I don't know how to pronounce that word. There's only one vowel. Good morning, Talon. Good morning, Zexel. Triga Point. Good morning, Nasri. Hello. Morning, Moon Berserker. Cody. Huh. Stray Wolf. Good morning. We in for the long haul today? We're, well, I'm excited. I wanted to talk about this last week, but then I tangented. <laughs> there was a time she's gone off the deep end since then. I, you know, I feel like being a recruiter for a sex cult, you're probably already off the deep end. I'm gonna be real with you. That's sexist. Who wants to join my new sex cult with only males allowed? I'm, I'm sure you get a decent amount of people, but it'd probably turn into a bug chasing cult uh, quickly. You're here for sex cult Saturday. Let's fucking go, dude. Sex cult Saturday. Don't get that particular job without pre-existing damage. Speaking of pre-existing damage, apparently there's another mass shooting. Apparently... There's a mass shooting in North Carolina, which I just saw the breaking news shit all over Twitter, but then they're just like, it was on Thursday night. And it's like, we're on Saturday. This is, this is how, how little I go to places that have actual breaking news now. Didn't hear about a mass shooting until a full day after it finished. You saw that guy's Twitter before he got nuked? He was off the deep end. I, I wanna know. Because you know it's not going to be in the news. I want to know why he done did it. Mass shootings are pretty much a tradition at this point. Well, it looks like he went to like people's houses before he went to the school. So it's like, this dude had a fucking plan. All the mass shootings now are just fed BS anyways. I don't know. This one, I don't know. I don't know anything about this one. But like, just from the cursory information I looked at, it seems seems kind of strange. It seems kind of weird. Incels. I don't know if this is an incel shooting because he killed his brother. The bigger surprise that he got taken in rather than you know taken out. Is that a surprise though? I feel like that's very common. I feel I feel like the mass shooter getting taken in instead of taken out is like a very common trend. I mean the Aurora shooter didn't get taken out. The um. The guy that did the Sandy Hook, I don't, I don't think he got killed. Uh, the gay nightclub guy, I think, I think he got shot. I don't, I don't think he lived. Most of them are on SSRI meds. Jesus Christ, it depends. I, I don't even think it depends on that Moon Berserker. Because if, if you, if you want to go by the actual definition of mass shooting, then the stereotype of them being like, teenage white males kind of goes away. <laughs> Usually see them doing the job themselves. There's, there's been a lot of mass shooters recently that don't off themselves and don't get killed by the police. The last one I can think of is uh, the Vegas guy, right? I'm pretty sure he, 
offed himself in the room. But that one is a whole conspiracy theory in and of itself. Sandy Hook guy killed himself, didn't he? Maybe. It's hard to keep track. It's hard to keep track, because there's a fucking lot of these people. Did he also use an SKS or another rifle that they're trying to have banned? I don't know. I was gonna read I was gonna read the article. <laughs> You'd say the lack of news coverage suggests the lack of Fed involvement. No press kit for the media to run. And it's like, ba based on him killing his own family, I think this puts it solidly in the camp of, like, very odd in comparison to more recent shootings. Was there another shooting? Yeah, let me... I'm assuming I can bring up these articles on Twitch, right? Like, they're not that hardcore about what you can't talk about. It's just a it's just a news article. Careful with Sandy Hook, they'll fine you a billion dollars. I mean, I was just I was just pontificating on whether the guy killed himself or not, the shooter, cuz I can't I can't remember. It was too long ago. I feel like that's okay to talk about. <laughs> uh yeah, this this happened in North Carolina. Raleigh, I guess. Borger Volk standards compared to normal mass shootings. These ones lately were strange. <laughs> The American brain is a weird place, you know? We don't know anything about Vegas guy for some reason. He liked sushi. He, li he liked sushi quite a lot, you know? <laughs> but yeah, no, th it's really fucking weird that we know literally nothing about Vegas guy. And he had, like, the highest head count in a long-ass time. It's like, shouldn't, shouldn't we know something about that guy? Like, shouldn't, shouldn't we have anything whatsoever? About, like, why he would do that, or how he managed to get that much fucking firepower into a hotel room with nobody seeing it? I, I don't know. I don't I, you know, I just, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put too much tinfoil on, right? But, like, the Vegas one's real fucking weird. <laughs> Happy Saturday, binary mind. Think, doing a big think. Really activating those almonds, dude. Vegas one had his laptop hard drive removed? I don't know. The Vegas, the Vegas shooting's real fucking weird. Real fucking weird. We tangenting again. We're gonna get to the sex cults, but there was a recent mass shooting, and I was interested. He eats sushi. What? Well, that's true. He eats sushi. Maybe he got bad sushi, and he got really angry at getting bad sushi. That's why he do a shoot. Uh, it makes sense, you know. Vegas one glows like crazy. God damn it, Twitch. Where's my response? I want my glowy emote. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Need tinfoil to keep your thoughts from getting away. That's true. The tinfoil not only keeps the feds out, but it keeps the thoughts in. Wow, you're like 500 IQ, dude. Didn't they arrest the brother? I remember them doing something with the brother, but I can't remember what. He was the he was the one who like went on fucking crazy tangents about being comped. It's the fish madness, man. Sakuna was trying to recruit him. Unfortunately, he was not a sad girl. It did not work out. Could not hypnotize. You mean sushi the fish and rice snack? You thought I was referring to his waifu. What? What? All it takes is one bad day to reduce the sanest man alive to lunacy. <laughs> that, was, that was a fun media interview on the brother, though, I will say. So this... For hours Thursday night, residents of the Heatingham community in East Raleigh huddled in their homes under police orders. Why would someone open fire on the neighborhood and who's been hurt? Friday morning, after the alleged shooter had been taken into custody and five bodies had been carefully carried away, residents found out who had died. These were people who lived across the street or on another block with houses and lives that looked a lot like theirs. So this... This is strange. Like, I'm trying to think of a mass shooting where someone went to, like, people's actual fucking homes, like, place of residence. I don't I can't, right? There's like gay nightclub, there's tons of fucking schools, elementary, high, college, tons of fucking schools, movie theater, uh, like just ev everywhere but people's actual houses. So it's like, why, how did this, how did he do this? Wouldn't this be a spree shooter, not a mass shooter? I don't, I don't know if there's like a legal distinction between the two, right? I just, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> you made it in, uh, home in time for tangent. Hello! So, I mean, I guess it's kind of a tangent. We were supposed to go right into sex cults, but there was a mass shooting. You know, shit happened. 
Brother said there was no way he could have done it, and then the brother was found to have a shitload of CP and arrested. Well, I mean, I guess that's better than waking up with two bullets to the back of the head, in a way. He was not like the other girl... Uh, shooters! <laughs> yeah, not like the other shooters. People keep guns in their houses, dangerous to attempt. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's actually a really good point! How did this man know to target houses that people wouldn't have guns in? Like, how, how, what? Maybe they had nodded at each other while walking dogs on the Neus River Greenway that connects the development to the river and draws people out of their houses in a way that doesn't happen in other places. Uh, they're setting the stage. Uh, Torres was off duty at the time of the shooting, but he was on his way to work. Raleigh Police Chief Estella Patterson said he was not in uniform or in his patrol car when he was shot. Patterson said Torres had been with the department for 18 months. Before that, Torres served as a Marine at Camp Lejeune in Jacksonville. Torres leaves behind a wife and one child. He was, he was an off-duty officer. What? I, I, how did this happen? Connors lived in the neighborhood with her husband, Tracy Howard. They had been married for five years. They met on Facebook, Howard said Friday afternoon, as she sat on the porch where he'd come home a day earlier to find his wife had been shot. Assailant also shot and killed the dog. Is he from the fucking ATF? What is this? The dog was at Nicole Connor's feet, Howard said, but now he was thinking of the time he'd shared with his wife. At first, he said he was drawn to Connor's smile. That's what came through in pictures online. Now, I, know, I know they're trying to tell us about the backstory of the people, but I want to know about, like, the whole situation, right? The alleged shooter lived two doors down from the couple in the mailbox in front of the couple's home. In the house where they made their lives, there was a bullet hole and a small piece of paper marking it for evidence. C Carnats lived in Heatingham with her husband, Tom. He grieved his wife in a Facebook post after the shooting, saying the couple had big plans for their lives with their three sons as empty nesters when the boys are grown. His tribute, a poem, posted early Friday morning. A hundred notes of condolences poured in response to the post. Several talked about Sue's love for running her kindness towards others, and her dedication to social justice. Okay, maybe, maybe there's a thread tying people together here. Marshall lived in Heatingham. Her step-grandmother, Donna Marshall, said Mary had served in the Navy, attended culinary school, and was very family-oriented. She loved to go to the beach, was an absolute fanatic about Disney World. I love red hair, dude. That's very pretty. Uh, she worked at Starbucks, did clerical work for a dentist. Fiance, James Thompson. He was a junior at Nightdale High School. It was supposed to be homecoming weekend with a tailgating event planned before Friday. On the school's Facebook page, someone posted a note offering prayers. Principals offering condolences. <laughs> Principal of the year. I... I don't... I don't think I care. He's still alive, too. Why are they telling us about the principal? Until the shooting, it had been a good week at the school, Stepney said, with students and staff celebrating Spirit Week. Uh, when asked about the mood on Friday, it was unusual. What, that's the end of the article? Like, we don't know anything about the actual shooter? What is this? What? This is just like thoughts and prayers, the article. What the fuck? I want... I want information. Emotional garbo, yeah. I'm like, that... This is why I don't go to, like, actual news sites when shootings happen, but I didn't do any, uh, you know, reconnaissance on this, because I, like, I literally woke up and then saw it. Is there anyone but the News and Observer? Photographs from the N and O. All we learned was they couldn't wait to kick their son out so they could get on with their lives. Wait, what? Wait, what? Raleigh police, the victims range from 16 to 53, 15-year-old has been identified, so this is all, this is all, like, breaking. But, like, what? Why did he do it? Why did he, like... I don't want to make speculatory thoughts, right? But, like, he killed his brother. He killed his brother, who was, like, the high school guy. He killed a lady who was into social justice. He killed a lady who was in the Navy. He killed a black lady. He's starting to sound kind of loony, right? Kind of starting to sound like he's uh, trying, to, trying to do what the grocery store guy maybe did. Prayers on Facebook. That'll solve the issue. I mean, it, it makes people feel better. Do I want to link to his manifesto? Uh, in Discord. Probably, probably not in, 
in Twitch chat. <laughs> you could see the manifesto being TOS. Um, did I? I don't. I usually watch people who stream on D Live when it has to do with this stuff, so I don't know if Twitch allows talking about the actual text of a manifesto while live. Like maybe, maybe if it was older, but as this is fresh, I don't think they would. I'm looking at Discord. Wouldn't show it on stream. Uh, the fucking grocery store guy's manifesto was so fucking weird. Just say it's ASMR. Jesus. But I mean, I guess if he has a manifesto, uh, that should tell us why uh, he did he done dids it at least. And even if I can't show it on stream, I could probably talk about the part where he says, like, why he's fucking fucked up. That's why links are not allowed in our chat. Whisper mod! <laughs> well, this guy said he'll post it in Discord, though. So I'm just, I'm waiting, I'm waiting on that link. The Not Safe for Work channel, Grounder, please. I feel like that's the only place that manifestos should go. Uh, please don't type your own manifesto in Discord like the supermarket shooter, though. Don't do not do that here. <laughs> TOS doesn't apply if you switch to the hot tub category. No mods in the chat. Never lucky. Never lucky, dude. I'm, I'm honestly impressed that there are still people that, like, see the hot tub section. And, like, honestly, this is Twitch's fault. People see the hot tub section and they're just like, oh... The scope of shit that I can get away with is pretty large as far as sexual content goes. Because this section exists. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. The hot tub section is like special privilege leeway. You can't do sexual stuff outside of that. And so it always, it always amazes me that when people have hypersexualized avatars with like camel toe hanging out, uh, like, completely bare hips, and, like, doing sexual ASMR, are just like, why did I get banned? Why, why am I banned? That makes no sense. And it's like, no, it does make sense. You literally went afoul of the TOS. Maybe you should have been in a hot tub, and then you could have been able to not get banned. Like, I... <laughs> I don't really understand. We're having problems and need your help. Uh, a call? Oh... What do you mean? Oh, I have to download the PDF? I'm probably already on a list. Whatever, dude. Let's go. <laughs> I was like, you know what? What's one more manifesto to download? Oh, okay. See? I fucking called it. I fucking called it. I was, I was just like, you know, tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. This guy, this guy sounds like he's targeting, targeting a specific set of people. And then the first three lines of the manifesto talk about the Jews. Yeah, this guy's fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. How did I call it? How did I call it with such little fucking information? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> crazy, dude. So I guess that answers. I don't even need to find, I don't even need to find a place in the manifesto where he talks about why he did it. It's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty uh, obvious at this point, I think. It's an easy target for loonies to latch onto. God damn, dude. <gasps> he said the F word. Oh my God. People on Twitter can't read this manifesto. They might have, they might get triggered. <laughs> Literally has a line that says, destroy the degenerates. God damn, dude. They might need the safe space. Is it real? Other sources are saying he didn't have one. It, it could, it could be fake. I'm not, I'm not going to go on the fruit farm on Twitch to find information about this right now, though. Um, what sources are saying he doesn't have one? And I guess, uh, grounded since you were the one who linked this. Where where did uh where did you get the this from? <laughs> oh my god, wait. This guy This this guy has these like fucking weird fringe beliefs and then he puts his own pronouns in his manifesto. Is it it's, it's like about me, he him social nationalist voting enjoyer? What? 
<laughs> oh god, what the fuck? He's a fed! No fucking way! Yeah, it says about me, and then it has like an at. I'm not gonna read, and then it says he, him, social nationalist, voting enjoyer, DNI, non white, LGBTQA, Jewish, uh, Stalin tweet, Groip tweet, opinions my own. Uh, what? <laughs> this glows brighter than the sun. I don't know. Let me scroll up. It was Why does it give me men? Lemonade. Lemon demon. Thank you for the follow. It was posted on his Twitter, which had multiple IRL pics of himself. One of the pics was of himself on train tracks. He was 100% off his meds. God damn. All right. Well, if it was on his Twitter, uh, it's definitely real then. You're blind if this is real? <laughs> like the, the document being from him or the entire situation? <laughs> Groiper equals fed. Didn't I say that word the other day? Is that like an activation word? Hold on, wait a minute. Just take all the alphabet shit and stuff it in there. That'll make it believable. <laughs> the document. Hello, Saint! Did he mention cat boys? Control F. Cat. boy yeah actually he did what the fuck it says destroy the internal enemies target de-radicalizers target false uh i can't say this word on twitch target naysayers target political solution activists target cat boys and derogatory term for latinos why did he why did he include the latinos with the cat boys what what <laughs> How does that make sense? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all my uh, Latam company friends. <laughs> God damn! I can't believe he put cat boys in. I can't believe you asked if he mentioned cat boys, and I actually fucking found it. <laughs> he turned on Fuentes. What the? Fu this sounds like when you prompt an AI. I. It, it sounds like an unhinged poll shitpost, but instead of it only being a couple sentences, it's like a million pages long. What the fuck? Why does he have- who the hell is Dar Daria Dugina? I've literally never heard this person's name in my life. What the fuck? That's how you recognized it. Oh no, dude. <laughs> Forget tinfoil hat, you're going to the lead bunker. Pretty sure it was made by an AI. I don't know, dude. You bet a dollar that he generated the manifesto using AI. Maybe, maybe the entire thing is just a shit post. Maybe he meant for it to sound shit posty, but the people he targeted lines up with the weird shit that he's saying. So. I was like, why is there a picture of meat? Showing what? Why is that what? Oh, <laughs> there's a whole section about how we're occup. Oh, I would write something of my own here, but I think the original 4chan post does it better than I ever could. Man, what happened to the board of peace? Honestly. <laughs> Pretty sure she was one of the ones who fell out a window. She was a Russian journalist who was assassinated. Oh shit, really? What the fuck? Put it in one of those plagiarism detecting sites. Oh my god. Peace was never an option. Apparently. I hope this post... Okay. Okay, alright. This is like an elongated and more schizo version of like... Remember that these people want... You broke, your kids indoctrinated, etc. And like they think it's funny. But instead of like a single line ha ha shit post, it's like... A whole fucking paragraph? From a post in 2020? What the fuck? Take the reality pill! Instead of black pills and white pills, focus on reality! What the shit? The reality pill is realizing that the battle will be long and hard. So, like... 
Oh my god. This gets... This gets real fucking unhinged. So the red pill. Don't forget the ASMR request. It's for science. Oh. I didn't notice it. Give me a bit so my throat isn't as gumby because I'm waking up. Trying to discredit anything but mainstream beliefs. Um, no. He even brought up, like, McMichaels. And... Like, it doesn't- said it doesn't care about, like, religion or anything. It's just, uh... It's just real unhinged. Oh my god, like, th this part, like, every single sentence is punctuated with, For this you must die. Jesus Christ. Yumby, no Gumby. Oh my god. This guy, this guy was like really pumping himself up and just was a piece of shit. What Bolshevik commie policies bring with them. What? Did you see that Western liberals are against Bolshevism because it is authoritarianism? And suddenly you get Nazbol rodents worming their way in, proclaiming how Stalin was based in red pill. What the heck? Are they actually against authoritarianism? Cause I, it's like, you know, was this guy paying attention? The ten trending tag about dream, you had no proof, but you had no doubts. I don't have a trending. Oh, dream is a freak. Oh, that was uh, what I talked about yesterday. Ots! Oh, it's my guy. Welcome! That's why your shoes raggedy! I was gonna talk about sex cults when I started this stream, but there's a mass shooting, so I started with that. Thank you for the three-month resub, my guy! Thank you, thank you! This shit feels full schizo and or glowy? Eee! Uh... That... That feels really fucking weird. Just now? Uh, it apparently happened on Thursday, but they're just now making articles about it. And, uh, it was, it was a guy who, like, actually went to people's houses instead of, like, a public area. Which is very strange, because, like, as someone in chat brought up, uh, people are usually armed in their houses, so... How did this fucking happen? Yeah, odd choice. If only he had taken the tinfoil pill. That's not strange at all. That's very strange in America, where we all have guns in our homes. It's an actual grassroots shoot and not astroturfed. Kid mentions 8chan a lot. He's either deranged or a glowy. Does he mention it in this? Uh, I guess he mentions 8chan five times because I saw him mention 4chan. He only mentions 4chan once. Okay, all right. So 8chan five mentions, 4chan once. Maybe a shop till you drop type beat. Some people do stuff like this as a means of suicide. No, no, someone linked me his manifesto. And uh, in his manifesto, he's, he's definitely fucking deranged. <laughs> uh, the, fir the first three lines are just, uh, it's the Jews. So it, it, that, that tells you all you need to know about the rest of the manifesto, I feel. <laughs> guy, guy is just, uh, he needed to take some meds. I see your inaction will not save your children. Oh my, he even calls fucking Tarant a saint. This meme, this guy. That gets you up to speed, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I, I called it before I opened the manifesto because I was like, wait a minute. This guy, this guy killed someone who is a self-proclaimed social justice warrior. This, this guy killed somebody who was in the Navy. This guy killed his own brother who was in high school. And this guy killed a black lady. Putting, putting just these things together and knowing nothing else about the shooter, I feel like I know exactly where this is going. It's written in a way like it's a shit post. Did he say subscribe to PewDiePie? I don't think they're doing that anymore. Yeah, no, phrase not found. I don't. I don't think shooters are saying that anymore. <laughs> well, so random. Yeah, he's not. He's not like the other shooters. Well, who's that comedian? Who's that comedian that was like he did that stand-up bit about like. People calling him insensitive for making jokes right after, like, the death of a person. And he's like, what do you mean? That's actually perfect comedic timing! I don't remember who that was. But that's- that's all I can think of right now. SJW, high school jock, black lady. 
Oh, was somebody gay too? I didn't, I didn't even read that. Checks off all the boxes of a fed plant. I don't know. I don't, Cause he went to people's houses. This actually looks like just like maybe a completely deranged person. Cause like all the other ones have been in public places, dude. Gilbert Gottfried, what? No, that's a uh, comedian. I don't know if I could even find it. Does he have a bingo card? It's not Peter McGraw, because I don't recognize that name at all. Norm Crosby? No, I don't think that's it either. Was it, was it actually Gilbert Gottfried? I don't, like, I don't think it was. No, maybe, maybe it was Norm McDonald. I can't find it while searching for it, which is weird. I mean, I guess it's not weird. I don't know how to phrase the joke exactly. So it makes sense that I can't find it in the Goobles. It was probably Gilbert Gottfried. He made a 9-11 joke like right after it happened. Whew. Uh, Norm Macdonald praised for talk show spots. When the punishment doesn't fit the joke. So ever. Onion staffers. Anya. When, why do people tell sick jokes about tragedies? Of course, BBC News would be the one asking that, dude. Mm. Nor Norm McDonald. And then there's like, there's that like little, little sneedy bald guy. Was it Colin, Colin something? What Dave Chappelle gets wrong about trans people. I don't, I don't think Google's helping me right now. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Google's helping me. You sent me a Gilbert Godfrey meme? Don't open on stream. Oh my god. What the fuck? I don't, what the fuck? What the hell? It explained why there wasn't a big media circus ready to drop immediately after if he wasn't a fed. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like we, we didn't get articles until today either. And this happened Thursday, apparently. So. Usually people like that, even when unhinged as hell, are very methodical, coherent, and specific. This is way too fucking random. This is, this is a very long manifesto, but like, again, I'm on Twitch. So I'm, I'm not like reading this word for word. I'm like skipping around and just like looking at different, different things. It's, it's very long. It's 65 pages. And like, I, I, don't, I don't feel like any manifestos are really coherent. But he definitely has an order of... Definitely has an order of talking about things. A special thanks to Frederick Brennan. <laughs> what the fuck? A special, special thanks to the eight pole anons. What? What the fuck? Why is there, why is there a special thanks section in a manifesto? Maybe Colin Quinn? Seems like it would be someone in Dennis Leedy's circle. Colin sounds familiar. What if I, oh, I wanna be in this browser. What if I, Colin Quinn. Mm. No. No. Doesn't come up with anything. Man, why is it so hard? Cause like I can, I can like picture the guy on the stage giving the joke and being like, no, that's the perfect time to make a joke. That I ha that that means I have perfect comedic timing, or some shit like that. You know, how's a fucking. You don't know if anyone would actually bother reading all that shit. Yeah, I don't. I don't know who would sit here and just like parse the entire thing. I mean, I, I know who would, but thank God they do, cause I ain't got time with that. <laughs> I I don't get time for reading this entire thing, dude. You were just about to suggest Norm McDonald. Yeah, he was he was very offensive comedic comedically, so it could be him. It includes the quote I am looking for in the meme? Well I can open that because I don't have the uh the opening browser. No, it does not have the quote that I'm talking about. Not at all. Not even not even a little bit close. Not not even not even a fourth of the words. <laughs> 65 pages. You don't even read manga. Well, he included a couple of pages of pictures, including steak. So. 
You think Bill Burr made that joke too? Oh, you know, I didn't even think, I didn't even think about Bill Burr. That's, I guess that was before he became like super cucked. Bill Burr, comedic timing joke. Man, Google is just worthless, eh? <laughs> I was like, I was, what? What do you mean? You just can't find anything. Bill Burr's cucked now? He never cut- am I- I don't know, I guess I get my comedians confused, maybe? I could have sworn, I could have sworn someone started cucking. Colin is bald, what about Colin Mockery? I don't think it was him. About- you think it was Bill Burr who made the perfect timing after a tragedy? Yeah, that's- it was, it was like Bill Burr, Norm Macdonald, someone like that. Gilbert Gottfried, you looked it up and found it on the third result. It was- wait, wait, wait. Do you have- do you have the link? Do you have the link? I want this. It's gonna bother me, you know? Like, I hate when I think about something and I can't remember shit. <laughs> Picture book manifesto! Nah, the, uh... No, I'm not looking for the comedian who made a joke right after 9-11. I'm not- I'm not looking for, like, for that. That was Gilbert Gottfried. Bill Burr cucked hard? That's what I thought! I thought Bill Burr cucked hard! I thought he cucked mega hard, dude. I'm thinking of Louis C.K., the ginger bastard? I don't- I don't remember anything about Louis C.K. Was he the one that masturbated in front of people? <laughs> so- so hard to remember this shit, dude! Yes? Okay. <laughs> What whatever happened to Lewis Black? I liked listening to Lewis Black's fucking stand up back in the day, and then he just seemed to fall off the face of the earth. Could have been CK. That's a very him joke. I think it's fucking. Louis Black is fucking old and can't get his blood pressure that high anymore. Whew. That's a that's a fair that's a fair point. This this guy this guy looks. I can't say that because he's like an actual person. Read read more. He's got a lot of sources here. Maybe maybe this is what it's called. Maybe this is what the joke is called. I'm fucking. I'm fucking losing my mind, dude. I hate not being able to remember shit. Why? Why are there so many fucking news places talking about the science of humor? I don't know, I guess I'm gonna have to give up. I'm gonna- I'm gonna not- I won't be able to satiate my autism. He wasn't nearly hot enough to make it work? Oh my god. You feel like Lewis Black pulled out before the twatters could ratio him into oblivion? I guess that's fair. They definitely would not have liked him. You know who else kind of faded out into obscurity? Fucking Dane Cook. I- I- I liked Dane Cook stand up back in the day as well. Have a- have a good day, Tony, my guy. Louis C.K. asked permission to do the deed in front of people and they got mad at him for that? That's, that's a very weird question to ask somebody that you work with, to be fair. But I guess at least he asked instead of just whipping it out, you know? Dane Cook got fucked by his manager. Really? What happened? You listen to so many podcasts at this point, you give up if you can't find it in 10 minutes or so. Huh? I don't know if I was even looking for 10 minutes. Dane Cook looks weird as hell now. Stole his money! Oh, so he had the same manager as, like, fucking Taylor Swift, right? We're gonna do a B and E, a bacon and eggs. We're making a fucking sandwich. I'm gonna fucking punch bees! Cap, why are you peeing on my chat? Why are you peeing on my chat? 
He would willingly sacrifice every modern comedian to bring George Carlin back! Oh my god. You think it was, like, a stepbrother or something? God damn. That's, that's really, that's really shit. Imagine your own family fucking you over, like, I mean, I guess the guy got shot by his own family on Thursday, too, so. I guess, I guess it's more common than you think. That's unlucky. Dane got screwed over, which is a shame you loved him. I, re I really liked when he started doing, like, side appearances in movies. Like, his character in Waiting had maybe, like, five entire minutes of screen time, but goddamn, I liked it. You second the sacrifice? Let's build the altar out of old VHS tapes. What the heck? Man. That's a comedy is tragedy plus time. I figured it was comedy minus time, right? Because, like, the sooner you do it... The, I thought I was going to stop looking for this. I just fucking, you know? You know? <laughs> Say we burn most comedians just in case? Maybe it brings Carlin back. What the fuck? I, I used to love going to comedy clubs. It was, like, one of my favorite things to do. Like... Just going to comedy clubs with friends, going there on a date. It was a good-ass fucking time. It was a great-ass fucking time. But now, now, the last time I went to a comedy club was, like, right after the pandemic shit lifted and you could go out again. And, uh, the comedy club stand-up people had the same rehashed quote-unquote jokes that I would just, like, read in news articles. It was it was like a rehashing of I'm I'm a lesbian so everybody hates me. Orange man bad. I'm a woman my life is hard. And I'm just like, "What? None of this is funny. Where is the funny?" <laughs> where where is funny? What happened? Dane Cook was great. Perfect comedian for the time he had fame. That's that's, that's a good point. Sweet and sour sauce all over my titties if the opportunity presents itself. How often does that opportunity present itself, my guy? At this point, if you do some kind of mass shooting, they should automatically change their name to something like Love's Cock Nightly or something else horrific so they'll never be remembered in any kind of way. That also protects their identity, though. Right? Like, it, it also protects the identity of the shooter, which... Don't. Comedy clubs suck now. Majority of mainstream comedy is crap. Can I can I have like one of those underground comedy clubs then? <laughs> I have a pussy. Laugh. Please please laugh. <laughs> Can't be funny because people might get offended with the jokes. The funniest part was that this comedy club was in the basement of a brewery. So we were like surrounded by like a whole bunch of alcohol. And even, even then, none of the stand-up was funny. I am the underground com- Is it really underground if I'm on Twitch, though? <laughs> I feel like it would be underground if I did, like, Gorilla Omegle streams, right? <laughs> During COVIDs, they couldn't really work out new material, so it takes a while to get going again. God damn. Seeing, seeing Dave Chappelle would be pretty fucking nice in person, but I can only imagine how expensive those tickets are, especially now where he needs, like, increased security. This is what you've always said about the U.S. media. They turn mass shooters into celebrities for the wrong crowd. They put their name everywhere, and then some basement dwellers like, if I'm gonna go out, I want to be famous. I don't really know how you would balance it. I'm gonna be real. Because, like, you wanna you want to report on it, you want to report on, like, the victims and what happened. And you don't want to portray the shooter ever in a positive light. But, like, how do you report on it in a way that gets information out and doesn't, like, protect the shooter's identity, but also doesn't give other freaks with, like, weird fucking mentally unstable nonsense the idea that they should also do this? So they tried to cancel me on Twitter for anything I said on stream. If so, you are the underground comedian. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm too much of a literal who for people on Twitter to know who I am yet. 
but I'm I'm sure I'm sure if I get more exposure, it's only a matter of fucking time, honestly. <laughs> Sounds like I literally went and saw Hannah Gadsby on stage. Her comedy is less a routine and more a TED talk. I, that's what it felt like. I, that's kind of what it felt like, honestly. I was like, I don't have enough alcohol in me to, to even try to crack a laugh at this, dude. You should make a nickname that is just complete insults. I don't know if you can make a name that's complete insults without offending some sort of group at this point. Crazy that they go out killing normal people and not politicians. That was the major gripe that I had. I guess I shouldn't say gripe because it's not like I'm wishing death upon anyone, right? But the, the supermarket shooter in New York that happened earlier this year, he was just like, oh, the politicians are, are doing this to our people and the politicians are just, they're fucking everything up for everyone. And, and instead of doing anything that he claims to want to happen in his manifesto, he, like, he was just like, I'm gonna go shoot up the grocery store. And it's like, what? What the fuck? What the fuck? Like, that has, that has nothing to do with what you were talking about. It just don't make no goddamn sense, dude. Angie Cat makes an appearance. I don't, he's not angie, but he do meow a lot. I kind of filter it out. Solution simple. Get rid of the media. I mean, the media in its current state is pretty fucking bad, I'll give you that. Let's see why you would think they shouldn't have their identity protected, but the best thing that could happen is if nobody ever knew or remembered these people. Many people who do mass shootings are people who can't achieve fame or social standing in a positive way. And the news has given them a proven way to get known in the most horrific way, but it works every time. Does it work every time? If I'm like, I can't remember the names of half of these guys, I just remember the, like, name of the incident. Like, I, could, I couldn't tell you the names of the people who, like, did Sandy Hook or Aurora or the gay nightclub. Like, I, I, don't, I don't remember their fucking- I can, like, picture what the Aurora guy looks like because he looked unhinged as fuck. That's about it, though. They turned their comedy into political preaching. Oh, man, I watched- I watched such a bad TV show recently. It was called like, what, Devil in Ohio or some shit? The acting was so bad, the script was so bad, there were so many plot holes, it might as well have been made out of cheese. Like, it was so fucking bad, but I'm a woman. So I love watching things that I will complain about. <laughs> on, on a lighter note, check out comic Shane Gillis, his comedy podcast and skits. I will have to do that. Why not murder a politician? Well, don't do that, first of all, just, just in case. Don't do that. But I was, just, I was just curious in the case of the supermarket shooter guy, because like that's what he wanted to do. But then he passed like a whole bunch of places, like government buildings and a politician's house, and then went to the grocery store. And I was just like, what? Way to, way to not stick to your beliefs, guy. Like, you, you, you're, you're gonna complain about these people and then take it out on the wrong people. What are you, fucking Antifa? Like, I, what? That's why they stopped reporting names all the time. They wanted to move away from making them icons. I can only imagine the brain damage someone has to have to think of these lunatics as icons. There's some basement dweller out there who can name off all the mass shooters you'd be willing to bet. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm, I'm positively sure there is some basement dweller out there who can. I was like, oh man, when... I, I, knew, I knew someone who, like, saved the New Zealand shooting video since it was getting, like, really hot buttony and was getting illegal in some countries. I don't think any of these videos should be illegal. That's kind of fucking weird, to be fair. But this guy was, like, so fucking excited every time he could show the video to people. And I was like, that's kind of strange. That's kind of weird that you get excited when you can show people this. I, that makes me uncomfortable. You mean there was a that Texas shooter that turned out to be uh, Latino or something and the media didn't report it until after it was revealed? Uh, CNN also turned back on their, uh, what was that hands up don't shoot guy? They turned back on their like hella lightning filter for the Christmas parade guy? Copycat serial killers are a thing? Yeah, but like... I guess, I, I don't know if you could really call mass shooters copycats. 
because there haven't really been any that are like eh, that's not true there was that one guy in russia who tried copycatting columbine right that's the only one i can think of that's like a, a true direct copycat though with serial killers it's kind of like can i get a high score kind of thing I, I guess you could think of shootings as the same thing but i don't know that doesn't really that doesn't really occur it seems like to most people Thing is, even if you go inside a government building, you will probably screw over a bunch of random employees that have little to nothing to do with the laws getting passed. Oh no, I agree with you. And I'm not, I'm not saying like he should have killed anybody because like he shouldn't have, but it's like it's it's weird that he complained about a certain sect of people and then went and took it out on like literally no no one like grocery store has nothing to do with government, you know. Like, even if the people in the government building have nothing to do with government, which they probably don't, most, like, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, they're just, like, on the ground grunt work, yeah? Like, it still would have made more sense than grocery store. But it's just, like, fucking can't parse lunacy, you know? The news made the Boston bombing guy a sex symbol for a p That was really fucking gross. That was so fucking strange. Uh, like, I could understand that one, like, Chad prisoner. I don't even, I think he was, like, in prison on, like, drug charges or some shit. And he had, like, the chiseled jaw of a marble statue. Like, I could understand the news being like, Oh my god, look how beautiful this man's is. But it's like, holy shit, don't do that to, like, a fucking bomber. You got the New Zealand video from a homie on day one? You still have it archived somewhere, but never watched it since. It's not entertaining, just sad. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna save shit for archive purposes, that makes sense. Especially if countries are, like, saying it's illegal to have. Archiving it is important. But being, like, giddy about it is fucking weird. <laughs> There's one dude that ran over some protesters during the BLM thing, killing one girl and injuring two others, and you're pretty sure they were originally reporting that he was white. Was that during? Oh yeah, that was the highway thing. I remember that. I remember that, and they were. You are correct. Apparently most mass shooters happen the last decade, so it's speculated that the driving factor is imitation of previous shootings. I think we actually went over this on stream before. Cause because we were talking about the prevalence of mass shootings, and if we want to go by the actual definition like, the actual definition of mass shooter, where more than two people are shot, not even killed, just shot, uh, it's definitely down in recent years. If we're talking about just, like, prolific news-catching ones, uh, it stayed about the same. You really hate the race, gender, sexuality baiting in the media? Same. Same. Like, stop putting weird spins on shit. Just give me the facts. And that's- that's why- that's why I went to poll for news for so long. Cause it was like, they would give a million fucking different sources. And you'd be able to piecemeal together the entire story from it instead of having to search yourself. Literally getting spoon fed, dude. Didn't someone make a Sam Hyde Photoshop meme for that driver incident? Yes. Yes. I feel like that happens all the time. Like, there's always a Sam Hyde edit. And there's always a journo falls for it, every time. Every mass shooting incident that happens. Sam Hyde is responsible for every mass tragedy. He can't keep getting away with it, dude. Used to. Yeah, used to. The, the last, during, during the supermarket shooting, Paul had like almost no info. So I had to actually visit the fruit farmers for sources for the first time ever. As not you know not a not a huge fan but like they they do their job well in that regard recently kojima was accused of being a shooter that's also true that was also fucking weird that's if we consider like gang violence which should fall under a different label it just it technically falls into the definition i agree that gang violence should be counted differently from just mass shooting but the definition of a mass shooting would be two plus people getting shot and like I, I feel like it should be more than two as well, because I, t like three is not mass, I guess, in my opinion. But like I, I don't make the rules, you know. I'm not a fucking journalist. I probably wouldn't be a very good journalist either. <laughs> 
I would tell the facts, but I would also probably tangent, you know? Every murder-suicide would count then. That's different if it's a murder-suicide. That's, that's different if it's a murder-suicide. Because if, if, it, if it's like just one guy who shoots one other guy and then shoots himself, that's not counted as a, as a mass murder. Did they change the definition for it again? You remember it being at least four? Maybe, maybe it was changed and it's now like three or four plus. Because it, it used to be like just more than two, basically. Does a suicide make your high score go down by one? It should, honestly. Not like it would have mattered for some people, though. They had a pretty high score. Here we get a ton of those murder-suicides. Usually some dude killing his wife or his ex and then offing himself. The only... The only murder in... In my town... When I was growing up... Uh... And I wasn't even... No, actually, I was like a little kid when it happened, actually. Like, probably a couple years old. But uh, my my bus driver for for school she was my bus driver literally from elementary to fucking high school uh her daughter was dating a guy from a different town and when her daughter broke up with the guy uh he came to our town and beat her daughter to death with a baseball bat you know a, ve a very rational response and that was that was the only the only murder in my town like Oh my god. I think the last time somebody got murdered was like probably the 60s, and this had happened in the 90s, and there hasn't been another murder since then? Bro, what? Yeah. Like, uh, our, our, my, my hometown is fairly fucking safe, so this was like a complete anomaly. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Beat, yeah, beat her to death with a baseball bat. But she, he, was, he was from a different town. He didn't understand that our town was very safe. It, ha it happens. It happens, unfortunately. I was like, I was like, when, when my, when my mom had that, like, we, when we lived in the double-decker house, so it was like one family on the first floor and a second family on the top floor, the family above us had a daughter that was like several years older than me, so when I, when I was like 12, 13, she was like 16, 17, and she was like prostituting herself to make money, and when her father found out, he took her outside like, dragged her outside, screaming at her in Spanish. And then he brought her cat outside and beat her cat to death in front of her as punishment. We had a big bay window in my living room, so... Yeah. He used to do that shit, grab a bunch of different sources, and then just try to eliminate the bias and find whatever truth you could. Nowadays, you just don't give a shit. And just avoid most news media entirely for the sake of not minecrafting yourself. I still read. I still read as much as I can. I don't keep up on it as much as I used to because, like, I just don't have the time. But I try my best. I'd, I'd like to try and stay informed. Why the fuck? Why the cat? I could not tell you. I have absolutely no fucking idea. But my, my mom lived in very, very Puerto Rican dense areas of, uh, of the state. So when I when I was a child, I grew up thinking that specifically Puerto Ricans were just inhuman because I grew up around all of this violence. So I was like incredibly racist as a child, specifically to Puerto Ricans. And I'm I'm glad as I got older, I realized it was just like those people were bad. It had nothing to do with like Puerto Ricans on a whole. So I'm I'm very I'm very glad you're Puerto Rican and you sort of think the same. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm very glad that I grew out of that, but it's like, when you're inundated in constant violence from just one set of people, like, it, it makes sense that as a child you kind of form these, these bad thoughts, you know? Can, can you show us Observer just for a second? You want to see how the main menu looks? What do you mean? I wasn't supposed to play Observer today. Yeah. Yes, Arnold? You would say that's probably just ghetto things? Yeah, exactly. Like, it has nothing to do with, like, their race. But, like, as, as a small child, you see this and you're like, God damn, what the fuck? So it's, it's, it's like, I'm, gl I'm glad as an adult now, I can, I can tell this story. And it makes sense to people. Pattern recognition, I don't even know. I mean, maybe pattern recognition, because I was living in it, but... Like, the amount of, the amount of times I'd be walking home from the skate rink... And I would just, like, see somebody get shot. 
or like fucking laid out flat bleeding because they, I guess, got into a fight on the sidewalk was just like, ah, oh, you know, whatever. I just crossed to the other side of the street and I hoped they didn't wake up and see me. <laughs> Yesterday was accidental tangent. This one is planned. Yeah. It's not tangent day. It's sex cult day. But the shooting thing is OK because it's just as interesting. Ah, fuck, it sucks, dude. GTA trailer child? I mean, basically. I was, I was living a fucking Grand Theft Auto childhood. Most things that are presented as somehow racial is usually socioeconomic. And I, I would agree. I would agree. But, like, as a child, you don't have that development to sort of make those, those I guess, distinctions. As a child, you just see, like, these people who look like this always do these things. Therefore, these people bad. That's, that's like child logic, right? And as you get older, you realize, no, those people were just bad. It had nothing to do with, like, what they looked like. They just, they, they specifically were just bad people. It sort of does. Usually people in those communities tend to group together, so it's normal to then assume that every person is like that. Yeah, and that, that's, again, like, what I was working off of logically as, like, a child being inundated with that. Because I would go with my mom, and I, I would be, like, completely surrounded you know, by, like, the Puerto Rican community. And then back at my grandparents' house, there was zero anyone who wasn't white. So it was, like, completely two different worlds, essentially. And, and as a child, you're like, none of these people do bad thing, but all of these people do bad thing. You know, and you, you, don't, you can't make that distinction as a child because you just don't have the brain processing power. Picked up any Spanish slang? No. <laughs> My great-grandparents uh, spoke French fluently, and my grandparents tried teaching me French as well from, from, like, when I was a toddler and older. None of the French fucking stuck either, and they directly were trying to teach me. <laughs> you recognized the pattern, but didn't have the broader information to see that it was X instead of Y. Yeah, exactly. Puta, you guys are my little pandejos. <laughs> oh, man. You were in Canada, and you didn't have a problem as a kid until a bunch of... ku 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 -wise? ku -wallies? I don't know what that word is. Showed up and they wanted to start fights with every kid on the playground? Schools became prisons to you at that point. You French! I'm sorry. I'm sorry I am French and Italian. I'm just, I'm just set up to be hated. <laughs> Somos pendejitos! Yeah! When I, when I played Terra, we had some, uh, some Mexicanos that played with us, and they enjoyed having me say things in Spanish because my pronunciation is very silly. <laughs> is that like a Kiwi from Kuwait? You took three years of high school Spanish, and all you remember is cursing and just how to say, I like a glass of orange juice because it sounds funny. Hmm. The country that Iraq invaded in the 90s? Ku Kuwait? Like, Ku Kuwaitis, I guess? I don't... Is that what they're called? I've never thought about the country of Kuwait in my life. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> Every time you visited France, you were reminded of why your hate for them was birthed. Jesus Christ. Fuck. I'm sorry. What have I done besides surrender? <laughs> French people are assholes. I, all the French people I've met are very, very kind. I uh, like, again, my great grandparents, their first language was French, French. They came from France. They were very, very nice people, very traditional people. They were married from a young age, stayed together forever, had like fucking 12 kids or some crazy fucking nonsense. Fuck the French. Only gently and with consent. I guess you've only met assholes. <laughs> Just come to New Orleans, you'll meet the redneck French. Oh my, I would love to meet redneck French, dude. What would that sound like? Can you imagine? I want to know what that sounds like. 100% better people. Nice people. Must be why they left France. Ah, uh, maybe. With consent, sure, but why only gently? You gotta, you gotta build up the trust with doing it gently at first before you get to go crazy. You've never been to France, but you've been to most of the countries around there, and they have opinions on them that they like to tell you. I can literally just YouTube Creole accent. That's different! Seeing it in a YouTube video is different from experiencing it in person, Ziz. I've also never been to France. I've been to Germany and Austria, but not France. And, you know, I really, I really wanted to visit both France and Italy 
and Sweden. Because Sweden has the Ice Hotel, and goddamn, the Ice Hotel is fucking gorgeous. And I would love to stay there. But I think, I think out of safety concerns, Italy's probably the only place I would realistically visit on that list now. I really, I really, really wanted to go to the, the Maldives? Maldives? I don't know how to pronounce that island name. The, Mal the Maldives are the place that have the Sea of Stars because of the special type of plankton that's there. So the sea glows like the night sky. It's really fucking beautiful. But uh, I didn't know anything about the Maldives besides that they were a tourist attraction and they were very beautiful. And the, a few years ago, there was a lady who got arrested on the Maldives for wearing a bikini. And I was like, that's really weird. Why would she get arrested for wearing a bikini? That's literally a tourist island. They have like resort there. Why would you, why would you get arrested? for that and i opened the article and i read it and it turns out that the the maldives maldives i don't fucking know dude the maldives are uh like 97 percent islamic and the maldives despite being a very small island nation export the highest amount of isis recruits and i was like what the fuck how did i not know this how did how did i what <laughs> so i was like okay i guess it makes sense now like the the resort areas the resort areas are supposed to have a moratorium so if you are a tourist on resort grounds wearing a bikini you won't get arrested but this lady accidentally went off of the resort grounds on the beach which like if you're a tourist you obviously there's no markers that are just like you're leaving resort grounds so she was off of the resort grounds which is why she got arrested for wearing bikini and i was like what the fuck you can be arrested for being gay there what if you're gay in a bikini <laughs> sounds like a swinging place to hang out and chill you said Deves to help? What have I done? I, th I thought you guys were making fun of me for saying Deves. <laughs> I was like, shit, am I still pronouncing it wrong? But I was like, yeah, probably, probably not a good idea. You get thrown out of the highest building in town. Jesus Christ. Well, at least you got to wear the bikini. You might get stoned while being thrown off a building. Hitting a moving target like that would be very difficult. As per scripture. Goddamn. Two possible positives negate each other. You guess they have to be let go. That makes the most sense. Honestly, that makes the most sense. No notification. Oh, Hitler. I ping ping ponged the discord as well. I used I used my at everyone privileges. All right. Okay. I tried. Let's take another rough place. You would love to go to Bali, but it has religious issues too. I don't know anything about Bali other than it's also a uh, tourist destination. I can, Cloud. I, I can move everything as long as I have the technology to do so. <laughs> Manifesto I was reading was from the Slovakian gay club shooter, not the North Carolina shooter. Really? Where did you get this information, Shugazi? I didn't know that the gay club shooter had a manifesto. You never knew about the Sea of Stars? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Sea of Stars is very pretty. Azahara said that they have some of that in Puerto Rico. So maybe, maybe I just go to Puerto Rico instead, right? Like, that's got to be safer. Isn't a bogan just an Asui redneck? I thought that was Australia. It says he is Slovak and born in 2003 in the manifesto. Well, this, this kid who was a shooter was also, also, a not, hold on, I'm trying to do math, 2013, he would have been 10, 2020, yeah, he was, he was also, like, a teen, because he, he killed his brother. I mean, I, somebody, the, the guy who posted it, Grounder, he said it was on the guy's Twitter. He was 15, you think? Oh, maybe, maybe too old, then. Slovak shooter was 19, North Carolina shooter was 15. Okay, so maybe he just reposted the Slovak shooter's manifesto and it wasn't his. Let go? Sure, they have to be let go. No! On bioluminescent, there are five bioluminescent bays in the world and three of them are in Puerto Rico. Mosquito Bay, Laguna Grande, and La Parguera 
The other two are located in Luminous Lagoon in Jamaica and Holding Bay in Vietnam. Oh shit! I didn't know Vietnam had one either. I also said Holding instead of Halong. Hello, I can read. That's pretty nice. I feel like I've heard Mosquito Bay before. Did like some kind of tragedy happen at Mosquito Bay? Was there was there some sort of like big thing that happened there? Why do I know that name? You honestly didn't know there were two of them? You haven't heard anything about the North Carolina one? What the heck? Wait, so when wait, there was another gay club shooting? When did the Slovak gay club shooting happen? Cause the only one that I know about was like that that Muslim guy who shot up the gay club in Florida like several years ago. What the fuck kind of extra piece of shit are you to be a plagiarist mass shooter a couple of days ago? What the fuck? Slo Slovak gay club shooter. And we were talking about North Carolina, Grounder. Man, you confuse the fuck out of all of us. <laughs> Slovak gay club shooting. Oh, it's in Slovakia. Why the heck would I be talking about a Slovakian shooting? <laughs> Like two days ago. Yeah, I hadn't I hadn't heard about this at all. Radicalized teenager killed two outside Slovakia gay bar. Alright, so that manifesto that I read earlier. Fake fake news. I've I've been tricked. I've been bamboozled. That was that was a Slovakian manifesto, not the North Carolina guy. Not the North Carolina guy. You just assumed I was talking about a shooting and that was the recent shooting you heard of. What? I even have it on my screen! Uh, here's the latest on the Raleigh shooting in the Hedenham neighborhood off the Neuse River Greenway. What? <laughs> Most uh, horrible travel story you saw was this guy who likes going to rough places. He went to North Korea and went to a festival and the kids were running around with plastic guns. They go up to him and started chanting devil and start play fighting. He thought it was funny, but really those kids were taught to pounce on him. What? What? Ban grounder for five minutes! Cancel streamer, fake news. Man, I... I'm sorry. I... I just, you know, I thought he knew what we were talking about. I didn't think he was that confused. You don't look at the screen, you just look at chat and the room temp IQ fox thingy. I have upset the name of the place! We were talking about North Carolina! the whole time so no manifesto for the north carolina shooter yet i guess so i guess we don't know why the north carolina shooter did it gonna have to reiterate reiterate issue a retraction here i've been bamboozled by the twitch chat hopefully hopefully uh fruit farmers will give us a plentiful harvest on this man at some point <laughs> cancel streamer at least i at least i correct myself when i find out i've given bad information Room temp IQ fox thing is kind of cute. Aw, thank you! Minder, it's 2022 and we still don't have even so much as a motive from the Vegas shooter. Maybe he was just upset that the people on the fairgrounds were getting better quality sushi. I'm mixing Mosquito Bay with Bay of Pigs, which was in Cuba. Failed revolution. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not getting it confused with Cuba. I've definitely heard Mosquito Bay for some reason and I don't know why. Mosquito Bay. Mosquito- something happened at Mosquito Bay. But I don't know what it was. Shark Survivor? I wouldn't have heard about shark attacks in Puerto Rico, dude. There's a movie and a TV show called Mosquito Coast? I don't know, maybe- maybe my brain is just like making false memories at this point. <laughs> maybe it's just like, you remember the Mosquito Bay, but you actually don't. Haha. <laughs> Why do I exactly dislike the farms more than pole outside of doxing if I'm okay talking about it? Uh, that's basically it. That's, that's basically it. <laughs> that, is, that is the only thing. It, it, feels, it feels like to me that people on the fruit farming website are more hostile to individuals as well. And I guess, I guess it's easier because they have like full threads on people or on topics, whereas poll, like, they just go away after a few hours, you know? I guess they're archived, but you can't still post in them. So it just, it just seems like the level of vitriol is far higher. I mean, there are 8 billion of us at this point. You're sure somebody's getting shot someplace pretty much constantly. The fruit website culture is also more anti-fun. Yeah, the, the only time I've gone there was for information on the, the supermarket shooter, because it was the only place to really get it. 
Fun fact, having been in the Marines, you fired an M16 and an M240. Hearing the video from the Vegas shooting, you 100% believe it was not an AR-styled rifle shooting. Interesting. You just autistically post in the 2D waifu thread? Yeah, but I'm sure there's been a lot of doxing and a lot of vitriol in the 2D waifu thread. I can't imagine there not being. Ba based on where I've seen it happen elsewhere as well. Should have known at this point shootings happen within 12 hour intervals. I'm just impressed that there was a shooting somewhere that wasn't America. I don't know anything about the gun laws of Slovakia. I had no idea this even happened. <laughs> You've only seen clips of stuff on the VTuber threads, and that shit seems hostile. Eh. It's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not somewhere I would want to be. Null thinks anime is pedophilia, so that automatically makes the site shit. I don't, I don't know who that is, I'm sorry. Is he the guy who owns it? I only, I only know, like, his actual name because of all of the shit that's happened recently with the kerfuffles. You have very strict gun laws. Interesting. 2D waifu thread is curated heavily because Null hates the shit out of it. It is under constant threat of fumigation, so it is ironically the most wholesome place there. That is kind of ironic. VTuber doxing usually happens on other sites and just gets reposted to the farms. Hmm. There was a shooting in a Thailand. Why the fuck would you shoot up a daycare? What the, what the fuck? Yeah, Moon, that was his name. It was the noise itself was off as well. Bailey, you're noticing too much. You need to stop noticing. You're gonna go say cunny on the VTuber thread! <laughs> hit him hit him with the hit him with the null is so cute and funny. <laughs> that was fucked up the Thailand thing? What the fuck? Spawn kit! Shh, don't call it that! <laughs> Careful. You, I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. <laughs> sex cult. Yes. Sex cult Saturday. We have, we've talked about shootings for a good, a good hot minute here. All right. Got distracted by, by beautiful, beautiful bioluminescent stuff. If you want a gun, you have to do a test to get a license, which includes psychiatric evaluations. And you have to repeat this process every 10 years. But then we are an ex-Soviet country, so... <laughs> She's an Aussie. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now let's talk about shooting cum! I don't think you can shoot cum as, as fast as you would a gun. I'm gonna I'm be real with you. I think a, I think a gun is faster. <laughs> Came here to listen to the fox talking about shooting loads, not shooting leads! <laughs> VT does a good amount of doxing, but the mods try to remove it. I've been told they're kind of slow. I feel in Ah, oh, I can do that. That's true. I can do that for you. My friend, Shrimps and Prime Reeb. It was cleared from my queue. We have a rogue moderator forgetting that he's supposed to keep ASMR requests in the queue. But that's okay. That's all right, because it's still in my activity feed, even though it's been cleared. I don't know which one of you moderators done dids that, but... Please do not delete ASMR requests until I end stream. What if you freeze the cum and make cum bullets? Azahara, that's where you'd probably run into an issue. Actually, maybe not. If you're using them as cum bullets, it might, it might work. Because my friend, when he was trying the Nature's Harvest cookbook, uh, he found out that when you freeze your semen, uh, when it thaws out, it actually separates. So you can't use it for cooking like you could with fresh semen. So if you need to collect enough semen to be able to do recipes with, you should put it in the fridge and not the freezer. Kiwi thread doesn't remove it, so even if it's not from there, it still ends up festering. That's that's a good point. You can just resubmit the request. No, I got it here. It's fine. <laughs> what the fuck? What? How have you guys been around this long and you've not heard of Nature's Harvest? That's been a meme cookbook on Amazon for like at least 15 years. Way more thought went into that than you expected. He owns his own restaurant. He's very passionate about cooking. Very passionate, dude. You didn't need to know this. Well, now you do. How and why am I friends with this individual? Um, in Ion... Uh, I had a f mutual friend introduce me to this guy because both of us were really, really into PvP. And we were looking for more people to do rifting with. 
So a mutual friend introduced us, and the first thing this guy said to me, the very first thing when we got in Ventrilo together, was, how many liters of cum do you think a woman can drink before she vomits? And I was like, what? I've never thought about that before. What the, what? And then he linked me Bukake. And I didn't really get a solid answer to the question, but she managed to drink a lot before she vomited. And after that, we started having like cursed porn PvP nights where we would drink and kill Elios and prevent them from doing dungeons. And whenever we would full team wipe, somebody would have like the most fucked up porn that they could think of ready to go on deck. This is the man who introduced me to the fucked up world of Jav. This is how I know about Genki Genki and the women that like having their vaginas filled with cockroaches, all right? And uh, he's a fully functioning member of society. He owns his own restaurant. He's been published in magazines. He's got a wife. He's got a kid. Like, he's a fully functioning human being. He just finds fucked up porn fascinating. <laughs> to be fair, you're just pretending to be outraged and surprised. Oh my god. <laughs> Note to self, don't eat at that man's restaurant. He doesn't sell the semen recipes at the restaurant, so, you know, you've lucked out there. <laughs> you think it changes from person to person? You still shouldn't freeze your semen. Don't do that, it'll separate. One woman died from that, actually? She died from drinking too much semen? You used to do that with some friends? Oh, hell yeah, fucked up porn night's best, dude. You've seen the eels, but not the cockroaches. There are many eel videos. And I, I reference the fucking I never should have quit the nail salon one all the time because it's probably the funniest. Like the videos of the Japanese girls eating like three pounds of noodles and then just puking them on each other. Uh, or that one that like you think is going to be a normal porn when they're like eating dinner on the table and then she just starts forcefully vomiting into the food and the guy keeps eating and you're like, what the fuck is happening? Guy sounds neat. You know, I told you about it before, but it still sounds neat. I like that guy. He's a great guy. <laughs> We're still friends. You remember Jewel Lovely talking with other Jav actresses about Bukake filming being something they wanted to try for a long time and how happy they were to swallow so much. They did have digestion issues after, though. What the fuck? Bug stuff is called formicophilia. I learned something! She didn't die from drinking semen. She was suffocated by it. What the fuck? How did nobody help her? It takes a while to fucking suffocate. I'm gonna do something actually productive now. Good luck! Thanks for hanging out! She died from a bukake scene. She ended up choking and no one noticed. Fucking how? I remember a clip of a woman stinging her clit with a wasp. Hey, I know where that's from. She choked on it and died from asphyxiation, not actually drinking. That's fucking loophole, dude. Most of the ones you've seen are basic shit like two girls, one cup, or one guy, one jar. So it's always so cute when people act like they're traumatized by that shit or like goatsy, right? It's like, ah, to be a normie again. I wonder what it feels like. June Lovejoy, she has a podcast where she talks about other active jab actresses. I would fucking love to hear that shit. Because like the ones that do the crazy nonsense, like having a full octopus stuffed inside them. Like how, how do you recover after that? Like, how, how do you live your life? I just don't get it, dude. To be an NPC again. Such a simple existence. You've seen a lot of stuff, and Two Girls, One Cup is still pretty wild. Two Girls, One Cup is very tame compared to some of the other Jav porn, including shit that I've seen. You remember that v the VTuber who stapled her vagina shut? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why you would do that. Please do not staple the vagina. It does not deserve that. There's also the girl projectile shitting while hanging on a rope as she spins around. She just wanted to be a pendulum, you know? One guy, one jar is the one that fucks with you because it seems so surreal that the guy doesn't react. That's, that's, that's fair. I'll give you that one. The fact that he doesn't react to the jar shattering very much is just like... How many drugs are you on, my guy? There's an Eastern European one 
where like a woman gets a full wine bottle stuffed in the anus and watching it you can tell she's also drugged out of her mind but not as much as the one guy one jar and lord you could tell it was not acted pain i was like holy shit eastern europe what is going on you'd watch gusso milk uh -huh. he gave an interview i haven't seen his interview staple the vagina no sex until marriage queen snake has a lot of that kind of shit so i wouldn't be surprised if that vtuber watched queen snake shit you can't watch one guy one jar i don't think there's any porn that i like can't watch but there's some that definitely turn on my uh my ah uh, kind of reactions you know seen the wine bottle the baseball bats traffic cone it's interesting how much the human body can stretch it's interesting how we took medieval torture devices and then said to ourselves yeah i want to get sexual pleasure from that and speaking of sexual pleasure boop. i figure the nixium cult is the one that everybody knows about so it's probably the most tame that we're going to talk about today and it's probably the first one I should I should go with, just in case there's somebody who doesn't really know too much. But it's it's the the most notorious one of our age because it happened so recently. She, we're actually on topic, dude. Extreme tucking. I don't like that. You saw a video of a guy who stapled his dick to his balls. The amount of videos I've seen of. Castration is just when you take the balls off, right? Castration is not cutting the dick off, if I'm remembering correctly. The amount of videos I've seen of like fucking self castrations is kind of, kind of nuts. Some some of the guys will actually like eat them afterwards, and it's just like what? Uh, only one and a half hours to get on topic. Hey, well, you know, we were talking about a mass shooting that recently happened and getting it confused with another mass shooting, because you know. I'm a podcast. <laughs> Dairoku, heckin. <clears throat> In the business. We call this foreshadowing. Oink. The tangent has come full circle. That was a perfect segue. I'm honestly proud. <laughs> There's the one that got Q cleared. Oink. You had ball surgery. It's not pleasant. I'm sorry. And then we have the, uh, the classic oo-wooing. I'll do the oo-wooing before I read about the sexing. You have two flavors of castration, Spadone and Castrati. One gets to keep the sword, the other one is cut flush. Okay. Figures the Paraguayan would know about this on the fly. <laughs> You got refunded when it- yeah, yeah. If you- if you get, like, your request rejected, it always gets refunded. So you don't have to worry about losing your points. Hmm. We got the heck in. Ooh. He- he captured- Oh god, I'm not good at doing it today. Ooh. 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 Mm -hmm. Throat, throat being real upsetty spaghetti at me the last few days, dude. Sounds like Italian pasta. Hey, give me some of that castrati, penne pasta, mamma mia! <laughs> They're still here! Are the balls with us in the room right now? It's actually a thing because they chopped kids' balls off so they wouldn't lose the voice. I don't like that. <laughs> Ooh, he, he captured the town of Shu and slew the two princes' sons who have formerly been generals of Wu. He was then med meditating a de descent on Ying, the capital. But the general, Sun Wu, said the army is exhausted. It is not yet possible. We must wait. After further successful fighting, in the ninth year, 506 BC, King Holu addressed Wu Zhu Hu Su 
and Sun Wu saying formally, you declared that it was not yet possible for us to enter Ying. How far is Kirshi through the art of war? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no fucking clue. Singular and plural forms. Your Italian is rusty AF. Hello, fruit fly. Ignoring Nixium, there was a feminist sex cult in the 90s where men could join and have as much fun as they want, but they had to get snipped. So harem, but in the end, it might not be performance-wise enjoyable. Uh, if you have to get snipped, what kind of fun are you actually having? We're done with the first page. We're getting there. <laughs> so, Nixium... If you guys, if you guys don't know what Nixium is, but I feel like most people do. Nothing should surprise me when it comes to the accusations against Smallville actress Allison Mack and Keith Raniere, two prominent members of alleged sex cult Nixium. Over the past year, disturbing reports of sex slaves, diet control, and human branding have come from former members of the cult, as well as an extensive piece in The Hollywood Reporter. And in the Discord sometime last year or the year before, I can't remember... We watched a series on A&E called Cults and Extreme Beliefs, and they had an episode on uh, Nixium with a couple of people who had left the cult and talking about their time in it. It was, it was, a, it was a really good docuseries, honestly. I would recommend it. The piece mostly corroborates earlier reports of Mac's deep involvement in the organization and allegations that she was instrumental in finding, recruiting, and controlling the women who joined Rhaenyra's inner circle. Das, Dominus O Obsequious Sororium, or Master Over Slave Women, as sex slaves. It also shed some disturbing light on what exactly Rhaenyra required of these women and what he believed their purpose was. Months after the alleged cult made headlines in 2018, Nixium is back in the news as those allegedly involved in the twisting saga, like Mac and Rhaenyra, are making their pleas in court. But to understand what those pleas mean, let's take a look at some of the most disturbing and wild details in the case. Keith Raniere allegedly believed that women were controlled by his sperm. Specifically, a former member told THR that Raniere believed the women he had sex with were all connected via his sperm, and this was another way of controlling those in his harem. If one woman is having an issue, it hurts Keith, and if he's hurting, you're hurting. A former member explained, so if you do something that he doesn't like, you get an army of women, sister wives, coming after you. You get ostracized. No one wants to socialize with you unless you get back in line. That's kind of crazy. How did he convince so many people? How did, how did he be like, you know, you know those nanobots that the government designed to activate their agents? My sperm is actually a natural, advanced type of nanobot that brings all of you women's together. All of you are now connected. And you all feel the same feelings. Like, how? How did he convince so many people of that? Like, that just sounds fucking wild to me. Like, even, even as, like, a teenager, when I had a friend, when I had a friend who was just like, Yeah, I'm telekinetic. I have telekinetic powers, and I can make you feel things, even though I'm across the country. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, can you make me feel something right now? And he'd be like, I'm hugging you right now. Can you feel my arms around you and my breath on your neck as I hug you? It's like, no. No, I cannot. <laughs> Don't ask me. You can't even convince one woman you're a good partner. Though meeting one human per month on average doesn't help. I think yeah, peer pressure is a hell of a drug, but it's like, I don't know, it's kind of nuts. <laughs> Bailey, don't pinch yourself! He must have had some kind of other industry power that was important to what those women wanted. I don't know, dude. Keith Raniere allegedly promoted incest, pedophilia, and misogyny. Is this where internalized misogyny came from? From early on, the organization seemed to prime its members for polygamy, but this turned out to be a springboard for Raniere's more controversial views about gender roles and incest. Keith said to me multiple times that it was okay for little girls to pleasure their fathers sexually, another member confessed. He thought that was fine. 
In March 2019, Ranire was handled or handed additional charges of child pornography. In his trial, the New York Times reports that prosecutors will show pictures of a reportedly 15-year-old naked girl in Ranire's bed. The New York Times also reports that at one Nixium group called the Society of Protectors, women were made to wear fake cow udders over their breasts while men insulted them. Man, this is like an autogynephiliac's dream right here, honestly. Holy shit. <laughs> One, one woman's nightmare is an autogynephiliac's treasure, honestly. You have to be a weak person to need a cult. Yeah, uh, some people are vulnerable, though, you know? Like, it's not just a case of room temp IQ. You could just be down bads in the depressions and feel a sense of acceptance. One of those things is not like the other. You just thought that it was a harem, not an incest harem cult? Chaot, how else are you going to keep people in the folds? You got to promote incest. That's like a common trend through every single sex cult is all of them are real fucking big on incest. It's always the nonces, dude. Wait, fauna? What? what? Hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> You're going to have to Google what autogynephiliac is. Eh, he spelled it right. An autogynephiliac is a man with a fetish for... Dressing like a woman, uh, presenting as a woman, and being treated as a woman by other people. Usually in a sexual object of desire kind of way. That is, that is what autogynephilia is. Uh, there's also autoandrophilia, which is women who have a fetish for being seen and treated as men. It is far less prevalent than autogynephilia, though. So auto, autogynephilia is the more prevalent of the fetish. There was, a, there was a League of Legends pro player who was a very avid autogynephiliac and he wanted to basically become a big titty... No, not Sneaky. Sneaky is not an autogynephiliac. He's just a trap. He's just your garden variety trap. Uh, I don't remember this guy's name, but he actually had bottom surgery and then killed himself. But uh, the, new the news reported him as transgender, which is not correct. He was, he was not transgender. Like, I have the Discord logs of him saved somewhere where, where he ba he's very actually unironically transphobic and is, is very open about being a fetishist. It might, it might be Maria. It might, it might be that person. But they wanted to be like a big titty fucking cowgirl, anime cowgirl. And then after they got the surgery, they realized, holy shit, my fetish is gone. What have I done? Kind of thing. How many tabs do I have open right now? Uh, 2,361. Why do you ask? Sneaky's pizza, severe cosplay, though. Yeah. yeah sne sneaky, sneaky do it pretty, pretty fucking good. No, oh, you see. Yeah, no. There's there's a difference. There's a, there's a huge the fucking tabs, you psychopath. She's got the receipts. What the what do you mean? Why are you guys what the fucking? I'm sorry. How so many? How is my PC not on fire? I'm only using I'm Close the fucking Fire, tabs, is only you using psychopath. I'm sorry. 731 megabytes of my memory and 0.5% of my CPU. I think I'm fine. How is my PC still running? Maria Creveling, whose league name was Remilia. That sounds very familiar. I, I want to say that is the correct person. There were, there were a lot of people basically trying to tell the news that they got the story a bit wrong. How do you even check the tab number? Uh, I don't want to bring down my top bar here, but next to all your tabs, there's like the little arrow that you can use to like glide through them. There's a plus sign for new tabs. There's the drop down like arrow for searching your tabs, and then next to the drop down arrow, uh, there's a tab counter. There's a tab counter that you can click on, and it says tabs in this window, 2,361. Tabs in all windows, 2,361. Number of windows, one. Probably because those tabs are not active. Yeah, I don't have all of them active at once. That'd be crazy. Because it's not Chrome, you fucking Neanderthals! Yeah. I had I had 261 tabs in Chrome last time I checked. I don't know how many I have right now. Cuz Chrome doesn't have a tab counter, I don't think. So the only way to know is like if I close it and then I got to go reopen it. 
Close the counting. fucking tabs, you psychopath. Yeah, there's, there's, there's only a tab counter in Firefox. I mean, maybe a browser I don't use also has a tab counter, but Firefox is the one with the literal tab counter. I'm not closing my tabs! I need them! I need them! 1,000 sticks of RAM have cried in pain and were suddenly silent! Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. But yeah, no, there's, there's a huge, huge difference between, like, traps, autogynephiliacs, and transgender people. And I think a lot of people confuse all three of those groups in current year. And it, crea it creates a lot of issues, in my opinion. But that's not a rabbit hole I'm going down right now. Even, even just saying the A word is, it makes me nervous. You know, I'm looking over my shoulders. <laughs> you have terrible OPSEC and use the convenience of Chrome. Understandable. Forget about needing your tabs. Do I even remember them? It's, it's actually kind of like if I scroll through my tabs, I can see where my memories were at different points in time and like stuff that I was looking up, stuff that I wanted to do, stuff that I intended on buying. Some of the tabs at the beginning of the 2000s I've had open for so long that like the websites no longer exist. Like they, they've been deleted. Reddit says, right click a tab, select all tabs, then right click again and you will see close X tabs. Okay, I'm in Chrome. I am right clicking a tab. New tab, add tab, add tab, move tab, reload, duplicate, pin, mute, send, close, close other tabs, close tabs to the right. There is no select all tabs in Chrome. And I, I don't want to close my browser right now. <laughs> I don't want to close it because I'm using it. Sorry, that wasn't Chrome. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have 486 tabs, a classic. Oh my God. Why haven't I pushed for Kirsha to get sponsored by Firefox yet? She's literally the prime example of how reliable the browser is. I added them with my tabs when I finally hit 2000. I was very proud, but they didn't notice me. Close Hines, the fucking Hines tabs, didn't notice me you either with my dust ketchup and their little chicky plushy. Oh, fucking rude ass. You're a visual learner. We should look at some traps for science. Sne sneaky, very cute trap. 2.3k tabs in Firefox is one idle tab in Chrome, honestly. I use tabs as some sort of diary. It's, it's like, since my memory is so bad, because I have so many tabs, I can kind of keep track of things and have a rough idea of when exactly they happened as well. So it's, it's pretty nice for me. I need a redesign for her Firefox sponsorship streams. <laughs> gotta, gotta give me the fucking classic colors for my hair, you know? It was for you and other people who don't have that option showing in our Firefoxes. Really? How do you not have that option showing? I guess I can, I can bring my browser down for a second. I don't have anything, I don't have anything super weird showing in my tabs at the moment, you know? Uh, browser, unlock, just drag this down a little, a little second here. Uh, this, you can't see the pop out because it's like, it pops out in like a tiny, a tiny window. But like this thing right here. I have too many tabs, so you can only see the, the two, three, six, because it only, it only populates up to three numbers. So I have to click it. <laughs> you only update Firefox when you restart your PC. I don't know, it auto-updated at some point. It said, fuck you. You can't not update any longer. So this is, this is where, this is where it is. I was just kind of chilling there, you know? Now we, now we get rid of that bar again. Get out of here. Adult fa? Hmm. What, where does it say adult fa? Oh, it's, uh, it was the, it was the, uh, the Naruto adult fan fiction that I found. I don't remember what we were looking up. There's a Keffels tab right next to it. So I can, I can only imagine what we were looking up on stream, but I found that fan fiction on stream and I read part of it out loud. <laughs> Tabs are the future of transhumanism. Icy Hot didn't notice Mari Mari when she got some on her butthole. Uh, why would she put Icy Hot on the butthole? Like, I, I understand, like, ginger and capsaicin and pineapple, but, like, why Icy Hot? She's also a fiery fox. It makes sense. I'm chill, dude. I'm chill. When 70% of your RAM is your chrome. It was on her back and it dripped down. 
How fucking old is that icy hot that it drips? I don't believe that. <laughs> I've I've used a lot of icy hot in my time, and it's never been drippy. Never never had it drip. It's like it's very clumpy. Icy hot drips? Maybe I'm just a lizard person. Maybe maybe I'm a lizard person, because I've never had icy hot drip on me. The old school blue menthol gel drips. Oh, I get the little I get the little pots. I get the little pots of Icy Hot where you have to like dig it out with your fingers and then like smear it. There's a gel version. Oh, that would be very drippy. You've seen it as a spray. Ew. Ew. Maybe it depends on the presentation. You know a guy who tried to use Icy Hot as lube? I also know a guy who tried to use Icy Hot as lube. I don't know why people are like this. I was like, I knew a guy in high school who had sex with the town bike and I made a joke about how he doesn't know what kind of STD he could have gotten from that. So clearly he needs to fucking... Oh god, I always forget this word! I always forget this word! Not sanitize. I was like, uh, D, take off the germs. Uh, you got, you got... <sighs> Disinfect, thank you! I don't know why, I, that's like the third time this week I've forgotten that fucking word. He needs to disinfect his dick, so he should fucking clean it with peroxide? And the mad lad actually fucking did it? I was like, why would you put hydrogen peroxide on your dick? What's wrong with you? I was making a joke. Ungermify. <laughs> yes, de dehumanize. I already called it a town bike, dude. <laughs> Holy, we, we, got, we got distracted again. We got fucking distracted. Where was I? Where was I? <laughs> Feels great, man. The New York Times also reported that at one Nixium group called Society of Protectors, women were made to wear fake cow udders over their breasts while men insulted them. In the grand jury testimony obtained by the New York Post, former members alleged that Raniere had sex with sex slaves in houses belonging to people like co-founder Nancy Salzman and actress Allison Mack. The bed was elevated and a hot tub was underneath the bed. A former member said of Salzman's library in her half-moon New York home. Raniere would allegedly punish women who had sex with people who weren't him. And at one point, keeping a woman prisoner for 18 months in the home of one of his supporters because she pursued a romantic relationship with someone else. It just sounds like your average VTuber supporter, you know? My oh, she can't have a relationship. <laughs> Speaking of town bike, sex cult! The cult's name sounds like a Niji gen. Shh, we don't want to release their secrets. Remember stories from old people using lemon juice to supposedly tell if a woman had an STD or not? What the hell? Average sapling! Regular day at the amount of people coming out with like... I had my drink spiked at TwitchCon, I don't know who did it and I have no proof but it happened. It was kinda, kinda nuts to me. This was told by your grandpa. What the hell? The lemon juice thing supposedly worked. How can you tell if someone has an STD by using lemon juice? I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. Just like pissing on the wheat to see if they were pregante. What the hell? Did the wheat change color? Allison Mack brought women into the cult for Keith Raniere to use as sex slaves. A witness formerly identified on court documents as Jane Doe 5 has now been named. Going only by Nicole, she testified Friday at Raniere's trial in Federal District Court in Brooklyn. Nicole joined the group in 2016 when Mac offered what she thought was mentorship. She was dissatisfied with the trajectory of her career. After meeting with Mac at the Ace Hotel in Manhattan, Mac promised that joining the group would fix how she was feeling. This just sounds like average Hollywood. Are you, are you not getting roles as quickly as you would like? Are you not the leading lady, but you're still some background character? Just have sex with some guy in the industry. It's okay, you can always accuse him of, like, sexual assault 40 years later. But you know, right now, that'll help your career. <laughs> spray it on the genitals. Please don't spray lemon juice on genitals. Is herpes invisible ink now? Maybe. <laughs> What the heck? You spray the lemon juice in their eyes as you interrogate them? Jesus, fuck. You suck at acting, so why not suck my dick? Goddamn, Hollywood's a crazy place. <laughs> 
pissing on wheat seeds worked by causing the seeds to sprout faster? If the woman was pregante, that's something like 70% accurate. That's fucking weird. Wim, wim, pregante women can solve world hunger by pissing on wheat. Piss babies rejoice. She now believes it was all a ruse and a part of a plot to get me up here for Keith. To join the group, Nicole said she was asked to provide collateral to show that she was committed. This collateral included a solo sex tape and a letter in which she lied about being sexually abused by her father. Why would you lie about something like that? At one point, she was encouraged by Mac to be a good slave and do anything Rhaenyra asked. Nicole recounted an experience she had shortly after joining Nixium, where she had le was led blindfolded into a house in upstate New York by Rhaenyra and asked to remove her clothes and lie down on a table. Her wrists and ankles were bound, and Rhaenyra allegedly circled the table asking her questions about her sexual history, while an unidentified third person performed oral sex on her. I was so confused. It was terrifying, she said on the witness stand. Keith Rhaenyra allegedly wanted a DOS political candidate. According to a testimony given by Lauren Salzman, Rhaenyra envisioned that there would be thousands or millions of people in DOS. We might be able to have a candidate for political office. So the two things that stand out to me here is why did, why did he think of using oral sex as a torture method while trying to get information out of a person? And secondly, why did he think that having a sex cult, he would get anywhere near the mainstream enough to have a political candidate? Like, there might be a lot of Hollywood elites involved in, like, pedophilic cult shit, right? Maybe, maybe he was inspired by Epstein, but was like, I'm not too, I'm not into, like, actual children, right? He had a 15-year-old. So he was, he was, he was, he was, he was getting there, right? But he's just like, let's just follow in his footsteps. And if, if Epstein can do it, God damn it, so can I. Was that, was that his thought process? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> it's not a conspiracy. That's just the truth. What? Twitch lewd VTubers are in a lesbian sex cult. Seeing all the talk after TwitchCon telling each other how cute they are to the point you wanted to shoot your brains out. I feel like that's just normal woman speak, right? Like, you tell everyone to their face how cute they are, and then, like, behind their back, you're just like, she's a bitch. She doesn't deserve that audience. What the fuck? Why is she getting more viewers than me? And then, and then she, like, pops up in your timeline again, and you're like, oh my god, bestie, you're so fucking cute. Glad you don't feel the same way. Hello, hating on oats. Sex cults are kind of cursed, I guess, you know? This is why they got taken down. The current sex cults running the country don't want competition. <laughs> Island prices are through the fucking roof. That's true. That's why he was in New York. It's still expensive, but not as much as an island. You gotta be a politician, then have the sex co Ah, that's true. He did confuse the order of operations. Maybe he put Icy Hot on his tongue before the torture. Oh my god, that would be more painful for the tongue person, wouldn't it? On the subject of Pizzagate, you can only say, oh my god. I don't know much about Pizzagate. I just remember people getting really angry at, like, an actual pizza place. And I was like, hmm, that's kind of weird. Women compliment each other but don't mean it. It's how they operate. It's, it's, how, it's how you compliment someone privately that matters, right? Like, if, if you're going to do something, do it outside of the public eye. And it's like, it's, it's more realistic, you know? Maybe she's a Nux Orbiter. Oh. Kind of like how men insult each other but don't mean it. Oh my god. Not a sex cult, but the Japanese Dem Party has a lot of cult members. There was that whole cult thing in uh, Korea as well. You only know Icy Hot is the thing morons put on their balls and then make a funny video. How have so many people done this? Why have so many people done this? You compliment your bros at the gym. You gotta get a nice pump, dude. So remember the cellar existed, according to the owner, a few years before the accusations. Then it never existed. Mm. Women are fucking weird. Yeah. And, and that's why I didn't like the whole w women purporting that women who have mostly male friends are like dangerous slut houses, right? That's like, I've, there's a very good reason for having mostly male friends, and it's because I can trust them more than women. <laughs> I learned early in my life from like my mother, from the women my mother hung around, from the people I was friends with in like middle and high school, don't trust women. <laughs> I 
Like, fucking men have done some down bad shit to me, too. But holy shit. <laughs> you were not only following the threads, but also investigating that shit, and people got death threats. What? I, I, I'm gonna be honest, I really don't know a whole lot about that. I do not know a whole I know a lot about a lot of stuff, but not about that. You like the scene in Nerds where they spray the jock straps with Icy Hot? <laughs> Jesus Christ. At least you know the men just want to fuck you, not fuck you up. I, the worst thing, the worst thing is when you get into like catty office politics, where there's always that one woman that wants to be like, you better stay in your lane because I can get you fired whenever I want to. This is my house. That's like, fuck, dude, just leave me the fuck alone and let me do my work, bitch. <laughs> Still on cursed topics. We're talking about sex cults, baby. We're talking about sex cults. Hmm. Nixium and DOS punishments were allegedly violent. Allegedly. The punishments could include being forced to hold painful poses, stand barefoot in the snow, take cold showers and whip each other on the bare butt with a strap. Miss Salzman said, the New York Times wrote, she recalled that Mr. Ranieri once called during the beatings to tell the women to make sure that they snapped their wrists in a particular way to inflict maximum pain. So is the being forced to hold painful poses like the human furniture kind of thing? Like, you know, those like bondage thingies that go around from your elbows to your wrists or like from your knees to your ankles and your hands are like at your shoulders and your feet are like at your at your butt you guys know what i'm talking about you have to like walk around on your knees and your elbows is it kind of is it kind of like using those things but they're like bent into different positions because that that would be real fucking painful to have to sit, sit like that for an elongated time i just like put, put glass on top of as a table now she's a table a hobble? I don't, I don't know if they have a name. I mean, I imagine they might, but what it is, I don't know. <laughs> what it is, I do not know. Many believe Alice and Mac had been totally brainwashed by Rhaenyra's thinking. I don't think she was thinking she was actually trafficking girls, a former roommate told THR. It doesn't mean she doesn't deserve punishment, but I think she had drunk enough Kool-Aid to really believe that these girls were going to save the world with Rhaenyra's super sperm. See, and it's just like... All of them were fucking brainwashed, right? But why is she being given leeway for being the ringleader? No one, no one's given like that fucking, that fucking lady I can't remember the name of who worked with Epstein leeway. Why is she being treated like a child who didn't take upon the decision herself? She chose to do this. So why, why are people just like, oh, you know, she didn't, she didn't think she was trafficking girls. She just thought his super sperm would save the world. Maxwell, thank you. I'm bad with names. Like, nobody, nobody's saying she didn't know what she was doing. She was just brainwashed. And I feel like it's the same for this bitch, you know? Some former members even suspect she's so devoted to the cause that she'll actually take the fall for the leader, saying he had no knowledge of the inner circle where much of the initially reported abuse and branding occurred. What the fuck? If Allison testifies that Keith didn't know, that's a crock of shit. Barbara Bushi, a former girlfriend of Rhaenyra who left Nixium in 2009, said, Mac is currently on house arrest with her parents and expected to plead guilty. If convicted, she and Rhaenyra face at least 15 years in prison. So I think they had an update on their prison time recently. I'm pretty sure they had an update on that. But this, is, this was like the most recent sex cult shit that pretty much everybody knows about. Maxwell, who had an empty client list, considering no one else has gone to prison. Yeah, that's pretty fucking weird. That's pretty fucking weird that, uh, you know, nobody else has gotten arrested. Is she still alive? Yeah, Al Allison Mack is still alive. Ghislaine Maxwell also still alive. They did something fucking weird with her where everybody was like, Ah, shit, here we go. She gonna get Epsteined, but she she's still there. Not actually an empty client list, but her list is hidden deep in the glowing vaults. And they were like, we need all the names. So we can protect all of them. You're going to take the fall for this. <laughs> Mac got three years. I feel like that is a very short sentencing, all things considered. Like, these people got branded. This article didn't talk about it, but, like, these, these women had an actual, like, cattle prod style branding put into them with Rhaenyra and Allison Mac's initials being the branding. Uh, it's like, goddamn, dude. 
That's kind of fucked up. That's kind of fucked up. Mm. But I wanted to start with that one since it is the, the most well known. Just give a little, a, little, a little overview. The whole system is corrupt beyond redemption. If you see people being given leeway or special treatment, it's because they have dirt on everyone accusing them. True and fair. Is this Cali? No, this is New York. This is New York City. And the next, the next cult we're going to talk about is in the UK. It's in the UK. Kid Welly sex cult leader Colin Bately may never be free. East Coast Cali. I used to joke about how Massachusetts was basically the California of the East Coast, but goddamn, New York subverted my expectations. A sex cult leader who brainwashed and abused children has been jailed and warned he may never be released. Colin Batley, 48, was found guilty of 35 offenses at Swansea Crown Court on Wednesday. Three women, including his estranged wife, were also imprisoned. He moved from London to the small town of Kidwelly, Car Carmanthenshire, where the cult operated in a cul-de-sac. He was given a public protection sentence with an 11-year minimum recommendation. That means, of course, you may never be released, said P P J B B B B Judge Paul Thomas. God damn it, couldn't move out of here fast enough. I'm sorry, Smiling Reaper. <laughs> Jacqueline Marling, 42, described as Batley's right-hand woman, was jailed for 12 years, while Batley's wife Elaine, 47, was jailed for 8. Shelley Miller, 35, described during the trial as Batley's sex slave, was jailed for 5 years. Why was the sex slave jailed? I don't know. Vincent Barden, 70, of Kempston, Bedfordshire, who was not a cult member, was jailed for 3 years after admitting 2 counts of sexual assault on an underage girl. Dude, fucking 70? You guys can get erections for so goddamn long. That's kind of nuts. That's kind of crazy to me. Batley was said in court to have been an active molester and rapist of children and young people for more than three decades. Wait, how did he only get 11 years minimum for three decades? What the hell? Previously, a jury rejected claims by Batley and other defendants during the trial that no cult existed. The cult, who all lived in the same cul-de-sac, took part in a catalog of abuse against children and young adults. Victims said the group used occult writings and practices to brainwash them and justify the abuse. Batley used his position as the cult leader to rape boys and girls, the court was told. Judge Thomas detailed how Batley had moved from London to Wales in the 90s and eventually based the cult in Kidwelly. He added, You formed a community within a community, you were described as evil, and that, in my view, is an entirely accurate statement of your character. It is likely that you have dedicated your life since you were 12 years old to satisfying your sexual urges by whatever means at your disposal. The judge also attacked the works of occultist Alistair Crowley, which inspired the Kidwelly cult. Batley and others were said to have used Crowley's The Book of the Law, which praises prostitution and free sex, as a guide for their own actions. I don't, even, I don't even know who fucking Alistair Crowley is. Is that like just some fucking author? They're Brits. Yeah, this is, this is the UK. This is uh, in Wales specifically. He moved from London and then set up the cult in Wales. Crowley is like ancient history? Jesus, dude. He's a guy I can do an entire show on. Really? Sex magic? I don't know the sex magic man. That's why they get away with anything. Oh, shit, dude. Let's, uh, let's fucking grab a tab here. Let's grab a Chrome tab. Alistair Crowley. English occultist. 1875. Wow, he's not quite as old as one of the... <laughs> talking about today, you bitch ass. Alistair Crowley was an English occultist, ceremonial magician, poet, painter, novelist, and mountaineer. He founded the religion of Thelema, identifying himself as the prophet entrusted with guiding humanity into the Aeon of Horus in the early 20th century. Hot damn, that sounds like fun. Hot damn, that sounds like fun. Wait, in, in Secret World Legends, they talk about the cult of Horus. I wonder if that was a reference to fucking this guy and I, it just flew over my head. Everybody holds their breath when she opens another tab. You know, one of these days I'm going to say that and my stream is just going to crash. <laughs> he, 
He was buddies with L. Ron Hubbard and the JPL guy that you can't remember the name of. He met the aliens! I'm glad that he was one of the founding members of Wakanda. Not fun, it's Satanism! Fun to learn about. Most, most of the sex cult shit is fun to learn about. I would say the only one that was probably not fun to learn about was like the, the, the French Revolution people who uh, 120 Days of Sodom was based on. Crowley is big in occultism circles, so yeah, it's a reference to him in Secret World. Oh, shit, dude. All right. Judge Thomas told Batley he had used the occult to manipulate and control his victims. Batley was found guilty of offenses including 11 rapes, 3 indecent assaults, causing prostitution for personal gain, causing a child to have sex, and inciting a child to have sex. Now, if he had been doing this for three decades and only raped 11 times, that's kind of low, don't you think? Like, did they just, like, miss a whole bunch of victims? Like, there's no way. There's no way this guy was doing this for fucking 30 years and only did it 11 times. You disagree. Wait, you f what, disagree on what point, Stray Wolf, my guy? <laughs> what would cause a decent assault anyways? What? Decent assault? Passing sentence, the judge made it clear that Batley would be eligible to seek parole only once it was determined he no longer represented a danger to the public. Why? Why does he even have the option to seek parole, is my question. A major part of that process is to admit his guilt, something he vehemently denied throughout the trial. His wife was found guilty of three counts of indecency with a child and one of sexual activity with a child. Marling was found guilty of one count of aiding and abetting rape, one of causing prostitution for gain, and one of inciting a child to engage in sex. She was also found guilty of three separate counts of indecency with a child. Miller was found guilty of indecency with a child and inciting a child to engage in sex. Man, this cult, this cult fucking really had a thing. Another woman, Sandra Iveson, 45, was cleared of the one charge she faced of indecency with a child. After Friday's hearing, victims of the cult expressed their relief at the outcome. PC Lindsay David of Defford Powys Police reached out a statement agreed by all the victims. It was a nightmare journey for each and every one of us, and we hope that this can be the start of a new beginning. We've experienced the worst that life can throw at us, and all we want to do now is move forward. Detective CH Insp Mark... Detective Chief Inspector! <gasps> I did it! Acronyms! Detective Chief Inspector Mark Bergmanski. I just thought that was fucking part of the guy's name. I was like, who names their son Insp? What the fuck? Said the police were delighted with the outcome of the trial and paid tribute to the victims for coming forward. Head of the Crown Prosecution Service Complex Case Unit for Wales, Tom Atherton said, the prosecution was able to show that Colin Bately was at the center of this activity. But I, I guess, I guess uh, they don't really talk too much about what else they did. We got a black magic sex cult. Look at him! He looks like a Stephen King fan! New brain cell wrinkled acquired. We're gonna be so fucking wrinkly by the end of the year, dude. If you get charged with indecent assault, that implies the existence of a decent assault. A uh, decent assault would be physical with no sexual connotation. Indecent assault is sexual connotation. No smooth brains here. We're wrinkling! You disagree with uh, Satanism being fun? I don't think fun would be the way to describe it. Fun to learn about people doing weird ass shit though. He looks like the guy that gets very excited about one particular scene in the It book. I don't like that. Police have moved to reassure people that a notorious pedophile and sex cult leader who abused children and young adults has not been released back into the local community. Colin Batley was jailed in 2011 at Swansea Crown Court for carrying out a series of perverted sexual attacks, having moved to Wales in the 1990s. He set up what was described as a black magic sex cult in the cul-de-sac of Kidwelly in Carmarthenshire. He was found guilty of indecent charges, 11 counts of rape, the three women, we already read their charges. One of Bately's victims later spoke out to describe how he had forced her to wear a satanic symbol and raped her as a teenager. That's kind of nuts. I, wanna, I wanted to get an article that had like a detailing of what actually happened. Not like, 
sexual detailing, but like people just talking about what the fuck they had to go through. The woman who wanted to remain anonymous said at the time, Colin was the boss. He barked orders at everybody, including me. People just did what they were told. He had Rottweilers that were scared of him, but vicious to everyone else. At 15, I had to have sex with Colin. He said it was an initiation into the cult. He said he did not want to do it, but it had to be done. He said if I did not follow orders, I would be killed, and people higher up in the cult would do it, he said. Man. He's a very creepy looking motherfucker. He doesn't even need the facial hair to pull off the creepy look, dude. You studied the freaks, but you don't consider it fun just to be aware of the dark side? That's a, that's a good way to put it. You need to take care of stuff when we finally get into the sex cult. So, oh, Timmy Tams, I hope you do your stuff efficiently. As far as cults go, you'd say Satanists are pretty funny, especially compared to what bigger cults do, like the scale of pedo issues. Mm. I feel like pedo issues are not specifically a church issue they're in like pretty pretty much every single religious organization however despite that rumors have circulated in the past week or so that batley had been released from prison and that he was living in the same area just 10 miles away from where he carried out some of his terrible crimes in kidwelly the speculation led to concerns in the area that a convicted sex offender and rapist was now residing within the community i'm glad it was confirmed that he is not that he is not, dude. In your city, there was some cult shit going on, too. And even part of the police were involved with the death of at least three girls found in a well. What the fuck? That sounds kind of nuts. We've been sacrificing kids from the dawn of time. Just look at the Aztecs. Yeah. I mean, look at someone like Elizabeth Bathory. She would just pay poor families to give their children to her uh, she'd bleed them dry and bathe in their blood because it would give her youthful properties I'm like oh damn the blood of virgins makes my skin feel so good christian church is notorious for sweeping pedo issues under the rug well yeah because who else gets called out for the pedo issues they're just they're just the easiest target i'm not saying it's not a problem i'm just saying it's not the only problem and focusing on it kind of ignores a lot dude Kind of ignores a lot. He also lived 14 kilometers away from her castle. <gasps> really? Also, I didn't think it was just legend. I thought they like actually found her like diary of names. Like it's an actual like book that they had. But that would be fucking cool. Do they do tours in her castle or is that like a completely off limit zone? Because like they do, they do tours of some of the colonial houses here. Like, you can go to the Benjamin Franklin house, but a lot of places in it are off limits and you can only go to, like, the guided stuff. They're restoring it. I would love, I would love to have a tour of that fucking house, dude. When, uh, when Pippa was doing museum streams during the pandemic, I was like, holy shit, I didn't know that museums had, like, 3D renders of their entire place online. I would love to do that. That would be a lot of fucking fun. You absolutely goddamn love how smooth brains latched onto Catholics doing weird shit and completely ignore that a study showed the U.S. education system is a hundred more times likely to molest a child than the church. Yeah, but Abrahamic religion bad. <laughs> it was a ruin and now there are several buildings and they have a life-size Iron Maiden. Those things are fucking creepy. Those, those things are fucking creepy, dude. Pedo priester is common an issue is shootings in the u.s i mean maybe it could it could definitely be different for another country they might have a higher a higher percentage of like specifically christian catholic catholic faith people than others but i i don't fucking know your pedo statistics in polando i apologize good sir but here here in the u.s like you are far more likely to get molested by a teacher than a priest <laughs> Remember in Poland, Christians are like 90% of the religious people. Well, I mean, when you have a majority of a population, then like, yeah, most, most of the crimes are probably going to come from the majority group, as it were. Sounds like the winged hussars need to ride into the churches then. The winged hussars will ride again, honestly. Let's see if this has any more information here. Mm, he barked orders. We heard that. We heard that. Mm -hmm. Ex-Tesco security guard Batley was the self-styled lord of the bizarre sect which operated for years 
in the quiet cul-de-sac of Clossier Onen in Kidvelly, Carmenthshire. I don't know how to pronounce Wales language, me sorry. Members filled their Gwalia Housing Association homes with ancient Egyptian idol tree, held ceremonies in robes and hoods, and forced a number of children and vulnerable adults into depraved sex acts. The victim said she was massively relieved by the guilty verdict and hoped he would never enjoy freedom again. A hundred years would not be enough for Colin Batley. But at least now myself and the other victims can start to rebuild our lives outside of the shadow of that contemptible man. She also spoke of a ceremony she witnessed in Kidwelly involving an altar on which salted bread, oil, and a goblet of wine was placed. Cult members dressed in white robes held readings of occult texts, and later sex took place between the members who disrobed, or in their words, became sky-clad. The woman who gave evidence in court via a CCTV system, so she did not have to face Batley, added she did not hate Wales, despite what had happened. She was originally from London, but was brought to Wales by Batley, where she was abused and passed around to the other cult members who had sex with her. He said the occult was strong in Wales. She said she did not know if there were many more victims of Batley who had not yet come forward, but she urged them to speak out if they could. I kind of, I kind of want to know, like, how, how most of this shit... Aw, his Rottweilers were named Tutankhamun and Seket. Colin Batley was revealed as a monster who forced a number of women into prostitution and made them pay him 25% of their earnings. You know, you know, Twitch, it's kind of fucking weird when a pedophile cult leader passing around women who are 15 years of age understands that they should keep 75% of their earnings and he only takes a 25% cut when you're taking 50-50 from me, okay? Or even, even the deranged cult member understands that the worker keeps the most of the profits. These fucking guys. <laughs> can you fucking, can you fucking imagine, can we, <laughs> do you think he's had more rape accusations or people working at Twitch? <laughs> fucking shots fired, dude. No, oh, I'm not going to get a partner badge now, eh? <laughs> Twitch is a cult? I mean, it might as fucking well be. Rules are applied unevenly as fuck. Twitch doesn't know half the shit that's going on. They're out of touch with their entire fucking audience, much like Susan and YouTube. Like, goddamn, dude. Shit's kind of scuffed. <laughs> Twitch is a cult. I, I took a clip of, like, their 2020 town hall thing where they were talking about how you can't use like virgin or simp or uh incel as like insults anymore and we're just gonna skim over why the fuck incel which is which has like a dangerous ideology was clumped together with fucking like virgin and simp all right like that makes no goddamn sense but they had they had like their fucking white lady hr person who was just like if you are part of a group that identifies with a slur uh then you'll be allowed to say it and the clip, the clip had like fucking probably half a million views. Like it was fucking crazy. So it's deleted. I went to show it on stream when I was talking about this last year. They deleted that clip from their channel. So you'd have to scrub their 2020 VOD to find her saying it at this point. But it reminded me of the Dave Chappelle skit where he goes to his HR manager and he's like, now, can you tell me why I can say the N-word with impunity, but I can't say the word F-word. And his HR manager was just like, well, David, it's because you're not one of them. And it's just like, wait a minute, hold on. Are you saying you think I'm an N-word? And it's like, you know, the, the joke doesn't come across when I have to censor myself very much, but you know, I probably couldn't play the Dave Chappelle clip either. But it's just like, that's what it reminded me of. Like the Twitch lady just being like, if you identify as part of the group who the word describes, then you can use it on Twitch. And it's like, what the fuck? Ever since that happened, whenever Tangerine would be on stream doing uh, Terra with me, Ta Tangerine's part of the Alphabet Mafia. So he would just fucking fling the F word all the time. And I was like, Tangerine, there's so many people here that forget you're gay and are married to a fucking man. Someone, someone is going to end up reporting you eventually. 
I forgot you said, but I'm not a ginger. Uh, you know, I, I can't remember all of the text of the joke, you know, but it's like, that is what it reminded me of. It's tangents all the way down, dude. All the way down. Only tangents here. Dyslexic ginger. There's, there's a guy. Oh God, can I, is he in a discord with me? Can I see his name? Cause I, I can't even remember his real name. But like every time I see it, it's fucking dangerous. It's a fucking dangerous ass name. Uh, I can't use my search function. That's right. Oh, his name, his name is Aimless Ginger, but it's letters and numbers stacked together. So every time I've just like briefly seen his name across my screen, either in game, cause like he plays MOBA shit or in a discord, I always think it says something else and it like just, oh, like it, <laughs> it makes, it makes me just like have to collect myself for a second. I'm like, why would you do this? What's wrong with you? <laughs> if he, if he took out the numbers, it would probably not look so suspect. Uh, calm down. Cracker isn't a bad word. Can I still say that word even though I'm Italian and Italians aren't white? Is that, can I still say that? <laughs> I need, I need some Argentinian blood in order to use, to use that slur. <laughs> oh my God. He would read from Alistair Crowley's works, including the Book of the Law, Equinox of the Gods, and the Book of Magic. On Friday, Batley was given an indeterminate sentence. We already knew that. He may never be released, but it was like at least 11 years before applying for parole, which I don't think he should ever be able to apply for parole, dude. Oh, it's just like, what? Judge Thomas said it was a mystery how jobless, scruffy Batley, who was missing several teeth, managed to control his women followers, who the judge termed not unintelligent. That's a really good compliment. You know what? You women, you're not unintelligent. <laughs> The debate rages on, dude. Maybe it's on purpose, so I've betrayed my subconscious. <laughs> Cracker's a bad word where you live. It's a delicious type of slim toast bread. I also like slim toast bread. I also like peanut butter and sharp white cheddar on Ritz crackers. That shit slaps, dude. That, as the kids say, that shit busts in. <laughs> Did you just call us bread? But bread is delicious. I would love to fill myself with bread. Some women are attracted to men that look like garbage. Yeah, but it's just like, if this guy, if this guy was jobless and scruffy and was missing teeth and managed to get a whole bunch of women convinced to be in his cult and have sex with him, there's hope for everyone, honestly. <laughs> Fucking no cap, no cap, dude, for real, for real. <laughs> On ja! <laughs> why do they say it like that? If you're trying to say on God, why do you say on ja? Like, I don't... Can someone explain that one to me? I don't understand that one. This guy is the living version of Ugly Bastard from Hentai. I feel like he's not fat enough for that, but pretty much. We doing the cult shit? Hello, Axel! Welcome! Any, any zoomies in the chat? I'm I'm looking for the sides shaved with the poodle puff on top. Someone who's half white and half black. You have no idea what you can and can't say. Everyone's just going to be mad at you all of the time. <laughs> was he poor as well? He thought he had money, but was basically homeless. They said, they said he was jobless, but I mean, like if he was able to buy a bunch of houses on a cul-de-sac, he must have had money from somewhere. They said he was an ex-security guard for fucking Tesco, but that, that's a grocery store, right? Why do your grocery stores in the UK have security guards? Is like, is like knife and acid crime that out of control? Even, even here in the US, our grocery stores don't have security guards unless you go to specific areas. You're technically a zoomie, but your age starts with a two, so you don't know if you qualify. I think you might. Nim, Nim's a zoomie, he's 23. But he doesn't act like he's 23. I feel like he acts older than me most of the time. <laughs> On Jad is a joke about gif or jif. Wait, really? You don't, you lot don't pronounce gif as jif? Hmm. 
How am I reading this like that? Ugh. Not true. You live in a nice place and the Huegmans has a cop that just kind of hangs out. Okay, all right. I have never been to a grocery store that has a security guard then. <laughs> I'll, I'll phrase it that way. Ja is a shortened form of triple X tentation's name. Jase. It's a meme. Jase is a pretty cool name though. I would expect that to be like a Jewish name. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Most people act older than- What the fuck? What is that supposed to mean? Every grocery shop employs a security guard all across Europe. I didn't know that. I'm learning. They only get security in cities where all the gas stations have bulletproof glass checkout. I have never been in an area where a gas station has bulletproof glass. I could at least say that. At least like that I can remember. <laughs> like maybe some of the places my mom lived had it, but like I can't remember that shit. I just remember walking to the McDonald's all the time and buying food for my brother and I. And the McDonald's manager for a while was this really, 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 really nice old guy. And he felt really bad that we came there so often for food as children. So he would just give us free food all the time. He was a very nice manager guy. If the second number is above seven, you're technically not. Oh, that's true. You move to the Bay Area and every store has a security guard. Jesus. Rastas also say Ja, you think? Yeah, but that's like Ja, like, yeah, not Ja, like, God, right? Most, most stores have them. They're just labeled as asset protection. Okay, okay. You've seen security guards in the parking lot at a lot of grocery stores, even in nice areas. Maybe it's becoming more common. Maybe, maybe it's becoming more common. Never been to Jersey. Uh, whenever I drive through New Jersey, uh, I try to get through the state as quickly as possible. Like, you want to make sure you're gassed up before getting to New Jersey so you don't have to stop for any reason whatsoever. It's probably more like unarmed security that deals with shoplifters putting candy in their pants. I thought you're not supposed to deal with shoplifting anymore in current year. You're just supposed to let them take shit and leave. Ah, coffee is delicious. Your friend is a security guard in a shopping mall beating up shoplifters who resist arrest. This is his favorite activity! I, I would have a lot of fun with that too. If I was a security guard and I like had the green light to just beat the fuck out of people who are shoplifting, I'd be like, yeah, let's fucking go! It's baton time, dude! Don't steal, you piece of shit. I was basically already 30 by the time you were 16! Being raised in a broken home ages your ass fast. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, I guess I've been told by a handful of people that it's really endearing that I get incredibly excited at like really tiny nonsense shit, all things considered, when they know like my backstory. And I'm like, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad you find that cute. <laughs> like the cheems. What is the cheems? The fuck is a cheem? I know about, oh God, but the, the, the fat. The fat bugs bunny? Chung chungus? Yeah. The big chungus? I know that one. New Jersey people not knowing how to pump their own gas will never not be hilarious. It's job security. <laughs> There's security near you offering 15 an hour. It was notable because they wanted you to bring your own pistol. Oh, that's pretty cool. 15's kind of low. 15's kind of low, though. You get green light to beat them up only if they resist. Oh, okay. So you still gotta have some self-control. How can I value items over people's lives? I mean, maybe they shouldn't value the items over their own lives in the first fucking place, eh? Security guard is my profession, but boxing is my calling. I'm coming for you! Cheems, Barbinger. I like saying cheese, Barbinger. Here, Cheems. Cheems speak. Cheems. You guys keep repeating cheems like I'm supposed to understand it. Cheems is a doge-like meme. Cheems speak is like adding as many M's to words as possible. Oh, okay. I like to add B's to words, but I think that's my own personal flavor of autism. I'm gemding an ambormchim. Aw, they make abortion sound cute, I guess. <laughs> It's a Zoomer Spurdo meme. Is that where Henlo comes from? I don't know. I've been saying Henlo for over a decade because I just thought Henlo was cute. I don't know where Henlo comes from. 
That just sounds like I had a mild stroke. Someone burning toast in my house. <laughs> Speaking of having a mild stroke, I have a hiccup that needs to be released, but it won't come. It won't come. Hep. The judge dismissed the Book of Law as a ludicrous document, but accepted that cult members were obsessed with it. All the women in the cult had identical Eye of Horus tattoos. Imagine you, you and the ladies all getting identical tramp stamps. <laughs> I'm not even doing anything spooky. Why are you like this? You've only seen Redditors say Henlo. I just thought it was cute. I, I've only ever used Reddit to get Dreamworld females so I can breed them in black and white too because I needed friends to, to get Pokemon from and it was a lot faster to, to get friend codes on Reddit than it was to get it from the, the Pokemon thread <laughs> on, on V. <laughs> did that bring it out, you bitch? It did not. That jump scared you. That is, that is the point of those alerts. Are there jump scares? Because it's a spooky month. And I guess, I guess, I guess cults are spooky, right? <laughs> loud, loud is funny! Henlo comes as a Tumblr post of someone showing a lizard a text message that says, Henlo, you stinky limzard! Oh god, it's, it's, it's happening. I'm evolving. <laughs> How old is VP? I don't fucking know. I, it's, I don't fucking know when they made VP, but I, I don't think it's like crazy old. Because when, when Black and White 2 were out, uh, it was just V and VG. And I can't remember if VG had, like, a, a Pokemon general. They probably did. But uh, somebody, somebody actually helped me the fuck out. I think in X and Y, uh, whatever, whatever the, new, the new gen after Black and White was, uh, I couldn't, like, you couldn't trade from Black and White to, to the new gen. Or, like, maybe I couldn't. I can't remember. My brain's kind of soupy on this. Because I don't think I had, like, two 3DSs or whatever that was needed. So, whenever I start a Pokemon game, I want to start with, like, the six Pokemon that I want to, um, like, play the whole game with. And since I couldn't get them off of my other games, I, I went to the Pokemon Gen and I was like, Hey, uh, would anybody be willing to give me these Egu out of the kindness of their heart? And somebody did! I don't know who you are, but thank you. You made my life happier. <laughs> Neat lore. Oh my god. I thought, uh, I was talking about the Lionhead game Black and White 2 and you were struggling to think how that fit. I actually have that installed on my PC right now. Because I also fucking love Black and White 2, the not Pokemon game. <laughs> You could through Pokebank? Yeah, but you had to pay for Pokebank, and like, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna pay for Pokemon transfer ship, dude. That's kind of scuffed. That's kind of fucked. VP's 2010, VG's 2012. Wait, really? The Pokemon board was around before the Generals? Maybe I just ignored the Pokemon board then. Because uh, I thought it was like more recent, right? Like, I thought it was like 2014, 2015. But I, I guess it's not, so I probably just ignored its fucking existence. <laughs> Hello, Matt! Hello! Hello, Yuri! I can give you a heckin' oing! How are you, lady? We're talking about sex cults today. <laughs> That's why you like Sword and Shield? You could surprise trade your way to the ones that you want. Hmm. I didn't play Sword and Shield. I didn't play it. Big... I'm gonna I'm gonna play the new ones coming out next month though, because I wanna play I wanna play the fucking I wanna play the fucking co-op ones. That sounds cool as heck. You're a new friend. VP came out shortly after you'd been using the site. Huh. I probably just ignored the fuck out of it then. <laughs> Your hostages are a sex cult in a sense. Do they have do they have matching Do they have matching Eye of Horus tattoos? What do you what do you brand them with? I need to know. What is your flavor of branding for your hostages? Hmm. Heckin' shout out, dude. Moderators can do it. We figured it out. We have the technology. We have the meds. <laughs> All the squibbies! I've been playing Digimon World 1. And, uh, there's a status effect that turns your Digimon into a squibby. <laughs> it's pretty funny. You 
breed them with each other and see if you can pull any legendary- Oh, and you need a legendary cult member? Oh my god. I wonder what a legendary hostage would look like. <laughs> would they be shiny? Would they just be default shiny, dude? You feel for a sex cult matching womb tattoos would be more fitting? I don't know if you would want womb tattoos on dudes, though. <laughs> Speaking of meds, Coyote needs to take the daily dose. No, fuck you! I will not take the meds! They have an IQ of at least four. <gasps> You're into room temp IQ just like me? Oh my god. When are, when are, when are we gonna do the prisoner dating profiles together, alright? We gotta, we gotta find our perfect death row prisoner love match. They just glow in the dark. Golden hostage can go without food for two weeks easily. Do not, do not be released from the simulation. Real life is clearly worse. New Pokemon game, sex, cult, or church. I don't know. Four isn't room temp. What if it's four Celsius? I don't know how Celsius works. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how Celsius works. And what if, what if it's, what if you're a penguin? Then wouldn't four be room temp? I don't. That's still cold. Shit. Shit. <laughs> I tried. An attempt was made. I guess she likes him a little, a little, a little less brainy than I do. <laughs> Chuba's bonding over hib hibristophilia. What's that? What's that word? <laughs> Coconut malfunctioning. Four is when you see your breath outside. Okay. Celsius works like water. Zero is freeze, 100 is boil. Oh. Wait, really? Huh. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna have my browser open while I click on the- Oh, I can just- Hib- Hibristophilia is a sexual interest in and attraction to those who commit crimes. Oh, okay. Alright. Okay, alright. I could read that. Is that- is that how these cult members get inducted in the first place? They have the- they have the hib Hibristophilia? And I'm just like, you, you are a dangerous man, and I like that. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Oh, 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 oh. Erst, my guy, thank you. Thank you for the heckin' five-month resub. Thank you. What fresh cringe and horrors beyond mortal comprehension are we witness to today? Sex cults. I talked about uh, Nixium first because they're the most well-known for, like, current year. And... Um, I was going through one in Wales right now. That's just woman brain. I don't know. I haven't been inducted into a cult yet. Delete my browser history. Never. Why would I delete my browser history? My FBI man can suck it up, honestly. Marling, Marling even had an altar comprising of Egyptian cat goddess statues, a painting of the mast of Tutankhamun, and another painting of the god Horus. Batley's wife, Elaine, 47, also had a tattoo of Tutankhamun's face on her arm, and a pentagram on her leg, and an entire Egyptian script on her back. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? That is so crazy! They, like... Did they think they were the original Egyptians or some shit? How did they get... Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh looking ass motherfucker, dude. How did they get so inducted into Egyptian idol tree? If you as normal viewers can endure it, surely a trained glowy can. I'm just building up your immunity. No, I don't want to give you guys womb tattoos. It's because I lead the fucking cult. I mean, someone's got to do it, you know? <laughs> they thought it was cool. They took those like slap bands and jelly bracelets a little bit too far, you know? God damn. I'm still amazed at this. The court heard that she earned 2,000 2, pounds a month as a prostitute and gave 25% of her earnings to Batley. How, how the fuck do I earn less on Twitch than literal prostitutes in a sex cult? Like, what is this fucking split, dude? I'm actually upset. I'm, actu I'm actually upset, dude. A cult is strongly associated with ancient Egypt. I mean, I guess that's fair. Crowley did some stuff at the pyramids, so it sparks interest with the Egyptian stuff. I'm in the wrong career, take the hint. Tell me I gotta find a scruffy, toothless man to join his sister wife sex cult so I can get paid more? <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
You set yourself up as the ruler of a sick little kingdom, surrounded by three whamen who danced as your willing attendants regarding you as their master. Much like people who get Norse or Japanese tattoos and the like. It means harmony. <laughs> what does me being in the south have to do with anything? Are you saying there's a lot of sex cults down here hiding in the bayou? Like what? What the hell? What the heck? You think these days you just join OnlyFans? The toothless guy is optional. That's true. OnlyFans also has a better monetization split than Twitch. Why is Twitch so fucking stingy? What? Doesn't doesn't Fansly have like an 80-20 or some shit as well? Like why why is Twitch so fucking stingy when everywhere else has better split? Make it make sense. Toothless men, that's true. There's probably a lot of toothless men's down here. Because Amazon fucking Fucking Amazon, dude. What is this one? Ex-polygamy cult member shales tales of sex and control by Charse Yu. Where was this? Which one is this? Ogden, Utah. This is Shreve. The Shreve cult members. It means harmony. No, it means you a ho! Does she got that butterfly tattoo, though? Butterfly tattoo means she down to fuck, dude. <laughs> you don't- you don't get a butterfly tattoo unless you are ready to ride the cock carousel. That is- that is like- that's like a spade, you know? Lucky Twitch doesn't demand you get hot iron branded. They don't have to demand. We willingly give them more of our money to buy merchandise with the Twitch symbol on it. We, they don't even need to brand us. It's, it's so easy. <laughs> the amount of people with like Twitch hoodies or Twitch pillows, you know? You wouldn't be surprised if OnlyFans opened up to video game streaming? I'm pretty sure there are people who stream video games on Fansly. Because there's like, <clears throat> it's more lenient than here. How do you found your own sex cult? This all seems pretty based. Don't say that. They've all been pedophiles up to this point. <laughs> the, lo the lost boys, here we go. Just think of having to get a prime tramp stamp when you become Twitch partner. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure someone. Okay, now I want to look it up. Uh, I want to, I want to look up if someone's gotten a Twitch tattoo. Twi Twitch prime tattoo someone someone had to have done it right like there's no way new tattoo join right now revealing new tattoo new tattoo sub prime new tattoo no i want i don't want to watch people begging for prime subs getting tattoos i want to see if someone got a twitch oh eh, oh oh I don't know if this is fake or not. I don't know if this is fake or not. Tech, tech times. Screenshot. Okay, yeah, this is, this is not a real tattoo, I guess. This is like a fake tattoo. Disguise Toast had a used Twitch Prime tattoo for a while on his arm. But I guess it's not real because they have tattoo in quotation marks. So maybe, maybe no one's actually gotten a, a Twitch tattoo. Maybe I take out Prime. Twitch, Twitch tattoo. Oh. Oh. We found it. Lady, ladies and gentlemen. Is there anything here that'll get me in trouble? Hold on a second. Okay, no, that, that guy, hold on. Yeah, that guy doesn't look like he's wearing pants, but like, it's fine because you can't see his crotch. Everything's fine. Pog! Yeah, he's got- he's got the Twitch logo. I think- is this- is this Pokimane? Did somebody get a tattoo of Pokimane? This is like one whole pixel, dude. Literally one pixel. Uh, this person- this person's got a Twitch tattoo. Twitch- the surf flips a lot. She did a Twitch tattoo. Partner of the year? Partner of the year, dude? This look- this looks like Pokimane. Is it wise to get a tattoo of your favorite Twitch streamer? Please don't get a tattoo of me. <laughs> oh my god, Mark of the Beast instructions unclear. Getting that tattoo on your pee pee? This guy, that's not a Twitch tattoo. This was a bait. M money can't buy style. Well, he certainly got that fucking right. I wonder how much those tattoos cost him. 
This has got to be a League of Legends player, right? This has nothing to do with the website. This has got to be the little rat thing, doesn't it? Like, there's just no way. At least if we got a tattoo of you, that's a cute fox, not an IRL human. These are always a mistake. That's true. Real, real human faces do not come across very well. Getting Kirshi tattoo on the left side of your face. This person got the Kappa emote tattooed on them. That's so weird. That's so strange. Oh, that is a really bad... That is a really bad Pepe. Oh my god. Diehard Pokemane fan roasted over tattoo. Uh, it does look kind of... She kind of looks like one of the Olsen twins in this one. It definitely looked better in the cleaned up version. But like, goddamn. God damn, dude. I'm gonna close my browser for a second so I can scroll down. I just want to make sure there's not gonna be like a sudden naked person here, okay? I don't want sudden naked. Streamer tattoos Apex Legends worst gun to celebrate raising 8,000 for charity. I don't, I don't think I would do that though. I don't think I would tattoo an Apex gun on me. Oh, we got Re Reese Taffer tattooed the Twitch glitch logo on her wrist. And we, get, we got another one. We got another Twitch logo. So it looks like people just do the normal Twitch logo, not Twitch Prime. So no, no actual Twitch Prime tattoos yet. So we're, we're one removed, you know? What's with the Kratos scar? Mozambique here. Even I know Mozambique is a trash gun and I don't even play that fucking game. Kirsha tattoos already exist. I'm closing my browser. I don't trust this link. <laughs> <laughs> you you little guy you li that's that's a hairy coconut i'm being oppressed <laughs> you're being detained dude <laughs> got, got a little coconut got a little co it, it's like it doesn't even have like normal water in it it's like slush slushy brain Ziz's war with the bot continues. It's okay. One day he'll remember. He needs to ask for permissions instead of just doing it. <laughs> Coconut too full. Immersion broken. It's full with liquid though, not meat. It's full of slop. Please don't eat slop inside of a coconut, okay? Not, uh... That probably wouldn't taste too good. I could imagine putting coconut in ketchup. Ugh. Not that I like the taste of coconut by itself anyways, but like, Jesus... Jesus, dude! Alright, we had- we, I was curious about the Twitch tattoos, and unfortunately they're real. But, you know. A former polygamy cult member involved with a group where women were forced to model and sew lingerie is now sharing her past. Abandoned by her biological mother, Miss L's traumatic experiences began as a young girl. My biological mother, she was a drug addict and left me at a head shop so she could go rob banks for drug money. Moss? Her mom and my mom would probably get along, dude. It was the owners of the head shop that are the ones that took me to Utah. After joining several different groups, Miss L said her foster parents settled in Ogden. They joined the Zion Society, a group led by Arvin Shreve. Tucked in a small community in Ogden, Utah, a handful of homes housed Shreve's followers. The homes were surrounded by immaculate gardens that were tended by Miss L and other women. It was a subdivision! Everything on the outside looked completely normal. It almost looked like what you would see in Stepford Wives. We would wake up and everything in the house had to be completely immaculate. According to Miss L, females from four years of age up to 65 years old were a part of the group, and each woman would be assigned to groups called sister councils. They would have sister councils where Arvin, who was the self-proclaimed prophet, would assign the women to families that God told them they belonged to. But what if you assign the wrong woman, right? Like, what, what, if, what if God was like, okay, Mary has to go to Daniel and Elizabeth goes to Michael, but then you, you, do, you do the switcheroo, right? Like, how do they know? God doesn't make mistakes. I, I look at birth defects. Those are mistakes, aren't they? Fucking what, dude? They would... Are these the elders of Zion you keep hearing about? It's a, it's a Zion cult. I read the name, but I've already forgotten it. Zion Society, there we go. Mm. 
Nassel said many of the women felt protected, claiming the group's leader guaranteed his followers a ticket to heaven. Miss L said that Shreve told members who strayed that they would go to hell. That's how you keep them in line. The threat of hell, it works every time, you know? Cat boys and furries exist. Mm. <laughs> Shreve, a retired landscaper, would ask his followers to sew lingerie and model their finished products. Miss L said, we sewed lingerie that they would sell. They had a company that they would sell to local strippers. I didn't feel that it was wrong, and I didn't feel any pain. The only thing I felt was I hoped that I could stand out somehow to Arvin, and that he'll notice I'm here too. <laughs> she got that heckin' notice me, senpai! energy, honestly. The French are part of the divine plan! I... I have a plan! They'd probably say it was a test and then do a reassignment, that's true. Uh, the god was just testing us. You see, and you have passed his test, my beautiful children. <laughs> the self-proclaimed prophet controlled everything from the women's diets to their finances. We had to weigh ourselves in to make sure that we stayed a certain weight. We weren't allowed to go over our weight or we would get in extreme trouble. According to Miss L, Shreve would require the women to request money if they wanted to purchase items. That just sounds like a normal marriage except backwards, right? The husband usually gives the paycheck to the wife and she does all the finances and then she gives the husband the like little little allowance stipend, you know? This guy isn't all bad ideas. Oh my god. The wife reassignment procedure. <laughs> Jesus Christ. According... Well, the children were all taught that if we were ever to talk about what happened sexually inside the group, that we will go straight to hell. See what I said? That's the threat of hell every time, dude. According to Miss L, followers would have to give up their children. In addition, she said, the children were told they were not blood related, therefore making it easier for sexual relationships to occur. <gasps> it was an incest cult! A 15-year-old girl would be instructed to teach the 9-year-old how to sexually satisfy a man or a woman. All of the women would have sex with each other as well because they said that one man couldn't possibly satisfy 30 wives and that they were supposed to help satisfy each other. So let me, let me get this straight. You're talking about God. You're talking about God assigning the wives. You're talking about God assigning the wives in a polygamous manner. And you're talking about all these sister wives getting together. But you also don't demonize homosexuality. That's actually very progressive of him. That's very progressive for the time. You immediately regret your comment. <laughs> oh my god. We need, we need to practice first. No practice! No practice, dude. G- Gildy! GD. Thank you for the follow! You're still surprised this adventure started from the head shop and ended up in a Zionist sex cult. I don't even know what a head shop is. Like, to me, that just sounds like a place where you go to get head. But, like, I, I don't live in... Well, this is in the U.S., actually. What the fuck is a head shop? Please forgive this transgression. <laughs> Jesus Christ. In light of recent raids on a polygamous compound in Texas, Miss L says she has deep sympathy for the children. I know how connected those children are to their parents because I know how scared they are, not only because they are away from their parents, but... They're taught this is the outside world. A former member's statement to police eventually led to the arrest of Arvind Shreve. Shreve, two men, and several women were arrested and convicted on child molestation charges. And Shreve is serving time on two counts of sodomy on a child, a first-degree felony punishable by five years to life. Wow, five years? That's pretty minimal. And two counts of sexual abuse of a child, a second-degree felony punishable by one to 15 years. That also... That also seems really low, dude. Head shop is where you get marijuana utensils. Oh, I didn't know they were called that. I guess it's because it's not legal here yet. You were reading the tags. How something cursed can be comfy, too. Because we all just kind of chill out here. We're like laying around on the furniture in the basement, eating some pizza, dr drinking some fruit juice, maybe some lemonade, you know? We're just chilling. How could you only get one year for that shit, possibly? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's... That's real fucking low. That's strange. That's fucking strange. And this was... 
This was the Zion Society. And then... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these ones should also... Yeah, yeah, these ones are also about the same cult. Bizarre sexual tenants of purported polygamous group in Ogden. Head shop is surely where you buy toilets. Wait, why? Why would you buy toilets at a head shop? Minimum should be 10 years. Yeah, I feel like that's a good minimum. Or, you know, if they're doing it to a child, maybe don't waste space in a jail. Just, uh... Castration, execution, you know, just straight to the point. Why isn't it called a high shop if you get tools to get high and not to get head? That's a great fucking question. A urinal is also called a head. I'm learning so much about this word. Movies have told you that the latrine is called the head. I've never heard that in a movie. I'm not, I've heard it called a water closet. But, you know, degenerates like that belong on a cross. A cross is too good for them. <laughs> Corey Christofferson. That's a long ass name. Wonders how she could have ever given the past 15 months of her life to a purported polygamist sect she said engages in bizarre sexual practices. Why I stayed? I can't give you a logical explanation, she told the Ogden Standard Examiner. After leaving there and seeing what I saw happen to the women and children and knowing what I know, my conscience would not let me sit back and not do anything about it. The 23-year-old Ogden woman added, she got that Ohio grammar, dude. Christofferson has played a pivotal role in Weber County's investigation of suspected child sexual abuse and assisted authorities this weekend in interviewing children removed during a Friday raid on the group's northern Ogden homes. Christofferson said she fell in with the group when she and her former husband were having marital problems. You know, instead of communicating with your husband and trying to fix your marital problems, especially when you're pregante with your second child, just join a cult! You know, why communicate when you can just become a cult member, you know? You're swaying in sync with the coconut. I just, you know, that's what I do when I'm kind of reading. Seductive, succulent beaver in that clip URL. No, dude. The first few jars of whiskey or moonshine that are full of poisons after distillation are called the heads and are discarded. Jesus Christ, I didn't know that either. Head could literally mean anything. How goes the tangent stream? Have we actually talked about sex cults? Yeah, we're fucking three or four cults deep now, baby. The Ant Hill Kids cult was pretty wild. It was a sex cult with a mix of doomsday shit. And they were based in Canada. <sighs> Do they actually live in the hills? Like the hills have eyes? Were they actually like Ant Hill bunker children? Can't move your eyes and not your head to read. Well, I don't bob my head to read. I'm not reading like two Zion group. A members of who picture recruited peaceful her a at painted her job. Wow, that sentence worked out perfectly. It was the even amount of numbers and they both came to one in the center. That was perfect. That's just actual sexual harassment. God damn, dude. I just, I don't know. I'm a very wiggly person. I talk with my hands, but you know. <laughs> AI Snow had a prop called head. What the hell? What the hell, dude? Okay. Two group members who recruited her at her job painted a peaceful picture of a Zion society. A place of refuge free of contention, strife, or financial worry. When she left her husband and moved into the group's ten-home neighborhood, Christofferson says she went through a period of depression during which she was taught about unusual sexual practices and beliefs of a group sometimes known as the Sister Program. So, like, did her husband just fucking hate her? Like, he didn't- he didn't try to tell her, like, Honey, maybe joining an incestuous, child-abusing cult is- is not the way to go about this. Like, he didn't even try? He didn't even try, dude? Doomers have the best sex because they're not expecting to have to deal with the consequences? I don't know about that. It's like when everybody thought the world was gonna end. In like 2000, and you know, the computers were just gonna crash and every, everybody was gonna die. And then when we were still alive, and I'm sure people did some reg regrettable things thinking there wasn't gonna be a tomorrow. Sounds like she probably didn't tell him either. Maybe. Maybe she didn't even tell him. Maybe she just fucking peaced out in the middle of the night and he woke up, everything's gone, and he's like, what the fuck? She eventually grew uneasy with the doctrines and practices of the group, and in May she left 
hopefully regretting leaving her husband. Christofferson said more than 30 adults joined the group in recent years, including a number of single women, several families, and at least seven divorcees like herself. Jesus Christ. That's, that's a high number of divorcees. She said at least three male members of the group have sister councils that are polygamous in structure and preach a doctrine of sexual sister love. Group members also try to live a form of communalism, she said, contributing their money and personal service to the benefit of the organization. Christofferson said she soon learned membership meant surrendering personal control of her life, with sister councils dictating the day-to-day -day decisions such as dress, diet, work assignments, and religious study. I was in a relationship like that once. I was ah, very controlling. Hello, Hiccup. Ah, help. Oh, God. Ah, help. Okay, I need more water. Ah, help. Ah. All right, it's good. We're good. We're chilling. Funny enough, you don't hear too many stories about the people who ruined themselves over Y2K panic. I want more Y2K panic fucking regret stories, dude. I had pencils that said I survived Y2K as a kid. <laughs> Reminds me of the false missile alert in Hawaii that went out on all the official channels. And people thought they had 20 minutes to live. What the fuck? I don't remember that, Ziz. There's also a green text about a guy boinking his sister with his remaining 20 minutes. Ooh. Imagine having to live with that for the rest of your fucking life, dude. Apparently they were called the Ant Hill Kids by the leader because the members of the group that joined and obeyed him acted like little ants doing whatever he wanted. That's creepy. I don't like that. Kami incest pedos. What wonderful people. I see you're being redundant in your sentence structure. <laughs> My pederodactyl doesn't like controlling relationships. It does not. It does not, dude. Now we need pencils that say I played Yilk. I know what Pilk is. What's Yilk? Hawaii regret stories were a thing on 4chan where they thought the nuke was going off. A lot of incest. Not like this, dude. No incest. It's a cringe game. I want to play Fear Pong. I feel like Fear Pong sounded like a super fucking fun idea. It's different from regular Beer Pong. I can't remember how or why, but I have the tab somewhere. Y2K is the postmodern RPG. Huh? You've got somebody taking complete control of your life, making all the decisions for you. It's very easy to sit back and let them take care of it for you. I've been making decisions for way too goddamn long. That's why I need a manager. Fishman, save me. Be my cult leader. <laughs> when she arrived, she said, group members duped her into believing her family and former husband had turned against her, attempting to kidnap her daughter. She lost contact with her six-year-old during that period, but was assured the child was being cared for by other group members. She said she served as secretary to purported sect leader Arvin Shreve, 61, for a time. Christofferson said she prepared letters and legal papers, as well as drafting inventories of ammunition and firearms that the group members kept hidden in their homes under stairs, in the backs of closets and other places. Christofferson said she was taught what was termed the sexual way of life, and she learned that most females in the group, including children, were members of the Sister Council. In the Sister Council, one man is over a group of women, and his job is to bring them through eternity to the Celestial Kingdom. She said she was a member of Shreve's Sister Council, and personally witnessed sexual encounters between female group members. The Council also involved the children, she said. In a June deposition, Christofferson said she saw six females engaged in a game called Rape in the Dark. What a fucking name for a game, dude. I just, I just played fucking hide and seek, you know, like freeze tag. We had, we had like fucking manhunt, all right, you know? <laughs> Johnson Brains, thank you for the follow. The game ended when the one who possessed a game card bearing the word rapist had reduced the group down to one person. And the rapist could then do any sexual act they wanted to the person left. That... That just sounds like rape with extra steps. Like, that doesn't even sound fun. Like, this, this just sounds like not an actual game. <laughs> That's an honest name. At least they were not fucking around. <laughs> oh my god. 
Is this is this where that train game Ray Play got its fucking inspiration from? Rape musical chairs. Thanks, I hate it. Thanks, I hate it, dude. <laughs> Fishman sex cult, but instead you're just forced to play League. I thought it was Minecraft. I thought, he, I thought he locked you in the Minecraft mines, and then after you were done mining, he just destroyed all your work. <laughs> Technically, the game was consensual. Can you consent if you're brainwashed, though? I would say the answer's probably no. <laughs> Seven minutes in heaven wasn't good enough for them. God damn, dude. The other former, three other former group members also have told the standard examiner they considered principles taught by Shreve and the other group members to be lesbian in nature. The sexual way of life was one of three of the group's tenants, Christofferson said. The others were the spiritual way of life and the temporal way of life. She said she helped Shreve burn pornographic materials after he became convinced police would soon raid homes. Search warrants used in Friday's police raid on seven homes specifically identified pornographic materials as an object. However, Ogden police chief indicated no such materials were found. Departure from the group was difficult, both because of psychological dependency and a policy that new members of the group like herself must be accompanied by older members almost everywhere except for work. They had like the same rule in Germany. They're progressive. She made her break at work one day and simply did not return home to the group, although she was able to recover her children. She testified in a recent court deposition that initially group members asked her to reconsider her decision and even offered her money and other assistance. That's good that she got out. Like, I like, I like these stories of like people being able to get the fuck out of these cults and then like help take them down. It's like, holy shit, all of this stuff is terrible and horrifying, but at least there's a good ending, right? Like, at least people are fucking taking down the cult and it's not, like, operating anymore, except for one. There's, there's one that still has some issues, and we'll get to that, hopefully. Everyone consented to MK Ultra. the CIA says. They, they wanted to be assets that we could activate whenever we wanted. They consented to having the nano machines. You can't, you can't hold us liable. She got a happy ending. The good kind of happy ending, not the sexual one. Perfect. That's perfect, dude. And then, uh, I think this is another article. Is this also on Ogden? U Utah is like fucking breeding grounds. Oh no, this is a different one. I think this is the racist one. I think this is the racist one. Uh, Kingston group hit with a lawsuit from former members that alleges unpaid labor, sexual abuse, and human trafficking. So this is, this is also in Utah, but it's not the same one that we were just reading about. It's a different one. This one's called the Kingston group. Fucking Mormons, dude. Did you know that actually Mormons outlawed polygamy in the main church like decades ago? Like, the main Mormon church, you're, you're not allowed to be polygamous anymore. I didn't know that. It's actually only radical sects of Mormonism that still practice polygamy. I learned it did something. I learned it did. So the ladies that came to my door trying to recruit me into Mormonism, and the reason why I have a Mormon Bible in my house still, they probably weren't polygamous. I wouldn't have become a sister wife. What's the point of being Mormon? I don't know. My friend, my friend Seth was Mormon, the, the angry Canadian guy who used Zoomer speech. He was, he was a Mormon, but he wasn't polygamy. So that makes a lot of sense. Eh. 10 former members of a Utah based polygamous sect known as the Kingston group. Another article called them the Kingston clan. I think that rolls off the tongue a little bit more are pursuing punitive damages against the organization after they say it subjected them to years of unpaid labor, sexual violence, and human trafficking. In a lawsuit filed earlier this month, the sect's ex-members allege it is largely through illegal marriage practices that the Kingston group is able to unlawfully make girls and their children religious martyrs and traffic them for sexual and labor purposes. Me, me and the boys love unpaid labor. If you're not proposing to me with blood diamonds, I ain't interested. <laughs> also... I'm going to go back to, like, that water park article that we talked about the other day, right? Where, like, someone got fucking decapitated. Uh, why? 
Like the picture for that article was beautiful. It had a really, really nice photographic image at the top of that article for water park decapitation. And this is the same thing. They're like, Utah polygamous sect accused of indoctrination, rape, and child marriage. And then they give you this beautiful fucking photograph. Like, <laughs> like it just seems so fucking out of place. Why, why would they do that? Ah, uh, yes, the Schlitterbahn. Yeah, that one. I thought it was in Germany, but it was in the United States. If the angle that visited Joseph Smitch, w Smith was called moronal, shouldn't Mormons be called morons? Uh, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to insult them like that unless they're the people who are involved in these fucking, like, incestuous, child-abusing thingies, you know? Is this the price of your Kingston SSD? F fucking beautiful girls. They got me suicidal. I like that song. Gotta lure people in with innocent pictures. And then they're like, what's happening? That's what I do. I lure you guys in with the cute image of a, of a pure angelic fox waifu. And then I talk about cum cocktails and decapitation. Well, it's, it's the good kind of whiplash. <laughs> You're like 30 minutes away from the Schlitterbahn, but you haven't lived there in 20 years at least. Oh shit, dude. So you were like fucking in the midst of it when that shit probably happened. God damn. In, in a lawsuit filed earlier this month, the sect's ex-members allege it is largely through illegal marriage practices. I already read that part. I lost my place. The lawsuit complains or contains explicit details of how Kingston group leaders, who also own and operate several businesses and schools in the suburbs of Utah's capital, Salt Lake City, allegedly arrange incestuous and sometimes underage marriages between teenage girls, and adult men with exalted status to produce hundreds of children. HUNDREDS OF CHILDREN! We're not actually fucking bunny rabbits! What the hell, dude? How do you- How would you even do that? How would- That's- I'm pretty sure you would, like, die, wouldn't you? Like... I don't- I don't- Let me- Let me Google. Uh... Woman who had most number of children world record oh my god that baby that baby bump is huge the most fertile woman in history is alleged to be an 18th century russian peasant called valentina vasiliev between 1725 and 1765 she is recorded as giving birth to a total of 69 children nice 67 of whom survived infancy this included 16 pairs of twins seven sets of triplets, and four sets of quadruplets. Holy shit, dude. That is nuts. And especially in 1725 to 1765, having 67 of the children you gave birth to surviving infancy, that is fucking enormous. Like, not only was she a child birthing factory, but she actually birthed children who could survive at the time. That is crazy. Russian Jean Strong, dude. She's the first cat mother. Oh my god. That woman had her body destroyed. I guess, I guess in theory, if a lady could birth almost 70 children in the 1700s, maybe in current year, uh, over 100's possible. I just assumed your body would eventually have that toll taken on it and you would fucking just wouldn't be able to survive childbirth. I guess I'm wrong. Possibly home birth, so caught no hospital diseases. Extra wide hips, dude. Is there a picture of her? I mean, I, they didn't... <laughs> That's a dumb question, I think. I don't think they had cameras back then. <laughs> I don't think they had cameras, did they? I don't remember when the camera was invented, dude. Did you know? Did you know? Oh my god, she looks terrifying. She looks fucking horrific. Dear God! She's in- it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. I don't want to have this, like, picture of, like, naked babies, though. Like, it's probably fine, because it's, like, historical context, but I don't want it. <laughs> uh, here we go. Guinness Book of World- I want the picture with, like, all these, like, little kids here, though. Like, the ones with clothing on. Here we go. Here we go. I'll show this one. Browser, this one, Chromu. Look at her! She looks like something that would fucking be a jump scare in a spooky game! 
Fuck it, look at this! I mean, I'm still impressed with her. I'm still fucking impressed, but goddamn! She looked like a jump scare! <laughs> That's a small army! They had HD cameras in the 1700s, fuck you. <laughs> Kids would just start falling out of her vagina. That's why she started having, like, sets of triplets and shit. You know, they blocked the entrance for one another so they could come out naturally. Baba Yaga. Actually, Baba Yaga. M mommy, mommy. That's what birthing a whole clan on her own does to you. She's seen some shit. Oh, that's true. Please pull up Machete series on Google and compare. What is Machete series? Baba Yaga was a man. What the hell? What the hell? I don't know if she's a reptilian. I guess I can see why you might think that because of like her, her brow bones. But like she gave birth to 69 humans. Her baby's stem cells would have been circulating in her system, so she would have gotten some cellular repair. Huh. Machete movie? She looks like the guy? Baba Yaga and Baba Roga were female. I don't know anything about the Baba Yaga folklore. Who would pregante her, like, one day after she gave birth? May I mean, the pregnancy fetish has been around for a really long fucking time. Maybe, maybe her husbando was just, like, real turned on by that. Laid 69 eggs! Not like this. Danny Trejo is what she looks like. Can I, uh... Danny Trejo? Here we go. American actor. That's, uh... I think he's got more flesh on his face than she does, but I can see the resemblance. I can, I can kind of see it, you know? She even looks like she has his mustache. That's just her lip being very wrinkly, like his cheek. She looks a bit like him, but scarier, dude. Baba Yaga, sort of like the boogeyman for people in Eastern Europe. I know her as the smite god. <laughs> she, like, steals children and puts them in a house that eats them or something, right? Oh, God, my back. Find one of his newer pics when he's older? Danny Trejo, 2022. Images. Please don't be naked. <laughs> like a little Pomeranian! I don't, I don't know. He doesn't look like super crazy old. Like, I guess in this picture, he's kind of kind of more wrinkly. I, like, I can see why you would have thought of him when looking at her, but I think, I think she's definitely more jump scare worthy. Oh, fuck yeah, monster house, dude. Baba Yaga got a house standing on one chicken leg. Mm hmm. Baba Yaga's a positive character. The whole ogress that eats children is a Western perversion of the myth. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. We, we just came over and, like, aborted the culture, I guess. She looks like how he will look in 20 years. God damn, dude. How did we even get there? I don't even... Oh, yeah, hundreds of children. I was like, what the fuck were we even doing? I'm so lost. <laughs> the suit alleges episodes of rape aimed at forcing pregnancy, group members covering up years of sexual abuse, and indoctrinating children in elementary school about plural marriage. The plaintiff's attorney, Roger Houle, declined to elaborate beyond his client's lawsuit or respond to requests for interviews with former group members. In a response to the allegations against it, the Kingston Group, also known officially as the Davis County Cooperative Society and internally as The Order, said its current policy prohibits plural marriage for members under 18. Oh, well, that's a relief. You can only get singular bonded under 18. They also claim to believe that marriage is a personal choice that should not be coerced. I'm just not going to believe what a cult member tells me, dude. Members are encouraged to prayerfully seek guidance from their parents or through personal inspiration, but ultimately, the decision must be their own. The group added, once an individual has made a decision on who to marry, members are encouraged to seek the blessing of their parents, family, and or church leaders. But to say that one individual chooses or heavily influences who will marry who is entirely inaccurate. You know, it's not something that happens much nowadays, and it's probably not going to happen in my instance either, but I feel like it's really fucking cute when the guy that wants to marry you goes to your father and, like, discusses marrying you first, right? Like, I don't know why. I just always thought that was really fucking cute. 
that the guy's like, hey, I know this is your daughter that you've raised for ages and I want you to feel okay that I'm going to be the one taking care of her from now on and like you don't have to worry and I would like I would like your blessing for this marriage you know I was like I don't know I just think that's really fucking cute I think it's really cute brainwashing about plural marriage these people want to deny me my harem back back when I was a teenager there's a guy I knew who asked me for my advice on how he could convince his wife to allow him to have a harem of girls and I was like, I don't think your wife was going to consent to uh, letting you have a harem. And he's like, no, I don't. You don't understand. I don't want to fuck them. Like, this isn't sexual. I just want like a harem of women who will do whatever I say outside of sexual activity. Like the sexual activity will just be for my wife. And I'm like, OK, well, first of all, I don't believe you. And second of all, I don't think I can help you. <laughs> Shotgun prevention. Asking for blessing is peak, man. That's just really cute. That's really cute, dude. He just wants maids. Someone, someone, autism, you Kirsch's dad's phone number. God damn. No such thing as a harem where the partner benefits. That's, uh, that's very true. He just wants an unpaid workforce. Not in this economy. From 2016, Miriam Mabansi Bibier from Uganda had 44 children. She has a medical condition where she hyper ovulates. Hyper ovulation activate! <laughs> a harem of women that do things for you outside of sexual activity is called a maid service. You can do that anytime without making a cult. Yeah, but you still have to pay them and you still have to be cordial with them, right? If they're your harem instead of someone you pay to clean your house, you can be more of an asshole to them. And you don't lose money. Harem sounds like a nightmare. I was like, yeah, it's a fucking, I can't even fucking get one girl and I'll be a weirdo. Imagine trying to handle 20 of them. How do these guys fucking do it? A pimp. That's fair. I bet the pimp offers a better fucking split than Twitch does too. I'm gonna be real with you. <laughs> How does that work? Hyper ovulation. I don't know. I, I have never been able to achieve hyperovulation in my life, so <laughs> it's not a superpower I possess. Oh god. Is that a Pokemon skill? Gardevoir used hyperovulate. It was super effective. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a new mechanic in the new games coming up when you can play co-op. If you guys if you guys put two special Pokemon together with the Pokerust virus, it'll cause the female to hyperovulate and she'll shit out three eggs instead of one. Can't believe a pimp named Slipback is more generous than Twitch. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You don't lose money if you don't return their visas. God damn, I love 90 Day Fiance. You'd watch the anime where the girl has that power. I feel like they could make they could make a fucking hentai out of that, right? Instead of instead of the the typical ooh, 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 I get my magical girl powers from anal sex. They could they could get it from hyperovulation, you know? Hyperovulation sounds terrible. The woman's mood must be constantly in flux. <gasps> oh god. Oh god, I just cracked like my shoulder blade. Holy shit, that felt good. Holy fuck. It was like it was like fucking locking up. Thank you. <laughs> Nine of the plaintiffs claim the Kingston group made them begin working during their elementary or preschool days through their late teenage years. None of them received a paycheck. They they advocate for child labor, dude? I think there's a new isekai manga where a guy levels up by having sex. I don't like that. Get a massage. I'm trying, okay? Last week I thought I had a massage appointment. I thought. And I showed up and they were just like, uh, you're not on our book today. And then I realized I just got fucked up because I'm used to receiving reminder text messages the day before my appointments. And I got a reminder text message from my dates being shift, shifted because I had to I had to like switch appointment times. So that fucked me up and I went on the wrong day. But this week, this week, I got appointment on Wednesday. This week, I get turned into batter. Pretty sure there's a hentai where three sisters have a convenient disease where they're on estrus all the time. Estrus? What the fuck kind of black magic word for ovulation is that? 
You've got an idea. You've heard of alpha males. You've heard of sigma males. Now you're going to learn the pimp way. I'm going to channel my, my inner pimpology, honestly. Next time, read the message. I don't want to read. In her complaint, Amanda Ray Grant claims she was assigned to work in her early teens at Advanced Copy, where wedding announcements and invitations were printed because wedding pictures of little girls marrying men in incestuous or plural marriages could not be printed at Walmart. I had some pretty questionable pictures of me printed at CVS when I was younger. <laughs> and every, every time I think about it, I look back and I'm like, huh, you know, how did those people not report anything? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real honest. <laughs> I don't want to read. I like reading this, you know, it's different. Isn't Kirsha already doing the pimp way when she does her findom segments and she gets us to donate from the coal mines? I know pimp! I know pimp! Imagine not living up to Walmart standards. Oh my god. That's true. That's a pretty fucking low bar. Another plaintiff, Jeremy Roberts, said he started working four hours a day, year-round, at a farm run by the order when he was seven or eight. He allegedly was told his hourly pay was $3.23. That is well below the federal minimum wage. You know, Pin- No! No! I do not know! You came in at the wrong point of this conversation. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. By the time he was 12, Robert said, he was working 12-hour shifts at a mine that the order ran! Oh, you guys. Maybe you are in a cult if you're working in the coal mines for me, eh? Next outfit reveal, a shark suit skin and a duzzy hat. Why would I wear a shark, shark skin suit and oh, now is that what pimps wear? I think of pimps as wearing like the fuzzy stuff, like the big chinchilla coats, but like some of it's dyed purple. And his name is John C. <laughs> guy thank you my cut from today's work uh skew you've you've earned yourself another sister wife i'll go pick one from the lot <laughs> i mean god god will divine to me which one you get i apologize <laughs> is there a right point of the conversation when kirsch is involved that's true if you go afk or if you're just coming in you're gonna be very fucking confused all of the time uh, there's just no there's just no way around it dude <laughs> and you want her Mm. <sighs> the Kingston group denied allegations that children worked for their business. The group also said its business owners are strongly encouraged to follow all applicable laws when hiring, employing, and compensating their employees. I don't like how this next section is called Bleeding the Beast. The allegations facing the Kingston group came after the state of Utah effectively decriminalized polygamy between consenting adults in 2020. Thanks, Utah! Fucking degeneracy! Making plural marriage an infraction similar in gravity to a speeding ticket. However, if a spouse is coerced or underage in a plural what? marriage in Utah... What? What? It becomes a felony! Wait, Skew gets multiple sister wives and you only get two monitors, one with Kirshi and the other with Pippa's YouTube stream? Where's your union-appointed sister wife? Well, uh, thank you for the 500 biddies, but uh, you, you, have not, you have not been uh, part of the party for long enough for me to be divine the sister wife for you by God. May, maybe one day his blessing will shine down upon you and he will divine to me which woman I should pick from the wheat fields for you. I appreciate your patience and your devotion, uh, Timmy Tams. Uh, amen. <laughs> it's me. I'm your sister wife. Look at me. I'm the woman now. <laughs> it marked the latest chapter in Utah's long, complicated history with polygamy. To help Utah achieve statehood, leaders of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints issued a manifesto ending polygamy as a practice in 1890. Look at th I didn't know that you had to d stop polygamy to become a part of the United States. However, more than 130 years later, polygamist sects exist in close-knit settlements throughout the state, including the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Fuldus, 
run by its imprisoned leader and convicted rapist, Warren Jeffs. And that was another one we were going to talk about today. Because that one, that was fucking big, dude. That was fucking huge. Pro-polygamy groups estimate there are about 30,000 to 40,000 people in Utah who live in polygamist communities. Why is that? Why does Utah seem like a breeding ground for polygamist cults? Can, like, someone make that make sense? I guess, like, what else is there to do in Utah besides that? But you could say that about, like, Iowa or Ohio as well. And neither of those are, like, plagued with fucking polygamous cults. It's the heat! Maybe. They need, they need the winter to kill off all the crazy brain cells. Breeding ground indeed! Oh, that was a Freudian slip. It's called Utah. That's already weird enough. Utah, me ta, we all ta. Ha <laughs> ha! Cult time. Inbreeding intensifies. Maybe that. Maybe that's where the redneck originally came from, right? They got all that red clay in that area, and they're all like incestuous breeders. They have a salt lake. Uh, they do have a salt lake. I don't know how that contributes to cult, though. Far away from the rest of the country back in the day, maybe. They probably have some pretty funny taxes for religions. That's also a point that I didn't think about. I didn't think about that. When the Kingston Group, founded in 1935, not affiliated with the FLDS, members practice a fundamentalist version of Mormonism that involves polygamy. Members are primarily born into the organization whose leader, Paul Eldon Kingston, is known as the Man in the Watchtower. The lawsuit against the group is not the first time it has faced media scrutiny or legal peril. In August, the Utah State Charter School Board mandated that the Kingston Group-run charter school, Vanguard Academy, replace all nine members of its governing board after various and repeated violations. What the hell? Vanguard Academy's leaders sued state charter school officials in response, and a judge issued a restraining order that kept the targeted governing board members in their positions. That seems really fucking sketchy. That seems really fucking sketchy that a judge was like, hmm, you know, you were trying to get them removed for repeated violations, but we're going to keep them in order. We're going to keep this. What the fuck? The school faces a three-month probation during which it is required to rectify its issues or face closure. I mean, at least like, they have something, right? But like, Jesus. Meanwhile, in July 2019, four members of the Kingston family pleaded guilty to fraud charges after federal authorities established that an order-run business, Washaki Renewable Energy, stole half a billion dollars worth of biodiesel tax credits and laundered it through shell companies. Jesus Christ, that is a lot of money! That is a that is what the fuck? This just got weirder! That's not even just sex cult, they're also a money laundering scheme. At times, the order has members forge and fabricate documents, often against their will, to further their self-interests. The plaintiff's complaint added those practices facilitated so-called attempts by the Kingston Group to bleed the beast, a term used in polygamous communities to describe how they can benefit by defrauding the government and its taxpayers. What if you just made a cult about defrauding the government without all of the crazy incestuous and like child brides, right? What, what about that? The Kingston group said the concept of bleeding the beast is abhorrent and was never a tenant. Oh yeah, just fucking deny, 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 right? Fucking hell, dude. Pure Kingston blood. The lawsuit explains how the birth certificates of multiple plaintiffs failed to list their biological fathers. So those men could escape the legal consequences inherent to having multiple and often underage wives. Two of the plaintiffs, Michelle Afton Michaels and LaDonna Ruth Lancaster, share the same father, Jesse Orville Kingston, the lawsuit alleges. The suit alleges the Kingston family members try to preserve their blood purity, which they refer to as pure Kingston blood, by marrying and procreating with other Kingstons. The group has called the pure Kingston blood term fringe, unfamiliar and somewhat offensive for its members and it rejects any preference for any particular family or bloodline jesse orville kingston is not listed on either michael's or lancaster's birth certificates according to the lawsuit which additionally accuses him of fathering more than 300 children with 14 wives this man literally creating his own army he was like britain I can do it better. I will rule the seas, okay? <laughs> 
the Hausberg dynasty tried to do that too? I think I have the Hausberg people in in my list of shit to talk about. I got I got an Israeli sex cult after this one. I got the the Anabaptist and Munster. I got the Osho cult, Sarah Lawrence, Children of God, the Bay Area sex commune, and then uh, all the FLDS shit. That's some potent seed, right, dude? The boys who got birthed had some really crap stuff happen to them. They got kicked out on just the tiniest behavior, mostly around discovering masturbation at age 11 or so. From from this cult that we're talking about right now, Phosphorus? I, I feel like, why would this cult punish masturbation? I guess, like, you're spilling your seed instead of impregnating women, maybe? Fucking good ol' Osho, dude. <laughs> Where was I in this article? Every sperm is sacred. No masturbation. Only womb implantation. The Guardian typically does not identify people who allege to be a victim of sexual violence, but the publicly available lawsuit identifies Michaels, Lancaster, and other plaintiffs by name. Amanda Ray Grant alleges her father is Verl Johnson, accusing him of marrying 17-year-old Lori Peterson and two others to produce 33 children. Man, he wasn't even trying. Did he even really believe in the future of the cult if he only had 33 children? Instead of being listed on her birth certificate, Grant says the document listed a fictitious father called Kyle Grant. Fucking Kyle. The lawsuit claims that Utah state officials went so far as to track down a man named Kyle Grant for the purposes of collecting child support payment, but they could not conclude he was Amanda Ray Grant's father. This was told as a funny story in Amanda's family, the lawsuit alleges. Yeah, ha ha, funny! Ha ha, funny child support fraud! <laughs> Sounds like I'm gonna be on the cult topic for a while. That was, uh, that was today's, today's topic of discussion, as it were. Maybe, maybe this will have to bleed over into a second day if I run out of goddamn time, dude. Why polygamy was a main thing in the Mormon church. If you were called by God, you got wives, and then when the prophet said no more, because legal issues, People freaked. Some people left the Mormon church to keep doing polygamy. To distance themselves, Mormons shaved their beards and had no more polygamy. I mean, that was a huge thing in Mormonism. Yeah, the men didn't shave their beards and the women didn't cut their hair. Pretty, I'm pretty sure I remember that. Masturbation is pre-genocide. You, you wouldn't want to be a genocidal maniac, would you? You wouldn't want to literally be Hitler. Stop masturbating. Stop genociding your future children. They say, oh, oh, it's today's topic. Yeah, today I wasn't supposed to tangent. Today was actually a planned tangent, you know? Anabaptists, that's a less uptight than regular Baptists. <laughs> and Anabaptists got fucking massacred, so I don't know much about them. Um, I'm learning about some of these cults alongside with you guys. Anabaptists is definitely one I did not know about. The Kingston group argued that it is parents' prerogative to file birth records for their children and how they choose within the bounds of the law. This is especially true for the mother who has a legal right to establish paternity or not to establish paternity at the time of filing. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? One of the lawsuit's more shocking allegations centers on claims from plaintiff Jenny Kingston that her parents sent her to a rehabilitation center named Lifeline for Youth for six months to punish her for resisting her marriage to Jacob Daniel Kingston Jr., the son of the Washaki Energy Company's boss. She accuses Kingston Jr. of physically overpowering and raping her to try and get her pregnant. Group members knew of the abuse and or her complaint alleges, but did not report it or stop it. Instead, she claims they used group money to get her in vitro fertilization treatment. That's kind of crazy. Also, Nim, good morning! It's almost 7 p.m. What the hell? What the hell? That's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. And I found out about this polygamous sect because I found this article from 2022. Gay bashed Utah teen and mom seek safety from polygamous cult. And I was like, what? So I had to learn. I had to learn about this a little bit. A uh, carload of men shouting anti-gay slurs drove by. A 17-year-old Christian and his boyfriend hugged each other goodnight at the end of Christian's driveway in Sandy, an upscale suburb of Salt Lake City. Somebody in the car shouted, We don't want F-words in our streets! The boys were shocked, so Jacob stayed to talk instead of going the night home as planned. The car returned about 40 minutes later, and two people jumped out. 
19-year-old Hayden Stowell made lewd sexual gestures, grabbing his genitals and asking if he was making Jacob and Christian sexually aroused. He sounds like the gay one here, honestly. Christian told me three other people stayed in the car shouting anti-gay slurs and hyping up the two who jumped out. Yeah, you got him, brother! You grab your cock and shake it! You grab your cock and shake it on that front yard. I love seeing the way you shake your cock, but we're not gay. They're the gay ones. They're the gay looking at you shaking it. They're gay, not us. <laughs> These fucking guys, dude. Going the night home. I said going right home, but you know, sometimes, sometimes the words get a little fucky wucky, dude. Shake, shake it once, that's fine. Shake it twice, that's okay. Shake it three times, you're playing with yourself again. I don't remember what song that is, but I remember that fucking line. You're glad you didn't have to spend any points for I love the way you shake your cock ASMR redeem. I just, I just gave it to you for free. I do it for free, dude. Christian told me he was afraid they would hit Jacob, so he stepped in front of him to protect him. 17-year-old boy, name withheld, took half a step back and punched Christian's head, knocking him senseless and eventually landing him in the hospital with brain swelling. That's either one hard punch or one soft head. I don't really know. Christian's sister Jocelyn heard the commotion and ran outside. She quickly captured photo evidence, snapping the car's license plate as it roared off. Jacob filmed part of the attack, including an admission that it was motivated by hatred of gay people. I feel like that one's kind of obvious in this case. Let me, let me see here. She reported, Stephanie and Jocelyn immediately reported the crime to the Sandy, Utah Police Department, but officers failed to identify the attackers in an investigation quite fairly described as either inept or half-hearted. Jocelyn saved the day with her own detective work, rapidly identifying the 17-year-old who punched her brother. She was able to get the boy to come over to the house to apologize in exchange for a promise to not seek criminal charges. Stephanie maneuvered to have Sandy police officers there at the same time, trying to force them to arrest the boy. Oh, no, no, you can't do coercion like that. After focused press attention, Sandy police finally arrested the 17-year-old. He was charged in juvenile court with assault, a third-degree felony, and initiating a riot. A second-degree felony, officers told Stephanie they didn't have enough evidence to make a hate crime enhancement stick, but prosecutors eventually added the enhancements to both charges. I was gonna say, what? This is like, this is like one of the yes! only cases. Bad to the bone, thank you for the follow. This is one of the only cases I've read about in recent years that actually had evidence to make a hate crime enhancement stick. Usually, usually they tack on hate crime and it makes no fucking sense, but in this case, it actually does. So I'm glad, I'm glad the fucking prosecutors were like, nah, nah, we're doing it. You don't grab a camera, you grab something else made of metal or something that has metal come out of it. What the heck? You're going to be taking Bailey as your wife under cult law? You can't take Bailey. Bailey is not a personal use cult wife. He is everyone's wife, okay? He's, he's everyone. He's everyone's wife. What the heck? What the heck is this? What the? Okay, well, we're going to, I don't know what this is. So we're going to, we're going to just uh, get rid of that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't want like addresses posted in my chat, 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 dude. I'm just gonna, just gonna get that out of here, dude. I, I don't know if it's real docs or not. I, I, I don't want to find out if it's real docs or not. I don't want it here. <laughs> what the fuck? Spam. What was that? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't like it though. Get it out. Get it the fuck out. You're on the fence, but now you're truly convinced that Pink Cat is bad. Thank you, Anon Poster. Truly, you have converted me. Your, your paragraph of schizophrenic nonsense. I truly believe now. Fucking three bathrooms. Truly evil. How dare she? <laughs> oh my god. As the Salt Lake Tribune wrote up, the boy later pled guilty and confirmed the identities of the other people in the car as a condition of the plea. All's well that ends well. Hold on to your hats because nothing ended well. Oh, they had to just add that like fucking opinion sentence in here. Even before Christian's attacker was arrested, people who had been in the car that night began harassing the family on social media, using their real names and regular accounts to threaten physical violence and vandalism, 
urging friends to join them in the violence. The threats were direct, explicit, frightening, and not at all anonymous. When Stephanie called the Sandy police, they told her they could not investigate or arrest the people making the threats. The family were on their own. <laughs> Sandy police seem kind of fucking useless. They're on the payroll, dude! They're on the fucking payroll! Two weeks after the assault, 12 hours after the 17-year-old was booked into juvenile detention, the Peacock security cameras recorded someone pulling down and scattering pride flags a community group had put up to show support. One of the flagpoles was broken. A witness identified genital groping Hayden Stowell as the person in the security camera. <laughs> this man's got some hard repressed homosexual tendencies. He's, he's, re me, me thinks the lady doth protest too much. Social media threats intensified and Stephanie started having anxiety attacks. She told me and the Rainbow Youth Project USA on separate occasions in tears that she feared for her family's safety. Stephanie doesn't understand why the 17-year-old's accomplices have not been arrested and charged, especially given how they publicly threatened the peacocks and urged others to commit physical violence. Stephanie and her family did the job of the Sandy police, identifying the men in the car, all of whom are legal adults and all of whom should be equally culpable in the initiating a riot charge. She's incensed that Stowell, seen by multiple witnesses behaving in a sexually lewd manner to her then 17-year-old son, has faced no criminal consequences. Christian's attackers belong to Utah's polygamous, economically powerful Kingston clan. Not long after the attack, Stephanie learned that all the men in the car that night are part of the Kingston clan, a breakaway Mormon cult infamous for prearranged child marriages, rape, forced pregnancy, and child labor. Kingston survivors filed a lawsuit this September seeking punitive damages against 22 Kingston members for sex trafficking minors born into the organization, sexual battery, child abuse, and more. The SPLC classifies the Kingstons, also known as the Order, Davis County Cooperative Society, and the Latter-day Church of Christ as violent, racist, homophobic hate group. In a report, the SPLC said the Kingstons command an estimated 6,000 adherents, boast a business empire reportedly worth as much as $1 billion, and have outlasted a myriad of bouts with law enforcement and the press. Even, even a broken clock is right twice a day, you know? And the SPLC nailed this one on the head. After the Kingston gay bashing attack, Stephanie and Christian were shocked to learn several Kingston members live on their street. And Stephanie wonders if the Sandy police are afraid of them. She certainly is, and Christian is dealing with fear too. And it's like, that's kind of nuts that this, that this cult specifically, this just goes into like their relationship and like pride stuff, but that's kind of crazy how a cult commands like that much fucking power. Like, only 6,000 adherents in Salt Lake City, which is a big place, and then they own a billion in a business empire, and police are actually fucking afraid of them. Cops are useless. It's an easy slam dunk. It's not so much as being useless in this case, I think. I, 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 like, this just screams to me as the police being paid off, you know? This, this, this is very tinfoil hat territory, but that's what it sounds like, you know? You're trying to talk around possible TOS issues for an object out of which a copper projectile is shot. What? A, a gun? <laughs> I, I, can't, I don't know copper bullets, but... Despite two reduces, I gotta do one at a time, you know? I gotta, they don't, they don't stack. From what you're hearing, it looks like some kind of mafia. Yeah, it, so it sounds like a fucking cult mafia, dude. Cults run our government. This one is small time. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> I, was like, I don't think talking about guns is against TOS, dude. As long as you're not like accidentally discharging a gun while drunk on stream. You're, you're pretty fine. You're, you're pretty fine, you know? But this, this Kingston clan one is probably... One of the ones that's recent and still operating in like a large aspect. And it's it's kind of crazy to me that after all of the like lawsuits and shit, they're still allowed to operate. You would you would think if their entire ideology is built off of like child labor and marrying off children, you know, something would be done about it. But yeah, fuck it, I guess not, dude. You never know how tight Twitch's asshole is clenched. You know, you can, you can talk about guns. I, I literally have a gun prop, you know? 
One, what a combination. You wonder what the secret skeletons are in the closet? I would love to know. I would love to see this fall, fucking cult taken down, dude. I, I would want to see all of their shit laid bare, dude. Holy crap. What's this one? Oh, we're going to Israel now! Cult leader Daniel Ambash was married to six women and had 18 children. The case of his cult is one of the worst abuse cases in Israel, according to police. He was jailed for six crimes and he died. He died. I wonder how he died. <laughs> also, those gays should go stock up on guns. Utah has a stand your ground law so they can just fucking shoot the culty boys. Yeah. Yeah, fuck it. The gays should get the guns. Protect them and their properties. No anxiety, only self-defense. Convicted sexual abuser, cult leader, and polygamist Daniel Ambash, who was serving a 26-year sentence in Aylon Prison in Ramla, died suddenly on Friday morning, the Israel Prison Service Spokesperson's Unit announced. Dubbed the head of the Jerusalem cult, Ambash was indicted on 18 out of 20 criminal charges in 2013, including enslavement, cruel treatment of minors, false imprisonment, and severe sex and abuse violations that took place in Jerusalem and Tib Tiberias? Testimonies, private journals, and medical records greatly helped police in assembling the details of the case. Ambash, who himself was a Breslov Hasid, was scheduled to be released in July 2039 in what has been characterized by police as one of the worst cases of abuse in Israel. He was married to six wives with whom he fathered 18 children. So not as big of an army as the American sex cults. Hi, hello, European here. What's a stand your ground law? A stand your ground law is if someone is imminently threatening you or advancing on you, you can legally shoot them with deadly force to stop them, and it is considered self-defense. So you, you are allowed to stand your ground. In contrast to states that have uh, duty to retreat laws, where if someone is coming at you, actively trying to attack you, uh, you have a duty to retreat. So if you attack the person coming to attack you in a duty to retreat state, uh, you can be held liable for injury that they succumb to. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know what, uh, what laws are happening. <laughs> you're allowed to defend yourself with lethal, lethal force if your life is threatened, rather than have a duty to retreat. Ah, Bush, I'm glad you said the same thing as me. Hmm. That's how Kira will greet us when we visit her. Yeah, don't come to my house. If, if someone doxes me, don't fucking come here. I will repeat that as much as I have to. Duty to retreat is super fucking cringe? Yeah, it is, dude. Yeah, it is, dude. Duty to retreat should not exist, in my opinion. If someone is trying to harm me, why would I run from them instead of nullifying the issue, right? Like, what are the odds that I can even outrun that person or get somewhere where they can't do anything to me, right? What? <laughs> Duty to retreat, if someone comes at you, you have to at least try and get away and can only use lethal force if that is not an option. It's never an option, let's be real. <laughs> Duty to retreat is abhorrent and contrary to human nature. Agree. Agree, dude. Oregon is a stand your ground, but they bypassed it with use of force laws that pretty much prohibit self-defense and use. That's awful. That's fucking awful. Thanks, Oregon, you cucks. All right, you guys, you guys wanted a, a heckin' reduce? We're reducing over here. I think I gotta move a little bit over, because I think th I think that's on my tail now, and you want a pet? I think that's on tail time. <laughs> Take a step back and shoot! Oh my god. Any place without strong 2A is hellish, and your entire existence is at the mercy of the state. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a fun existence, honestly. Oh, I'm a little too close. You can't pet my ass. No ass pets, only tail pets. <laughs> no ass pet! You wish, you wish we had stand your ground or concealed carry laws in Canada? That shit sounds like it'd keep everyone in line. Less, less chance that someone's gonna act out if you don't know who the fuck is carrying, right? I'm gonna fuck around and find out, dude. California is actually a stand your ground state. I'm sure California has a lot of cucked shit that kind of makes the stand your ground not matter, though. Like, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Portland has been shit since Mork and Mindy ended. What the fuck? The cause of his death is still unknown and is being investigated by the Israeli police. The Prisoner's Release Committee was set to hold a hearing next week to determine if Ambash was eligible for early release for medical reasons. 
Nine people were charged in the original case, and Bash, two men who helped him carry out punishments the cult leader deemed necessary for followers having forbidden thoughts. Imagine thought policing. And the six wives who, along with others, experienced various forms of abuse. Cult members physically assaulted dozens of children in the group, considered part of an extended family. Punishments included rape, indecent acts, physical restraint, getting hit with a wooden stick, electric shocks, and more. You see, if they had done this with, like, consulting... Consulting? Consenting adults! If they had done this with consenting adults, it would have just been your average BDSM club. Right? Like, you, just, you punish your submissive with, like, fucking consensual non-consent, indecent acts, physical restraint, getting hit with wooden sticks and electric shocks. That just sounds like a fun time at the club. But... It's... If they if they had just done it with if they had just done it with consenting adults, this wouldn't even be an issue. Why are you like this? Ambash's wives, in one episode detailed during his trial, Ambash took one of his wives out to the garden in the middle of the night, sprayed her with water, dragged her by the hair, and demanded to know how many men she had slept with before him. It was like some fucking incel ideology. Like I I gotta know how many men you slept with, but you're a woman, so you lie, so I have to like multiply it by 14, divide your age, and then multiply it again by like 144. Or like, what is, what is this? <laughs> he just forgot to set the safe word, goddamn, dude. Sounds like being a Catholic, he says, as I'm talking about a Jewish person. Hmm. Someone, someone, someone's got a little bit too much of uh, one specific religion doing this in the brain. Guy that lived in a country that required every home to own a gun. One attempted burglary in 30 years, and it was a family member. What a dumbass. What a room temp IQ ass. Another time, he forced a different wife's head into a toilet and flushed water over her until she choked. This is, this is literally something you can find on Pornhub. Like, if, if this guy had just gotten people who were into this, like, there wouldn't be any fucking... Wow! What just happened to my browser? Um, the, the feds are coming for me? I'm unearthing too much? I don't know what the fuck- I don't even know if that, like, came across on the stream, but that was- that was fucking spooky. That was fucking spooky, dude. But my heck is- Oh, I, It's the tabs. It's not the tabs! You're a Nazarene. All we do is bitch about Catholics. Goddamn. Bitch about everybody. Glowy is attempting remote control. I know, in real time. I can't close the tabs. That's what they want. They want me to close the tabs. I will not close submit. Close the fucking tabs. I will you not psychopath. submit. You can't detain me. I know my rights. That's what you get. Oh my god. Uh, spooky. It's a famous Rocco Sifredi scene. I don't know what that is. Jesus Christ, are these actually real news? Yeah, we've been reading real news about cults all day. <laughs> a few of the wives ran for Knesset in 2019 under the party name Kama with the stated goal of fighting for greater individual liberties. However, they fell far short of the vote threshold to gain any seats. The wives have maintained that Ambash was innocent and insist they never experienced abuse from him. Three of them appealed to the court for a conjugal visit back in 2018, and those were denied. Ambash appealed three months ago in hopes of getting permission for the three to visit, and that appeal was denied by the court, which considered the wives to be victims of Ambash's abuse. That's kind of crazy. I was like, it's just, it's just get people who consent to do this, and then you, one, wouldn't be a cult, and two, wouldn't be in prison. Like, this is, this is literally classic BDSM, but this was non-consensual. Just fucking get someone who's into it, dude. I know my rights, the phrase that starts every macing and tasing video. Oh, dude, I get so fucking excited when I hear that in a video. I get so fu- I'm like, I know the taser's coming out, dude. <laughs> I know it's happening. Rocco Safradi's a porn actor, did the toilet thing in the 90s. Oh, you know what disgusts me? But absolutely, like, just fucking, uh, like, triggers my gag reflex more than anything else. When I see people licking toilets, I was just like, oh, have some sense of self, dude. Please, for the love of God. Doorknob licking, too. I, it's like, I, know, I know in my mind, doorknob licking is just as, if not more, gross, right? But uh, something about the visual of the toilet. Uh, eh. 
You mean like the girl who licked the airplane toilet seat? Yes, exactly like fucking her. That degenerate behavior. What if you made the toilet specifically for lit? Well, if you modeled a toilet out of like chocolate or marshmallow, like sure, I guess, but you're not gonna put your ass on it. Other people aren't gonna put their ass on it. <laughs> Wasn't that a challenge? It was, for some reason. No dignity and no hygiene. Fucking no funds, no kills, fucking dog water, dude. <laughs> You're not news to you. This was this was what I was talking about. The time a murderous polygamous doomsday cult took over Munster. And apparently from this cult, the cages are still hung in Germany to this day. Like uh right here, you can see the cages from the cult shit hung hung at a chapel in Germany, which is pretty fucking cool if you think about it, right? Like they got some cult shit on display just publicly. I seem a little naive. About what? <laughs> what can I possibly what can I possibly sound a little naive about here? You clean your toilet once a week? You've never cleaned your doorknobs. <laughs> Another great video is when a comp is talking to somebody and you hear the phrase, Excuse me, officer! But I'm a sovereign citizen. There are people who have that specifically as their fetish. Tony the Mighty, there are actually specific toilet chairs that are built so that you can sit on them and have somebody else below the hole in the chair to take the shit on their face. I know. I know this is a fetish. I've seen I've seen the men vacuum packed into fucking silicone suits that have a little a little tube and a funnel where the woman pisses into it and they inhale and drink the piss. I know this exists. I know it does, but that doesn't mean I can't be gagged out, grossed by people licking toilet seats. That doesn't make me naive. That makes me a little bit closer to normal. <laughs> Just shit onto a glass coffee table like the rest of us. Oh my god. Where are those cages at? Uh, three of them hang from the spire of the St. Lamberti Church and are visible from all corners of the city. They also turn up in fa uh, her family photo albums, the journalist person. Um, it does I don't know what town this is in, I guess. I guess the town is Munster. When I when I was in Germany, I was in like Leverkusen and we went to the Schwarzwald. So I I think that was like southern Germany. I don't know where Munster is. I don't know where Munster is, dude. <laughs> the cages are just interesting to me. The Anabaptist Rebellion, Dan Carlin did a good podcast on this. It's definitely interesting. It's definitely fucking crazy. Gagging right now. Thanks for that. Yeah. That'll that'll teach you to call me naive, dude. <laughs> From your almost ten months of being chained to the basement, naive isn't a word that came to mind ever. <laughs> Goes into deep detail, but doesn't know Rocco Safridi. Why the fuck would I remember porn star names? Anyone get those cages for cheap? Can't find anything under two thousand. These are probably handcrafted because they're so old, honestly. <laughs> saying you're abnormal I'm absolutely correct but are you so I'm fucking saying it you can take that to Twitter and lick it <laughs> what tangent are we on today today is not a tangent today was planned today was a planned stream about sex cults and now we're at the doomsday polygamous murder sex cult the lords or whatever look back the town took the leaders tied them to a pole tore their flesh off and put the bodies in those cages and hung them on the church. Yeah, but they were still alive. Like, that was the whole point. They wanted them to still be alive. <laughs> but I'd be down to read a Pippa sonnet you wrote as an ASMR redeem. I, I could do so. What it... What it... A sonnet's a type of poem. You're, you, you do poetry, my guy? Holy shit, they what? We're getting to that. We're getting to that. Something bizarre happened in Munster between 1534 and 1535. A radical set of Anabaptists took over the city and created a proto-communist, polygamous, theocratic, doomsday sex cult governed through fear and violence. They were first led by a former blacksmith turned fiery prophet, Jan Matthias, and then by a former tailor and failed entrepreneur, John of Leiden. They not only rejected traditional Catholic sacraments like infant baptism and the Eucharist, but also believed the apocalypse was about to begin. 
These were intolerable heresies for Catholics and Lutherians alike. In 1529, an edict by Holy Roman Emperor Charles V made it open season on Anabaptists everywhere. They were to be hunted down and exterminated wherever they were found. Hundreds burned at the stake or were beheaded between 1529 and 1534, before the harried Anabaptists fled behind the relative safety of Munster's walls. Over the next 16 months, as Prince Bishop Franz von Waldeck besieged the city, the story would take many strange twists and turns. What happened when the great prophet Matthias rode out of Munster like Don Quixote to challenge an entire army? What happened when a young Dutch girl tried to become a second Judith by assassinating Bishop Walbeck? What happened when John of Leiden, a 25-year-old with a raging libido, became king in a city where women outnumber men three to one? What do you think his major social reform would be? Government-appointed girlfriend? As the siege on Munster continued into its second year, how did it all come unraveled? How did it fall apart? In February of 1534, the prophet Jan Matthias, his lieutenant John of Leiden, and hundreds of his Dutch-speaking followers arrived at Munster, where they took over the Anabaptist movement. Matthias was proceeded to set up a communist theocracy. Money was abolished and private property too. Everyone's possessions were handed over to the city government to be equally doled out to the populace. Food was likewise distributed equally. Everyone got the same. No more, no less. Class distinctions disappeared. Everyone was equal. And as an added bonus, Matthias banned and burned all books except the Bible to protect his followers from spiritual corruption. I fucking hate this shit. I fucking hate anyone that, like, does fucking book burning or destroying of, like, artifacts and shit. Equally achieved! We did it! Don, Don Quixote. Yeah, Don... Don I, I sang the song, Don Quixote! They were Anabaptists close to where you grew up. Man, they still fucking exist? Really? Really, dude? Oh, Teddy, I can give you a bit of stress relief. Are you, are you struggling with all of this new knowledge you're obtaining today? Is it a, is it a bit of a fucking struggle? Don, Don Quixote? Don Quixote! The start of many a history tragedy, and then they enacted communism! <laughs> but this wasn't, this wasn't, you know, true communism, right? <laughs> Ten syllables per line with the emphasis on even syllables. I can't count, Tairuku, so I don't think I'd be able to read that correctly if I need to, like, count in how I speak. La Lars, sad, bro. Thanks for the follow. Don't be sad. You fucking love that stress ball sound. Are you being sarcastic right now? You be fucking sarcastic. You're learning you should find a cult. Welcome! Welcome to our cult. You'll get whiplash, and that's not covered in your healthcare plan. Too late. Ugh. Communist theocracy sounds like a contradiction. Meanwhile, outside the city walls, Bishop Waldeck's army was gathering around the city. This didn't matter to Matthias. God had told him that the end times were set to kick off that Easter just two months later. Then Christ would swoop down with his avenging angels and smite his enemies. Except that didn't happen. Right before Easter, Matthias claimed that God had given him specific instructions on how to proceed. Those instructions seemed insane to his followers, but who were they to question God's word? On Easter, the prophet was to ride out of the city in full battle dress with 20 of his companions to confront the bishop's army of 3,000 battle-hardened mercenaries. An army of angels would then descend from the heavens and help Matthias annihilate the bishop's army. The apocalypse would be launched. And so it played out, but not as expected. Everyone, including John of Leiden, watched from the city walls with eager anticipation. They were about to witness something amazing. Out rode the burly, overweight, 50-something Matthias from the main gate, armed with his battle axe, and immediately charged the enemy. It was over in seconds. Matthias and his small band were massacred. The Anabaptists watched in horror as the bishop's soldiers killed and then cut their prophet's corpse into dozens of pieces. It wasn't even really a battle, but a mass execution. To put an exclamation mark on the day's events, the bishop had Matthias' severed head placed on a pike in front of the city walls and his genitals nailed to the main gate. An eyewitness wrote, They were so angry with Matthias that they did not merely kill him like the other people, but beat and cut him into small pieces, 
so that his brothers, when the uproar was over, had to carry him away in a basket. Needless to say, neither angels nor Christ with a sword was spotted on this day. Rumors swirled that Matthias would rise from the dead like Christ and resume his mission after three days. Three days passed, yet Matthias' severed head still sat perched on the tip of a pike. John took over. Matthias died ingloriously. What would his followers do now? A cult led by a charismatic leader is always at risk of disintegrating once that leader is removed from the equation. Cut off the head and the body dies. That could have been the case, however, an even more charismatic leader now stepped forward. This was John of Leiden, whom Martin Luther would derisively call the Taylor King to mock his humble origins. John the Taylor was cut from a different cloth than Matthias. He was well-educated, well-traveled, and biblically literate. John also realized that he had to discredit his old friend and mentor, Matthias, to consolidate his own power. It wasn't as if the Anabaptists in Munster could just leave and call it quits. They were still besieged by a hostile enemy that wanted to torture and kill them all. There was no turning back now. The frightened people wanted to be reassured and led, and John of Leiden stepped in to fill the void left by Matthias' death. He soon anointed himself King John and appointed the Council of Twelve Elders to help him rule. One of his first major reforms was to institutionalize polygamy, because of course it was! Of the 9,000 or so inhabitants of Munster, only 1,600 were men, the rest being women and children. John decreed that each man could take as many wives as he wanted, as long as he lived with the wives in a godly way. He argued that they were biblical precedents. King David had eight wives, Abraham and Jacob two each, why not the Anabaptists? God damn it. Next, he argued that all those women without husbands would be tempted into sexual depravity. Sex outside of marriage was still a mortal sin. Allowing men to marry more than one woman would keep Munster's women from sinning by having sex out of wedlock. That's smart. That's fucking 500 IQ, dude. That's, that's smart. <laughs> John's spiritual advisor, the prophet Bernard Rothman, argued, If, therefore, a man is so richly blessed that he is able to fructify more than one woman, he is free and even advised to have more than one woman in matrimony. John and Rothman were arguing for polygamy to protect men and women from sin. The Randy Rothman practiced what he preached, eventually taking nine wives, all in the name of protecting them. God damn. <laughs> John was a bit of a cad. When he first arrived at Munster, he stayed with prominent local businessmen who would later become his number two and chief executor. Or executioner. Holy shit, that's a different word. Fuck me. John secured and then married Knipper Dolling's daughter, Clara, though she was only 14 at the time. She was so badly injured by John during her wedding night rape that she needed surgery to repair the damage. Can you imagine what surgery would be like in the 1500s? That doesn't sound like uh, it would be a fun time. Especially if you have to repair like a fucking tender region like that. That's kind of nuts. Sounds like you're saying people start cults just to get nookie. Oh my god, they do it all for the nookie, dude. Surgery, you mean butchering. Well, she was already butchered if she needed surgery to fix the damage. John grew tired of Clara and began sleeping with Gnipper Doling's maid. Then after Matthias found himself minus one head, God personally told John, and only John, that he should take Matthias' widow, the beautiful Devara, as his wife and then implement polygamy in Munster. Devara is a pretty, pretty cute name. I like that name for a lady. I kind of like that name. Over the next few months, he would continue adding new wives until he had 16. Unsurprisingly, many men loved the new policy in a city where women outnumbered them three to one. There was a mad rush to claim any single women of childbearing age as wives. According to the new law, women had to marry and submit to sex on demand with their husbands. Man, and it took us how long to get video on demand? These people. These people. Also, this is a weird fucking painting. <laughs> Surgeons at the time used to be called barbers, so yeah. Yeah, I do not, do not think whatever surgery she had to suffer was, uh, was pleasant. <laughs> oh, God. Many women were not so happy about being turned into sexual vassals. Wives of long-standing marriage found themselves sharing the marriage bed with one or more sister wives, and they hated it. Social chaos ensued as lecherous old men competed with each other to collect as many wives as possible. In contrast, many women hid, complained, or resisted in other ways. 
Many men delighted in the prospect of enjoying a harem of wives. Others despaired at what they had lost or were about to lose. A stable, loving marriage. And you know, I think you should think back to this. Anytime some kind of like incel ideology pickup artist guy tries telling you that men are naturally polygamous creatures and we, we must convince the women to embrace the polygamous lifestyle. I don't think men are naturally polygamous. I think, I think men are probably naturally monogamous. And this, this behavior is degeneracy that is allowed by corrupt leaders leading them astray, you know? I was like, God damn. So many wives had refused to go along with the new policy of institutionalized rape that John and his 12 elders were first forced to take stern measures. Women who refused to submit to marital sex on demand and obey the laws endorsing polygamy would be sent to prison. The Rosendale Coventry was converted into a women's jail for those recalcitrant women. This may have backfired, however. The prospect of getting locked up in a women's prison was frankly more appealing to many women than forced sex with some dirty old men. Prophet Rothman may have sensed this was the case. Rosendale won't work any longer. We realize that you can't be forced by it. Hence, now you must be punished by the sword. From here on out, women who refused to marry or would not submit to sex on demand were to be executed. Wh women in the 1500s so badly wanted to keep monogamous, loving relationships that they would rather go to prison than partake in polygamy. And this is exactly what happened on several occasions. These women would rather be beheaded by a sword than enter polygamous relationships. You queasy fucks trying to say, you men are naturally polygamous. We gotta do it. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> the sons of bitches just need the wall, dude. Yeah, polygamy is hella cringe. Hella cringe, dude. Celibacy prison. Harem is the fantasy. Raising a stable family is the realistic dream. I don't know how realistic it is anymore in current year with, like, fucking the economy the way it is, but it's definitely the dream, dude. All right, then. You're off for the night. Umbra, have a good rest of your night. Thank you for hanging out, dude. Thank you. For example, one day, a woman was brought before King John's throne. She was accused of denying her husband sex three times, which was a capital offense. The woman in question, Elizabeth Holsham, argued that she had been assigned a husband against her will, despite John's earlier insistence that women should not be forced into these plural marriages. The reality was that they were. John sentenced her to death for her sins to set an example. His chief executioner and father-in-law, Bernard Knipperdoling, then decapitated Elizabeth in a single stroke. The next day, Catherine Knockerbecken, what are these fucking names? How am I supposed to take this story about, like, forced marriage and polygamy and rape and decapitation seriously? When we got names like Bernard Knieperdolin and Catherine Knockerbecken. Like, what? I just... <laughs> it's so hard, dude. You can barely afford to take a girl out for some fun. You can't imagine paying to raise a kid. Oh, my God. <laughs> The next day, Catherine Knockerbecken was executed similarly for the crime that she had supposedly taken two husbands. Knipper Doling also later decapitated his mistress in the town square for suspected treason. And so it continued. Women were forced to accept the new marital regime or risk capital punishment. Also, that's kind of funny. That's, that's kind of fun. That's the whole, like, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Because, like, why wouldn't she be able to take two husbands, right? If polygamy is legal, why are only men able to take it? Like, fuck that. She was a pioneer. You, you fucking get it, Catherine, if you have to live under this fucking nonsense, you know? Couldn't satisfy one. How could you satisfy a fucking group? A lot of time and a lot of mechanical assistance. <laughs> I beck in her knocker, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> By the spring of 1535, King John had a harem of 16 wives. Many of his henchmen had multiple as well, though John's were some of the prettiest and fairest maidens in the realm. Each was expected to be obedient and responded to his every desire, no matter how depraved. In return, they lived and ate like royalty. This was important because the selfless communism of the movement's early days had given way under harsh realities of a long siege. You don't say... You don't, you don't fucking say. 
John and his entourage continued to eat very well. Meanwhile, everyone else was starving. It's almost like that's what happens every single time. Still, there was trouble in paradise. One of John's wives, Elizabeth Wandshire, had enough, wanted out. She looked around and saw starvation and misery while the king and his court gorged themselves at nightly banquets. She felt shame living like this while people suffered. It wasn't right. Elizabeth did the unthinkable, returning the jewels and gifts the king had given her and asking permission to leave Munster. The king responded like the tyrant he had become, dragging her to the town square and condemning her to death. A sentence he carried out himself by chopping her head off, and then in a macabre display, macabre? M macabre? The king and his wives danced around Elizabeth's headless corpse as they all sang, Glory be to God the highest. This sounds more like a demonic cult. This, uh, this sounds more demonic than godly, I'm gonna be real. Man, old, old timey, old timey religious people were fucking crazy. They were fucking crazy. Macab! Oh god, my shoulder's fucking killing me, dude. But like, why did she think that she would be allowed to like return the gifts and then be let free? If she was already watching other people be executed, like why did why did she think she would be allowed to leave? Why why not just escape in the middle of the night? This seems like some real room temp IQ strategy by her. Honestly. The sad tale of Hilly Faken! As we saw above with the mad prophet Matthias and his ill-fated plan, letting blind faith run a little too far ahead of reality can get you killed. This is another such tale. As Bishop Waldeck's siege pressed on, the inhabitants of Munster found themselves safe, but trapped. The bishop's first assault on the city had been repulsed with heavy casualties, but the siege continued. What could the defenders do? A young Dutch girl of 15 stepped up with a plan and took its inspiration from the events in the Book of Judith. In that story, the Israelites were under assault by the mighty Assyrian Empire, led by Nebuchadnezzar. 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 Nebuchadnezzar! I did it! Most powerful general, Holofernes. Totally outnumbered with defeat imminent, a young Jewish maiden named Judith prayed to God to give her the courage to embark on a last-ditch plan to save her people. Her bold plan was to assassinate Holofernes. Oh no, tits, dude, what? Oh, that's fine. It's historical tits, that's okay. It's educational. Judith left the city gates of Bethulia and headed to the Assyrian lines, where she was captured and taken to Holofernes' tent. Judith used her beauty to charm the great general and even offered him intel to defeat the Israelites. That was all fine and good, but Holofernes desperately wanted to sleep with her, and with that in mind, he begged her to come to his tent to eat and drink wine with him. Judith accepted the invitation, telling him, whatever is pleasing to him, I will promptly do. This will be a joy for me until the day of my death. Holofernes no doubt thought he was about to make a conquest of another kind, but this was all according to Judith's master plan to seduce him and make him vulnerable, which is exactly what happened. His servants and guards left the two alone to drink and make love in peace. Unfortunately for Holofernes, he drank so much he passed out, Judith looked down at the sleeping man and prayed to God for the strength to do what came next. She took up Holofernes' heavy sword, grabbed him by the hair, and cut off his head. One is left how, or one is left wondering how efficiently the cutting went. A small girl, a heavy sword, and a thick neck. But I digress. She put the head in a sack and snuck back to Bethulia to show it to the city leaders. Here's the head of Holofernes. The Lord has struck him down by hand of woman. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Buka buka buka. The ship from the Matrix. I see. Never seen the Matrix. I play Civ 5 and I still can't fucking pronounce this guy's name, dude. <laughs> Ow. Technically, Janet Jackson's tit is historical. We're not looking at Janet Jackson's titties from the Super Bowl, dude. Do I have notes on the Oneida community? They were a New York sex cult in 1848. It sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. Oh, what the heck? Man, I sure do wish I had moderators in my channel. <laughs> I sure I sure do wish I had moderators in my channel. Likely ban evader, dude. What the heck? What the heck? 
No mods in the chat. Never lucky. If you're trying to make like a racist epithet to spam in someone's chat, why would you use chocolate milk of all things? God damn. What? Nim, this is the second time I've had a bot come in and just spam some fucking weird, creepy nonsense. What type of honey pot was the girl called? Eh. Oh, my back. I'm dying today, dude. I need a massage so fucking bad. Why are you guys question marking? Why are you guys question marking? Chalky milk- Yeah, chalky milk is very nice, dude. You are mostly audio gamer. Just shout at you. You gotta be looking at chat gamer. You have three monitors. Get your chat up there somewhere, dude. They don't make sex chat bots like they used to. That for me, Waifu doing the best she can. She can't hold off the horde of, like, shit bots, though, you know? God damn. The head was nailed to the city gate so that the Assyrians would see it in the morning. When they did, they fled and the Israelites pursued and annihilated them. Judith saved the day! Flash forward 200 years to Munster. A devout and attractive 15-year-old Dutch girl named Hilly Fakin saw the parallels between Judith's tale and the current situation. She came up with a plan to save the city that was very closely modeled on Judith's. Amazingly, John and the elders gave the green light for this plan. Why not, they reasoned. It probably wouldn't work, but if it did, it would be a major coup. And even if it didn't, the Anabaptists would get a morale-boosting martyr and have one less mouth to feed, all for the low, low cost of one young girl who couldn't fight anyway. Wow, that's, that's kind of harsh. That's kind of harsh, dude. So Hill dressed herself up in fine clothes and jewelry and made her way to the besieging army's trenches. She carried a gift for Bishop Waldeck, a beautiful shirt of fine linen, soaked in poison. <laughs> the, pre the precursor to the smallpox blankets, right? The plan was to meet Bishop Waldeck, posing as a disgruntled Anabaptist, and offer him intel on the city's defenses. When she gained his trust, she would give him the poison shirt, which he would at some point put on and die instantly. Then, God willing, if things went according to plan, the dead bishop's army would melt away and the siege would be over. I don't... I don't know if that's how that works. I feel like if you kill an army commander, the army continues armying, right? You know, maybe. Plates, cups, and flatware? You actually bought some before you knew the backstory. Someone brought up that cult the other day when I was talking about doing this stream. I remember that now. I remember the fucking cutlery cult. That's why the new AI tech was developed, clearly taking away people's jobs. Huh. Hilly would be a hero, just like Judith, and they would all live happily ever after. But this is another story where blind faith collides with brute reality, and brute reality emerged the victor. Hilly made it to the bishop's lines, where she was interrogated by the high bailiff. He actually bought her story and agreed to take her to meet with the bishop in two days. So far, so good. Unfortunately... Another refugee from Munster showed up at about the same time. A man named Herman Ramert. To save himself from the inevitable torture and death that awaited any captured Anabaptist with nothing to bargain with, he offered the bishop some intel of his own. He knew about Hilly's plan to assassinate the bishop and revealed everything. Hilly was immediately arrested and tortured on the wheel. There she revealed her plan to become a second Judith and save her people from the bishop. To her credit, torture did not break her, she remained a true believer till the end. As she was led to the scaffolding for her execution, she assured the executioner that he had no power to hurt her. He answered, We shall see about that! And chopped her head off. Man! They even got fucking jokes back in the 1500s! These guys, these guys are fucking wildin', dude! <laughs> no commander, no pay, equal disband! I don't... I mean, you don't get paid by the commander, though. You get paid by, like, the guy who owns the army back in, back in the safety of his own home, you know? the hell kind of shirt kills you instantly? One laced with asbestos? I don't know, dude. <laughs> Military is actually set up so that if your commander dies, you get the second in command and so on. Yeah, that's what I thought, dude. That's what I fucking thought. You're willing to wrangle on occasion if I need more cops? You take payment in Kirsha cubes. Unfortunately, Twitch handles those. I can't give out Kirsha cubes to anyone. What are you gonna do? Execute me? Quoted from girl who was summarily executed. <laughs> Dude ratted on a little girl. Hey, it's every man for himself, right? And this guy was like, I can die or the little girl can die. I choose the little girl. 
they were ahead of their time with the savage jokes. Yeah, that's true. They were memeing before we even knew what memes were. The siege wore on, and the provisions were dwindling fast. As disillusion set in among the people, John concocted ever more elaborate schemes to raise their morale. In January of 1535, he predicted that on Easter of that year, the Lord would return. They just needed to hold fast for another three months, and then they would be delivered from their suffering. It's that easy, you guys. Just don't starve that fast. But everyone remembered that Matthias had predicted the same thing the year before. And look how well that went. John remembered too. And so added the caveat that if he was wrong and the Lord didn't arrive as predicted, he would surrender himself to be executed as a false prophet and criminal. Of course, Easter came and the Lord showed no signs of coming. John dubiously claimed that he had actually meant the Lord would actually come on Easter. Mm, only that the last days would begin then. He proclaimed an added bonus. You are now free from sin. Our present suffering is but his testing of our steadfastness. And they just needed to be patient. But patient is not a virtue when you're dying of starvation. The reality of scarcity began to dictate people's behavior. John took control of the entire city's stock of meat and grain to make sure his inner circle was well fed. Communism! Everyone else had to fend for themselves. We have numerous reports of desperate people put to death for stealing from central stores. One woman was condemned for taking more than her quota of horse flesh. A hungry 10-year-old boy was hanged twice. The ropes broke the first time for stealing apples. By April, thousands were starving and looking for a way out. John agreed that anyone who wanted to leave could. This would reduce the strain on his supplies and rid himself of the last or least committed. Unfortunately, Bishop Waldeck was not in a forgiving mood. In the early months of the siege, John had twice repelled the bishop's assault with heavy losses. The bishop seethed, but decided that his best option was to starve them out. Months later, that policy was now finally paying off. By June, 400 men and the same number of women had left Munster, only to find themselves in a new hell. The men taken by the bishop's forces were almost immediately executed, their bodies put on full display for the people of Munster to see. Meanwhile, the women and children were imprisoned. One of Munster's dissatisfied refugees and a former guard familiar with the city's defenses was granted amnesty in a return for help exploiting a weak spot in the wall. With his help, 300 soldiers were able to sneak through an unguarded door and get into the city. Is this like a, fu is this like a plot for Attack on Titan? What the heck? How does one seethe? They must also cope. And a word I probably can't say on Twitch. <laughs> Copium is this guy chugging? Too fucking much, dude. At least they cut off their heads. There were a lot of slow death torture methods back then. Yeah, at least at least they were given a quick death, you know? At least. Huh. After some sharp fighting, the city fell on the 25th of June, 1535. Every male in the city was put to the sword. Of the few hundred others who survived the sacking, 213 recanted and were spared. The rest were killed. John's favorite wife and Matthias' widow, Queen Devara, refused to recant and was beheaded on the 7th of July. That's one day after my birthday! John was taken alive by two of his lieutenants, Bernard Knipperdoling and Bernard Crechting. By this point, John had become sort of a folk hero in the region. After all, an impoverished tailor from Leiden, a nobody, was able to take over a city and hold off the armies of the Holy Roman Empire for 16 months. Though many found his beliefs abhorrent, there was a grudging respect towards a guy who had managed to take on the establishment and give it a few black eyes. Yeah, anti-establishmentism, but he was kind of a piece of shit. Still, John knew what his fate would be after the interrogations were completed. However, before he was put to death, the theologians wanted to make him see the errors of his ways. Something was unsettling about his beliefs and how attractive they seemed to so many people. They needed to discredit them. So many people desiring polygamy and child raping. What the fuck? Never said it was quick, only that it rem the remains were displayed. I guess they could have had a slow beheading, but like, if you gotta behead 300 people, 
you probably got to do that pretty quickly. You don't got time to revel in their suffering if you got to behead three fucking hundred, dude. Am I reading this off cracked? No, why? Why do you this? Why you ask? They had army. You're back. We doing old timey sex cults? Yeah, this is from the 1500s. We're fucking nuts, dude. Oh. The chief interrogator was a humane Lutheran theologian called Antonius Corbinus. Oh, holy shit, Roman as fuck. He brought John up out of the cold, dark cell into a well-appointed room with a fireplace and comfortable chairs. Rather than torturing the answers out of him, Corvinus wanted to get John talking freely and openly. This turned out to be a good approach. John talked. Corvinus also wanted to reconvert the heretic back into the orthodoxy and used his friendly interrogations to probe for weaknesses and inconsistencies in John's theology. He was surprised by how few there were. John may have been a violent and deluded heretic, but he was an intelligent one, and he could competently quote scripture to back his beliefs. Where in the Bible did it say that infant baptism was mandatory? It doesn't. And didn't Christ get baptized as an adult? So why is it heresy? John gave as good as he got. Other than polygamy, John's religious beliefs will not strike most modern Christians as anything but common sense. In some ways, he was way ahead of his time, but this was not a debate he could win, and this was not his time. In the end, John would not budge or renounce his beliefs. He didn't change his mind that the Eucharist was no more than a symbolic representation of Christ's body and blood. He held on to his belief that only an adult could rationally decide to be baptized, nor would he admit that he had abused the institution of marriage by introducing polygamy. Corvinus and John eventually reached an impasse, and there was no reason to continue the discussion. On January 22nd, 1536, John of Leiden, Bernard Knipperdoling, and Bernard Crechting were taken to the marketplace in Munster to be executed. The method to be used was meant to inflict maximum agony, making it a, de a death fit for the worst heretics. For one hour, the executioners would use white-hot tongs to flay the skin off of their victims. After that hour had passed, the executioner would mercifully stab the victim in the heart to end their life. John was up first. Soon the smell of his burning flesh filled the air. John stoically bore the pain in silence, impressing even Corvinus. Not once a sound, as a witness to the pain, did he utter. And so it went for one hour. John's skin was flayed from his body. Strip by strip, only towards the end did John cry out for mercy from God. With malicious glee, the Catholic priests and monks in attendance applauded the mortal destruction of their hated enemy. Glory be to God the highest, Corvinus wrote of these monks and priests. There were many here who could not imagine anything better than this sight. That's kind of fucked up. That's kind of fucked. Knipper Doling was next. He went screaming and begging for forgiveness. Finally, there was poor Crechting, who before his turn came, suffered an additional two hours of psychological torture watching his former friends die in agony. When his, fine, when his turn finally did come, he too went screaming and begging for forgiveness. After this gruesome spectacle, the three mutilated corpses were put in cages and hung from the tower of St. Lambert's Church as a reminder of what happens to heretics, and also a reminder of God's everlasting and loving justice. How do you twist that into loving justice, dude? What the heck? They stayed there for five decades, through sun, rain, and snow, with the corpses finally becoming skeletons. The original cages, now empty, still hang from the Tower of St. Lambert today. Over the next few years, the rest of the Anabaptists would be hunted down and killed. There would be no more monsters to threaten the social order. By 1540, Anabaptists had almost ceased to exist on the continent. Many fled to England, and from there some went on to settle in America where Anabaptist beliefs inspired the Baptist Church's development, many of whose ideas are direct descendants of those held by John of Leiden and his sect. I didn't know that! That's fucking cool! No wonder someone in here said that they live near Anabaptist. That makes a lot of sense. I didn't put I didn't put two and two together, but Anabaptist evolving into Baptist, it just makes sense. That just makes sense. Great advertisement. Ah, thank you. I'm not sponsored. <laughs> who who could possibly reinterpret religious scripture for their own personal gain? Hmm, I wonder. 
They can have everyone beheaded by someone else, and very slowly. Yeah, but then you'd have to, like, line everybody up in, like, a huge fucking concert line of beheadings. Like, that'd, that'd still take a long-ass time, you know? Real Anabaptists, not just Baptists, which are also all over your hometown. Oh my god. I just think it's really cool that the cages are still fucking there. Who had to take the, the skeletons out of the cages? And why... Why did they decide after 50 years that like, yep, that's enough time. Let's take, let's take those skeletons out. You know, let's, let's go bury those guys, you know? Like who, whose job was that? And how was it decided? That's kind of what I want to know. I don't, I wonder if you can look that up. Let me, let me close my browser for a second. Like, I just, I wonder if that's something you can look up. Uh, Anna, Anna Baptist corpses removed from... What's the name of the church? St. Lambert? St. Lambert Church. Execution. The three terrifying cages. Why the cages hang. Mm, okay, let's... Uh, this, this website is called Amusing Planet. I don't know if amusing is the word I would use for this. One of the most brutal Protestant revolutions in history. This kind of just recaps what happened. I, I guess there might be... Yeah, I, I guess there just might not be any... notes on how... Or I guess not how, on why or... specifically what was happening to remove them from the, the, the thingies. So that's unlucky. That's a, que that's a question that'll never get answered. Birds did most of the work. It should have been pretty easy to clean up. Yeah, I mean... The corpses were there for 50 years. That's five decades. So they were just skeletons at that point. But like, you still gotta take skeletons out of cages that are precariously hanging from a church steeple. And like, what, what was the decision that after 50 years arbitrarily, it's time to take the skeletons out of the cages? Like it wouldn't have taken 50 years for the birds to pick them clean, you know? That, that's, that probably was done in a couple of years. Maybe a bone fell out and hit someone. It still would have been like early 1600s though, so I don't know how much they would have cared <laughs> about the bone. Less than one. What the fuck? The ends justify the means at its finest. Yeah, this uh, this was a pretty wild story. I had never I had never heard about the the Anabaptists before. This was uh, this was my first introduction to them. A pretty pretty fucking crazy story. Less than one, they would just be bones in less than one year. Well, see, that's, that's fucking 49 years of them just fucking chilling as bones. That's kind of crazy. I wonder, I wonder, like, I just, I wish we could know. I wish we could know about it. <sighs> Another German cult, the Athene one? Mmm. Was the Athene cult a sex cult? I feel like I briefly talked about the Athene cult recently, but I didn't have anything on it today. It sounds really fucking familiar. Like, I know I talked about it recently. Hey, crazy dude. Actually just fucking nuts. There's the Wicca cult. It's not a sex cult, but you think you could be wrong? I mean, eventually all cults become sex cults, right? Right? <laughs> It's a no sex cult. Oh, 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 okay. So like, completely celibate cult. You got lost in the story reading, but you redeemed an ASMR. Let me look at my queue. Manage request rewards. Did my moderators delete it from the queue again? Did they delete it? Why did my browser die? That was weird. The sonnet is in stream end slide. That's really weird. Oh shit. Oh shit. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I clicked I clicked on a link from my moderator. And I was like, wait, maybe I should not have the browser open when I click on this. Why why did you link me this? Why did you link me this? Was this like was this like something I was talking about? It doesn't look familiar. Nim, what the fuck is this? Nim, what is this link? Was that the one he told me not to open on stream? No, Nim didn't tell me anything. <laughs> My tangents should warrant a Liberian and or bartender outfit. Oh, 
I feel like a Liberian and a Librarian are two vastly different outfits. <laughs> I... I should have had, uh... Four outfits ready by this point, including my main outfit overhaul, but... Unlucky, you know? The one not to open on stream was Arnie. That one's from Nim. Arnie? Arnie sent me a fucking official Twitch link! Literally from official Twitch fucking support! I don't know. Switch- switch out guest? I don't know what that means. Guest pop out? Guest star does not yet support your browser. Please open in Chrome. <sighs> you bitch. You don't have access to guest star yet. Thanks for your patience. What, what the fuck is it? <laughs> what the fuck is it? Guest star is currently in beta. Guest star tools allows you to create a guest slot browser source that you can arrange in OBS and then quickly add or change guests that appear in that slot directly. Guest star is currently in beta. I mean, some planned features are still a work in progress. I wonder how that would look like. I wonder what that would look like. One-on-one -on -one interviews, panel discussions, advice, or Q&A call-in show. Video speed dating! I've wanted a video speed dating thing on Twitch for so fucking long, dude! Please! Invite guests on to watch or commentate as you play a game. Okay, see, that one doesn't make sense. I'm gonna open up my browser again, because this is safe. This is a Twitch thing. Why? This, this makes me think of, um, like, the TikTok stitches, right? Or, like, you have the actual real TikTok video that you want to watch on the right, and then you have somebody else just, like, silently making facial expressions on the left. I don't understand. I don't understand those. I don't understand those. That's a new feature. I don't have access to that feature. It sounds interesting, but I don't have access to it. Stuck on a level, need coaching and advice, bring on one of your viewers to give you real-time suggestions and feedback. I mean, I feel like this only makes sense if you're a massive fucking channel that goes as fast as, like, Asmongold's, right? Because, like, otherwise I'd just be like, hey, chat, any anybody here know what to fucking do? Because I'm lost. My brain can't do this, dude. Host a talent show. Introduce chat to your IRL crew. Okay. Live stream a podcast, host a dance party, co-watch other content. Oh, dude, that would have made the that this would have been a prime thing. This would have been a prime thing for watch alongs already. Enable audio only as the default for guests. Interesting. But like what how do you how does it like I wanna know what it looks like, honestly. Like I wanna I wanna look I wanna see what it looks like when you have a guest star. Guest without a webcam. A webcam is not required for a guest to join a guest stream. If you're not using a webcam as a guest, your slot will display the Twitch user icon. Ooh! So we'll be able to, to stream our, uh, our fucking secret cam to this. Microphone and camera. That's pretty handy. Ready to join backstage. We're fucking hosting the Mori show here, dude. We fucking got it going. F2 save, F4 load, oh my god. I don't- I actually- I should look if somebody fucking clipped that, cause god damn. That was like a crowning moment of just... idiocy. You can finally e-date your fellow sweaty stream viewers. I uh... I just- I really want the Adult Swim digi-kiss thing, but in Twitch context. It was a peak coconut moment. <laughs> is this some serious desperation if you're sending a dating video to a VTuber? No! You don't send a dating video! You don't spend that kind of time on it. It's it's real-time dating. So, like, you, you get on, and, like, in DigiKiss, one of the Adult Swim, uh, like, employees would ask the two people on DigiKiss, like, random questions. And then at the end, they could decide if they wanted numbers, nudes, or neither. There's some new Twitch feature set where chatters can join in audio and video through Twitch. Yeah! Yeah, that's what it looks like. You'd, I guess you'd have to give people permissions to be able to join in. Because I feel like if people were just able to opt into it randomly, it would be very disruptive. And also possibly get people's streams taken down, depending on uh, who the people are. 
This won't ever turn out bad. Adult Swim did a dating block. Uh, it usually ran at like 1.15 to 4.15 in the morning, like anywhere in like a 15 segment in that time period. And I mean, I can I can bring one up. They're they're kind of difficult to find. Uh, some of them are on Adult Swim's website, and there was a specific there was a specific one, and I I would probably have to watch like literally all of these to find it. But there was one where like the Adult Swim question was ha Have either of you ever gotten an STD? And the woman said that she had gotten syphilis at one point, but it's like all cleared up now because it was years ago. And the guy was like, oh, I've had syphilis as well. And like, they talked about their experiences with it. And then when they were asked like numbers, nudes or neither, the guy was like, uh, neither because you got an STD and, and that's disgusting to me that, that like you would, would get one of those. And she's like, but you had it too. Like, it was so fucking funny. I was like, holy shit. The av average incel, honestly. Wait, he had- yeah, he had the same exact one! The double standards are real, dude! And like, I wish I could find that episode, but there are so many of these that we would literally have to watch, like, actually all of them for me- for me to be able to find it. Because I- I can't remember their names. I can't remember their names at all. Let's, uh... These- these guys have fucking weird-ass names. Let's try... Let's try this one. Live internet dating. Let's try this one. Man, they... This is certainly a show. Yeah, this is... This is fucking an hour long. <laughs> so, this is... They, you, the people in the chat, I don't know where their like voting website is, but people in the chat would be able to vote on who they wanted to see participate in the Digi Kiss thing. So this was like, this was like the ch the chatters picking what they wanted to see. Did you miss the sex cult? You did. We're we're wrapping up a little bit, you know. I I still have like fucking six different cults to talk about. So we might have to do a uh, part two. Vince getting zero love. They just they just don't like his Twitch emo looking ass, you know. Also, I don't know how loud this is. It looks like it looks like it's really loud on my end, so maybe I'll turn it down a little bit. Chat chat chose Johnny. Date loading with the milkmaid. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh my god, I'm his hair. Johnny. Hi, I'm Johnny or John. Nice to meet works. you, Johnny John. Nice to meet you so the um, people in the background are obviously I, Adult Swim employees I just um, acting out. Sure. Okay. Um, what a mess! I work at a grocery store. Ew. What um, do you do at the? At I'm, grocery store? I'm front. End, I'm a front end assistant. What do you? What do so you do at like the grocery store? I cast, do the I'm, <laughs> I'm a cashier, but I talk. also like manage the desk. I'm not a manager, but like I'll be at the desk sometimes, so I'm not just a cashier. man traveled in you time. You do stuff that they probably should pay you more for. Oh, absolutely, but I don't get paid <laughs> jack squat for it, so um, definitely not looking to stay there much longer. Um, <clears throat> but what the fuck is this? Oh, it was an adult swim dating show, and this, this is what I've wanted year. on Twitch for fucking um, so years, dude. Year. I've wanted um, okay. something like this, but, but with like right Twitch now. streamers and YouTubers. <laughs> Everything. What is your uh, What are your plans with that? Oh well, um, so I'm supposed to be working at an amusement park right now. Oh, how and why did your last relationship end? Oh no. Do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, my mm. last my last relationship ended in April. Um, it was my college boyfriend. We'd been dating for like two years, um, mm -hmm. and he kind of just broke up with me. So I was like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. That's a horrible there question reason, for a or... first date. They're distance, strangers as well. Keep that, distance, keep that in mind. That makes sense. I um, oh. I would not do distance again. Yeah. Um, my last relationship ended in 2017, actually. Oh my god. Uh, so it's been a while. I've, I mean, I've gone on dates, but um, well, that's a long time. <laughs> and it ended because, uh. Her brother died, actually, and it was like, couldn't handle that situation, so. Oh my god, what sorry for her. Yeah. Oh, I mean, this one's just a video yeah. loop. She's, I like it when they have the, like, real-time reaction ones instead yeah, of just a video that. loop of the people Damn, sitting in the background. Fuck. Yeah. 
I would not do distance again. Oh, Brother, sorry. you were on an internet sorry. dating show. You think she lives next door? Um, it's very possible work, that so since the know. Adult Swim uh, studio is in at Atlanta, Atlanta that they only took the people from like the local Everyone area. Like I don't know if they did or not, yeah, but that, that's I a possibility. Know. I'm the person who like sits on the desk and um, kids come up to me and ask me. Oh yeah, you're stuff. that person. I would yeah. go to the library all the time the as a fuck? kid. Yeah. But for us, it was like an old lady, so I was scared Can I... to go up to her. <laughs> oh, the, the bright arrow kids doesn't are... work for skipping ahead kids like five seconds of at a time? Of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, the way good. he licked his lips, I don't yeah. like that. Um, I mean, some kids, it actually helps with some kids, mm -hmm. I found. Because sometimes they get scared of me because I'm like like a guy and I'm, I have the beard and... What? So. I think they're more scared that you look like fucking <laughs> Ronald McDonald's drug addled <laughs> sister. Oh, I meant uh, to say yeah, brother. I am Freudian slip dude. <laughs> community college right now, and then I'm transferring to a four year, like very soon. You want to curl um, up and die? And I'm going to be a film major. Oh, so we're not too far away from each other in that aspect. I know I did musical yeah. theater, but and that's just primarily musical stage, theater and a film say, major. Some, like, film Where's the next question, dude? Training. Not as much as I'd like, I wanted to have, but mm -hmm. I could always find classes outside here. And that's something that's interesting, that interests me, you know. So what, um, what exactly interests you about, like, acting in a stage play? What's oh. your ideal date scenario? Well, that was not an interesting question. I want to skip ahead. Uh, Taco Bell and sitting in a park? <laughs> this fucking piece of well. shit would say I've Taco Bell! Jesus too. Christ! Okay. That's yeah. Fun. Roller skating, yeah, I'm not I'm not too good at it. But actually I just went like a week yeah? ago. Yeah. Sprained her wrist, rollerblading. Fell and she like dinged her elbow like rollerblading like, I can relate, dude. And then like fucking painful. What's wrong feeling? You're good at it. I'm I wasn't doing it for a few years. I Are just got like, back into it. With Taco Bell and sitting in the Are park. Like Brap fetish that, like, confirmed. Tricks around people. She no, doesn't no, seem interested. No, She's no, been no, talking the like same way ask. since the beginning. No. How can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> I hate the tricks people because there was this one guy and he was like skating through us. I was like, did he? Did she say I like, hate the church unstable, people or the tricks and, like, people? You can't like when you fall. When I fell on my. I guess the rollerblading, but I also photography. Photography. I was like, damn, that's hot. Dave Man, they're talking about roller skating for so fucking long. Fun. Um, I sort of like chaos energy. Like, I need a Scorpio to ruin my life. What? Um, <laughs> uh, but I, not, not, not too chaotic. I need not too chaotic. No, someone's no. Dating. Yeah. No, no, um, no, no, chaotic. Uh, he is a disaster. Type, I, like, I like like shoulder length hair. I like dyed hair. Um, I like sort of like a rounded face, so... That's very yeah. oddly specific. <laughs> I didn't even thought about physical... No, I usually go for blondes. Oh, ooh. Yeah. Icky. Ooh. I mean, when I bleach my hair. <laughs> oh, oh, question? Johnny, what's something chaotic you've experienced in the past? Oh, God. Um, where do I start? Oh, God. <laughs> um... Socially awkward people have awkward conversations, do we? Probably lots of, like... Erraticness in their feelings for me. What? Um... <laughs> what what does that, that even sense? mean? <laughs> like, like, uh... You're trying to play hard to get? You, you want people to play hard to get? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, this, this is a negative chaos. This is, like, dark, evil chaos. What the um, fuck? I would say a lot of the girls I talk to tend to flip-flop on whether they like me or not. So. Is it because you <laughs> look like you inside. eat ass in the prison line, uh, maybe? Well, um, you mentioned Scorpio. I'm not yeah. a Scorpio, and I have no Scorpio in my chart at all. But uh, No Scorpio in my I'm chart! Leo. Okay. Um, What's your moon and rising? I'm, I'm a Leo, Sun, Aquarius, Moon, Aquarius, Rising. I have... I have she she just fucking rattled that what the fuck did she just put a spell on us what just happened hold the fucking phone I'm a Leo okay. um, what's your moon and rising I'm a, I'm a Leo Sun Aquarius Moon Aquarius rising I have heavy Aquarius Le Leo Sun Aquarius Moon Aquarius right what the fuck just happened
happened? What the fuck just happened? <laughs> I, I, I know I'm a crab. That's all I know. <laughs> Chad, get the holy water. Oh my god. This is, this is peak astrology couple, dude. Holy shit. This guy has zero personality, just memorized a bunch of, Hey, women like this shit, let me recite it. Yeah, women, women like it when I tell them that I enjoy women who flip-flop on their feelings. You don't, you don't always have to show me affection or tell me you like me. Sometimes you can say, I don't know if I really want to be together. Maybe I want to fuck Brad today. <laughs> so I'm, I, you can get, you said weird, so there's the weird right there. Um, I am a, oh, sorry. No, you're good. Go um, I'm a Cancer Sun, Aries Moon, Shit, he's one of Capricorn me. Rising. Oh, stop! That's really scary. Why? Really? No, I just don't know my ex, my ex was exactly that, except for he was a Libra Rising. What the Sorry, fuck is about that? I mean, Capricorn Rising is pretty good to have. I yeah, like. I like. I don't. What the fuck like is happening? Sun, I feel like I'm just Cancer listening Cancer to a bunch of shit that makes no sense. There's a ton of um. <laughs> oh, sorry. Thoughts on non-monogamy? Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I I get it. Out here. I get it. Like I get it, but I don't think it'd be for me. No, um, I'm too jealous of a person. I've thought about. I've had people. We were talking about, about polygamy like today too. This is I relevant. I picked a good one, dude. Even if it's like no strings attached type thing, I can't even fathom it. So I, I, I get it. I definitely... I, like I get it. I get it too. Like I get the. You know, adults swim that, ask some pretty spicy questions depending no, on like either. how they feel out no, the people. Yeah. Like it, they ask some crazy shit sometimes. I've never tried it either. So. Because no, I feel like I could. I feel like it, it would be something like I would go around and do it, and I'd be like, "Ha ha!" But then the second someone else does it to me, I would be like, "What?" Like I would, you know, okay, be so hypocritical. Rules and for that's just for not, thee, but not for me. Not we know where she yeah, stands. I don't think I could even like do it. Because usually when I'm communication maybe, but what the fuck? Usually when I'm like in a thing with someone, um, in a thing, by the way, I don't really get, I don't get horny for anyone else usually, um, so that might be hard for me. <laughs> hey, but I mean, I feel, I feel I, I like that's just a lie. Maybe, I, was, maybe I feel, I feel like I'm looking, I'm looking at my documents here, and the lie detector maybe. determined maybe. that maybe. that maybe. was a lie. Maybe, maybe. Maybe I'll have some sister wives. Speaking of sister wives, um, speaking of sister too, wives, like love. People, so they don't get scared. I'm bisexual, so yeah. I don't know. Some people That's I've fine. had like I've had previous people who have been romantically intertwined with get uncomfortable with that. Um, I say something about like a girl, and they would be like, "Oh, so you like her?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, no, that doesn't necessarily mean I like her." If she's bi, um, that means she's into poly. Guys? That's like, not I, true at all. So annoying, it, you know, very very mean misconception anyway. that bi people are always wanting to like fuck other people and can't be monomonomous. So. Uh, most, I would say most girls I've been involved with have been bisexual. And I mean, I'm... What the fuck? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident, but I would say that I'm like 90% straight. Oh, so. he gay. He yeah. gay. Yeah. Like it's cool with me. We're all, all a little bit. Pippa's yeah. motherboard died. No, more... it's it's not a science. It's, it's not hard. A... Yeah, yeah. As I say, it's, it's really really hard. I, I feel like it's really hard for people to be all the Only way. The crazies would get yeah. close to him, dude. So, what bad habits do you have? Oh hell yeah, let's fucking go. Um, physical bad habits. I bite my nails. <laughs> <laughs> what? They, um, how so do they like, both bite their nails? Personality flaws or quirks that I have. Um, I have. I've been working on this for years because I feel like this is also what kind of torn my have has torn my like relationships apart is I have like struggles with like emotional inconsistencies so like oh he's like yeah uh, you have type for me bitch give me those emotional inconsistencies like, this is this harsh, is weird like, yeah literally oh, made for each other and the next day he'll try and roast me and I'll be like stop and sometimes that like makes people mad Lumi and I, also has PC I problems? I oh, why, no! but sometimes I feel like what the I, heck? people can't like value my feelings, but I do, I can be very, very dramatic emotionally, um, and I think that's probably one of my bad, like, worst habits. I want to know what his bad flaw it's, is, dude. I want to know. Because it really, it really bugs people, I know. <laughs> I can't stop staring I at his say, teeth. Um, my biggest bad habit is 
probably uh, caffeine addiction. Oh, that's boring, you <laughs> dumb uh, bitch! You take a caffeine pill and you just get a lot of work done. Oh, um, I've tried that. But um, they're putting everything on full display. Well, it's a TV show, you know. Personality-wise, sometimes I just skip ahead. Right Caffeine's now. boring. Well, I bite the um. Not to be gross, I bite the skin so like, I... off on the side. Yeah, oh. I do too. When I don't have enough nail. <laughs> what the heck? Actually, it's been, Code word it's been for beneficial mess. to keep my nails short because that makes uh. Plain... I feel like I'm mean. I'm. I like. And that's negging is a real strategy. It works. <laughs> okay. Like oh. in conversation. Like they're oh. like they're. Yeah. I'm like... You know, that's another thing because I know a lot of people. My love language is not physical touch at all. That's boring. I will get there. It's um, quality time. And then I, my giving love language is probably acts of service. Oh. It would be. He looks like an acts of service yeah. guy. I never thought about. Well, he's yeah, he's into the face sitting, dude. Love. But yeah, I don't like to. You know, I don't know physical touch. Okay, but I shower regularly. <laughs> Wait, what? Hold <laughs> um, on. What is your hygiene so, routine? Don't okay. be grossed out when I say don't shower every day, but I shower regularly. <laughs> I wash my hair twice a week. So That's really normal. Wash my hair. That's normal. Um, but I shower like every other day usually. Um, but when I get up in the morning, I wash my face, I brush my teeth. I, mean, I don't care about work, your hygiene I do, routine. I swear, I swear. Car wash. I won't say her name, but once because she caught herself doing it. She was like, "I'm like movies." <laughs> um. Why did what get heated? My friend really liked eighth grade, and I thought it was just okay. What? I don't, I don't care about police that. Police officer, and I like told her. Yeah. Oh. oh no, I like this date. <laughs> oh. They got oh, chemistry, yeah, dude. It's awesome. Fun. Yeah. How yeah. important are politics in a relationship? Oh, oh extremely shit. important for me. Oh, I'm here sorry. we go. I know that. A lot of people are like, come on, broaden your horizons, Selene. But I'm like, I will never date a Republican. I've done it once. Uh, I've also, like, I have conservative family members who Who could have seen that coming? Really, they, they poke the bear and they know they can poke the bear with me because I'm very sensitive and I'm very emotional. Oh my um, God. And I am very passionate in what I believe in. And... They have but how me so how much, much does what you believe in align with objective reality is the question again as as romantic i could be friends is a different story even though i don't agree with their politics like friends is a different thing but if i'm going to be like in intertwined with someone romantically or emotionally like i just can't do it unless they're very open minded which is very hard to find on the political spectrum coming from even like the left too. what what like, kind of an open mind do you need them to have bro like she's on, she's bisexual try, but she's not into polygamy she's not into anything crazy opinion, as far as we know like i'm very set i'm kind of stubborn it's the leo in me of course it's the leo see i have like oh i would say i have a window oh a window um okay we got we got a window theory i my last girlfriend was actually rather conservative um that's my of course, problem. I, was doing a lot of I always, I always up find, then, I always but, find dudes that have like um, nowhere even I, in the ballpark of like my beliefs, dude. It's, it's not left or right. I'm more concerned about it's up or down. Sure. Um, <laughs> I don't. I couldn't date like an authoritarian. That's for sure. <laughs> um, I don't know if I could either. So sorry to all the. Uh, off left and off right people in the chat. At, at least he seems a bit more oh, like yeah, I I mean, all, politically I mean, literate than she does. Right is kind of out there too, but <laughs> who dates yeah, a I'm dictator? Just... I am. I don't know. I think I'm just. I don't even like to think. I know. I guess I would. I, I would identify myself as liberal if we're going to try and do identity politics. But like, Fucking I feel like I'm just pro dude. people and like yeah. pro. I don't know, like pro rights for everyone. That makes any sense. What was your last porn search? <laughs> you go first. I don't know. Oh, he was, he was fucking quick to pass that off to her, um, dude. I, here's the thing. It's nothing. Imagine someone asking me that question with the weird there, shit that I, I searched. That's not even for like jerking so, off reasons. And 
because I, yeah. I've <laughs> That's how, I mean, that's how I knew it. Because my, I didn't, like, my grapple with bisexuality is, like, that's I'm not, not really That's not what id poll is. Id poll is literally shorthand for identity for politics. Women, what the but, heck do you um, mean? I'm very sexually attracted to women and that, that realm. Like, the hookup kind of culture sense, but, like. So, so you're more, like, hetero-romantic. Yes. But bisexual. I do that. Because people, okay. people. People don't know I'm bisexual because I've only really been in heterosexual relationships. But they don't know the things I've done in the bedroom. So, <laughs> yeah, my last so, porn search was. So if you're if you're bisexual person. but hetero romantic, does that mean you'll fuck mm. women but you won't date them? No, that seems kind of sexist, right? I think so, usually I just kind of look for like, you know, it sounds so gross. I kind of just look for like hot girls, you know, yeah. on the feed. What's on the feed. Um. I used to go on Pornhub, but now I don't anymore because um, it's a poll is not. Hub I'm a liberal. It pulls. I'm a white yeah, gay X Y Z. Well, yeah, they but tack on like a million, actually, a million a fucking time. labels to them. It's, um, it's shorthand for identity deeper. politics. I don't have like a huge sex drive, hmm. so like. I'm so confused. She says that she looks for hot women to just have sex with and doesn't want to date them. And then says she doesn't have a huge sex drive. I... I don't understand. I'm not constantly masturbating or anything, so... Imagine not and constantly masturbating to get those good feeling endorphins with how depressing everything is nowadays, dude. So... <laughs> I mean, I think... I think... Masturbating without porn is good. I think that's like natural. Yes! Uh, Holy shit! I agree with this fucking evil. clown guy! I watch it, but it's evil. I know it is. I've been offered many a porn job before. What? Really? Well, I guess in musical theater. So There's like, no. It's, usually, it's usually like <laughs> men coming to me being like, I'm trying to get into the porn business. Um, I got a job for you if you need it. There's like, no because way. I don't think I can like make it in the performing world and that kind of thing. But like, first of all, if I'm going to try and make dirty money, I'm going to be, I would, I would gravitate more towards being a stripper. You're, you're, tell you're telling, you're telling me that, that, that they the were out time. here like, asking Chris Chan to star I in porno, dude? Sex work is what value, the fuck? Is like, is valuable work. It's valid work. Oh, hijab! You made um, the same I fucking joke as me. I, I love you. We're on the same brain wavelength, dude. <laughs> it would, it would be something I would do. Um, so... Like, I, I, when men ask me that, Holy it's, shit. it's only men, too. We're having the revelations now? You can't um, unsee it? You're me, welcome? It's probably just because they think I can't make it in the theater world, but if I'm gonna get, like, a, like, a, another job, I'm not gonna do porn. <laughs> this, I mean, we've theater. been talking about murder all day, Tyruku. It only makes sense. <laughs> <It's fair. laughs> no. Um, I guess, I guess Pass I'm gonna get brain asked cell to back. No, I'm mine right Trump now. If I don't say do it. it. Um, just say it. Just say it. God, I don't. It was last night, but I don't remember. Um, <laughs> you fucking liar. So uh, I've been. I've been sort of experimenting with Elmer's wife. Um, I I've been sort of curious about girls with body hair a little bit. What? Why so is he so weird about that, saying that? I like um. Ooh. I like a lot of, like, exhibitionist stuff. He's, he's just like, I want my um, Amazonian dummy mommy to put I, a rainforest in uh, my face, dude. There's some other stuff I like, but we'll keep it at that. We'll go with What? Okay. That's very right. tame! That's kinky. Okay. Cool. <laughs> chat, do not post your last I search mean, term. Like, We're not the typing the pornography the in the chat. Fortunately. It's okay. I'd rather go... I, I've... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's I he's definitely really bluffing low, there. dude. He's hiding um, some sick like, shit. I really only dated or like t talked to people who are just like kind of you know normies. So the mm. rabbit hole seems interesting. This what seems like something I've never gone down before. So I welcome it with open arms. <laughs> that guy has a Queen of Spades tattoo. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't doubt well, I it. Guess I guess I guess I have to admit sometimes I look at hentai. He is someone yeah. who looks at hentai. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that I mean, shirt. Oh, oh. Like, 50-50. But like, 
Honestly, I'd like rather if I if I was going to watch no. porn like, to get off, like, like I'd rather own. watch hentai than actual porn. Like I get it. Yeah. Not like no, not, not, e not even like, memeing. Like anime. <laughs> anime. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Anime. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. I, I know. I see like ads for those like porn sites where it's like Lois and Peter Griffin like fucking and that just. Oh doesn't no, not like that. Like, no. I don't. Why would you say anime and then Lois and Peter Griffin? Holy shit, the normie. And I'm like, okay. I would never. I try to look at. Disney properties the least amount of time I can. What the fuck? <laughs> I hate Disney, by the way. You hate Disney, by the way? Oh, yeah, sucks. I, really I like Disney, I really but fucking hate Disney. I'm not a Disney. <laughs> but Disney's freak. on the right side of history. But I do have a favorite Disney movie. Which one? We don't have to watch it together. Um, I like Yellow Monsters Mermaid. Okay, okay, good. I'm glad I mean, it's not the like same one as me. And I like also like Big Hero 6. Those are like my two. What's a movie you would watch together? I don't care about what movie they would watch together. That's boring. Oh god. Really? Hmm? Sorry. My sister decided she wanted to try and FaceTime me, so my computer was like, their weekend really mean to me. My stepdad. Why did they get dad? Dad? It's actually. They don't melt, thank so, you. And I That's used fun. to hang out with my uncles a lot when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and I still sort of hang out with them, so think about whether or not I have, if I have a sibling or not. It's Sure. How much is your rent? Oh my god. Um, I live at my parents' house, so I don't pay Same. any rent. What? They I'm both live guy. at home? But when I did pay rent, I'm so sad that I, I moved out, dude. School. Um, I lived in a house with like four other people, mom and my dad. Uh, the deal is, is that I don't have to pay rent as long as I'm in school. Oh. oh. You're going to school for what you want to do. What was that? What was that question? Yeah. Yeah. Your Janet. Moving out so, in this economy, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Fucking stuff. stay home. Don't pay rent, dude. Yeah. Save your money. What's a controversial opinion? You Let's have? fucking go. What do they have that's controversial? I don't know if I can think of. I okay. I love this question because every time someone says they have a controversial opinion or like a hot take, it's always the most like milk toast, middle of the road, corporation approved bullshit you could come up with, dude. You own your own home? Well, congratulations, but also fuck you, because I don't know if I'll ever own one, and that makes me sad. <laughs> okay, let me see. Um, controversial opinion that I have. Mm -hmm. Um, I... I guess if I... Ah! Oh, God, thank you for following. Head, um, and a lot of the people even, like, my friends that identify with similar politics to me. Um, I don't believe in the death penalty. I don't believe in capital punishment. That's not a hot take! Kind of That's not controversial! Because I know a lot of people believe that serial killers deserve to die. And like, while that can be true, I just think that um, all life has value and they should rot. I mean, you know, it's also a money thing, I guess, but... That's not yeah. a hot take. Just... This is this is exactly what I said. Whenever people are asked for a hot take or a controversial opinion, they always give something that is a majority opinion, right? I was like, I could easily just pop off the top of my head and be like, I never got the COVID vaccine. Fucking come at me, dude. <laughs> Don't believe in capital punishment. So. Um, I think if uh, this country is... If people don't want this country to like burn in the next two years, I think we need a universal basic income. This this was in 2020, by the way. So this this was in 2020, and this guy is saying if you don't want the country to burn in two years, we need universal basic income. I that is a hot take. I would say, I don't I don't think that is majority opinion. So I I would say that is pretty controversial. So he he understood the assignment at least. I agree with you 100. percent that would probably it's not controversial be. to me, but to other people, it is. Also, I guess I... another controversial opinion I have is I'd rather live in Canada. <laughs> like, I think America sucks. <laughs> I would rather live in Canada, personally. But I... am I going to? Probably not. <laughs> I I used to have... I would, I would rather live in Canada, but am I gonna go? Probably not. Like, what? Fuck, put your money where your mouth is, baby. If you'd rather live there, fucking figure out how to go. F figure out how to get out of this hellhole that you so badly hate. Go. <laughs> Fuck off, Canada's full. That's not true. I've seen how much space you have with the seals. Even though I'm I'm on the left, I, 
used to have a lot of affinity for like the American identity actually and like the American aesthetics but uh, uh, COVID definitely radicalized me <laughs> and I've realized you can't admit that COVID radicalized you they'll ban you off of Twitter and Facebook oh wait I'm sorry no you're radicalized the other way the correct way give the corporations more money baby nowhere I want to live in the world actually that is cool or good cool yep. not even like sweden nowhere Maybe in sweden. the world is cool or good by the way you heard Talk it here first each other in multiple ways um i like your hair Thank i you. do not I like his really hair nice color for you i also really like your shirt i, I do like, the like the shirt you have going on in your bedroom your attic bedroom i like the oh lights my. and the posters i can't really make out what they are but like I wish my room was more decorated, like, just to kind of match If she doesn't say nice um, cock, she ain't a keeper! Uh, <laughs> I think you're really nice. Thank I you. think you're a little- I know, I hate I the hate word quirky, facial hair. Makes me I hate it hole, so much. Like, oh, kooky. I was gonna say, you seem really kooky, it, and I like it's, that. It, it's so probably, I, I you know, the low quality of the well, webcam bringing um, it out as well. I like the word wacky. Personally. Wacky, but it looks like it's painted on. It doesn't look like it's hair, and it bothers me. I like your hair as well it's a nice what do you use for it actually um uh, like the i use shampoo actually yeah or like the color the color oh the color <laughs> I um say the names i don't really remember usually i do like ion i go to like sally beauty and I, like, get Wacky is a lack of a personality. I'm, I'm so, I'm so random, XD. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't, I didn't, I didn't bleach my hair, so, like, because I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh my god, you showered too? Have to we have so much in common. Just, you know who else showered yeah, probably, like, though? Hitler. Like, um, and we so can't have anything in common with Hitler, so let's stop showering but I like right now. <laughs> eyes i thought they looked very pretty in your um introduction video thank you and you're you had like eye makeup that was really cool oh, thanks i didn't um, want to do it today <laughs> and i like God, yeah happy mars how does it feel you're literally hitler you over there taking your fucking showers politics. dude i hope so yeah so and i gotta i gotta get to know you more, so i know i feel that I could compl- I- and yeah, I was gonna say, I'm very good at complimenting people, but I'm very bad at taking compliments, so. She's very good at complimenting at people, but she said she stop. liked his hair. Yeah, that makes sense. Which- which looks like and Ronald ask McDonald. Ask each other a question you're curious about. This is gonna be like the most basic question in the world, I'm sorry, there's not a lot of depth to it, but it's important to me. Dogs or cats? Oh my god. Cats. Sorry. Well, I like. <laughs> She's a dog woman. Dogs confirmed, dude. I like both. Too. I like both. Oh, she's into um, wolves. She I'm needs like those sort of alpha dog knots, cats, dude. But I really like, like long-haired, like, um, lightly colored fur cats. Like love my cats. That's like a trap cat. question oh, nowadays. Like, you want to say cats because you assume women cat. like cats more than dogs, but then you gotta remember. She was yeah, in here. White girls fuck dogs. Majestic. But my sister um, has a long-haired gray cat, and she's very cute. But yeah, um, I'm more of a cat person, so I just always have to ask. It's important for me, so... What? Um, what? Why what did she get disappointed and say she was into wolves then? What the sure. fuck? Um, so, I like to listen to a lot of different music, but like... The, the music that I choose to listen to every day is like... 60s 70s oldies type oh music. god we're escaping that i don't uh, care about that or like people i'm talking to like give i mean that's um, awesome i'm well, that sucks i don't know if i can um because i don't i just like don't that's just not where i that's not what i gravitate towards what um but i do as this is the most modern i'm i'm gear do you like always what i well go go listen to always okay Okay. I did it more so to be petty, because I like to be petty sometimes. You could have just said you're a um, woman. Let's see. She's so painfully Haven't... middle of the road. <laughs> uh, I went on like a social distance date, and like mm -hmm. we sort of it went okay, but we sort of didn't talk to each other. 
True. Um, How do you go on like a date and not talk to someone? And I like texted her asking her how she was doing. Uh, she didn't reply to me, so. <laughs> Rip. I was that. But <laughs> during even a date if she didn't reply? What the fuck I'm is he talking about? Doing. Yeah, but that's I... mostly because I haven't had any alcohol. <laughs> what the fuck? I just have self control, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I feel, I don't know. Because a lot of people are like, yeah, I see Maybe the next text, episode so has more me, interesting like, people. Oh my god. I don't. I don't know. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to people. The people that I could send regrettable text messages to, I don't. Because we broke up in quarantine. Uh, of course, of course. I haven't played I've, I've been going on the valley. A switch. So I graduated and was like, okay, I'm giving me the last time I've talked to him. What the fuck is happening? Red flags in the state. Oh, oh, red flags? I'm a very, I feel like I'm a very open person. Um, or like a very- It's an I mean, hour. I know I said I'm not very open-minded in politics. That's really the only thing I'm very close-minded in, but like, I just like to meet new people. Wait, 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 wait. Somebody mentioned this earlier too, and she was saying that like she couldn't date someone who's not open-minded. And then she just admitted here that she's a very close-minded person. So why would you want someone who's open-minded? Because aren't they just going to preach to you the entire time? About how you should be more open-minded because you're not? Hmm. <laughs> People and you're someone you're you're someone that like I feel like I've never met before. Mm -hmm. Like you're kind of like you're a type of person I don't think I've ever really met what before. Fuck? What does she so, mean she's never uh, met someone I feel like, like that? It would be hard to identify any red flags anyway. But what? No, I don't think what? I if you had to pick one thing, what would be my red flag? Your Maybe fucking it was the hair. Hentai, but that's okay. We don't have to talk about it. Like we don't we don't have we don't have to talk about it. You know. I'm so angry. I missed <laughs> what she said. Are, okay, we don't have to talk about it. You're someone that like I feel like I've never met before. Mm -hmm. Like you're kind of like you're a type of person I don't think I've ever really met before. Okay. okay so okay. ask her the um, question again. I feel ask like it would be hard to identify any red flags anyway. But no, I don't think I have. If you, if you had to pick one thing, what would be my red flag? Maybe it was the hentai, but that's okay. <laughs> we don't have to talk about it. What? Like, why? Why is watching hentai instead of real porn a red flag? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> we all have our things. She's such a head ass, dude. Um, so. Uh oh. Being honest, go ahead. He about to murder her. Advice. Okay. When you when you meet guys, usually they don't care about your ex. Okay. To be honest, but Adult Swim were the ones that asked that question. They they were the ones that made the prompt. How can you hold that against her? That's that's not something she even did. I would say that's probably the biggest red flag, and that's like a minor one. Okay. Cool. <laughs> but you're good. You're, oh, he gave her the thumbs up? That's illegal now? She was set up! That's entrapment, dude! What's next? She brought him up several times? If, if it's already been brought up in conversation, then it feels like it's something that it's okay to talk about, right? So, like, I wouldn't... I wouldn't blame her for being like, oh, we already talked about this, so I can put something else in as a sentence, right? You know? We're <laughs> both room to Yeah, thumbs up is bad now. Zoom Zoomers are canceling the thumbs up emoji because it's too passive aggressive and they don't like seeing it. It makes them feel bad. And uh, yeah, Dato Melt, this is Adult Swim. This is Adult Swim dating show. I'm this usually really good at thinking about questions up on the spot. Awkward silence, dude. The question. Um... This guy's brain dead. Do I want to check if he's still single? He doesn't check he any does of my boxes except eat. for being male. <laughs> Checkers. Checkers. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, this is bad. The first responder. So the, no. these are the Adult Swim people commenting on the bad? date. They're having a good time. You, no. you missed the part where. Uh, what did he say, Jay? He said, uh, let me give you some advice. Don't talk about your ex-boyfriend on a date or something like that. Guys Wait, don't want to hear about your ex-boyfriend. And it's like, you need to relax. She didn't talk about him that <laughs> much. It was about, chill. like, oh, it was about video crossing. games. crossing. Yeah. yeah. Cool it, It's so dude. cringy. It's just like, dude. Look, he definitely took a, uh, 
a pickup artist class or two. Oh my god! How do you say that? Is, the neg- is that the neg? That was the neg. Oh man! I no, just, but that I was also like right there to begin with, dude. Die in like Fuck. three seconds. And then you and then you go back after they like recap what they think about the date. Once and it wasn't back. Here we go. Okay. Throw away. Where's the where's where's the transition? I get like Popeyes and KFC. And raising canes, which is pretty good. I've never been to a raisin canes. Well, okay, do you do you eat at Chick Fil A? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Would that would that would, it, would would that be a deal breaker for either of them if they ate Chick Fil A? They can't eat the Jesus chicken. I would. I used to eat the Jesus chicken because my work would get it fucking catered all the time. But I would never willingly go to a Chick-fil-A on my own. Not because I have anything against the company, but because there's usually a line wrapped like three fucking times around the building. And I ain't got that kind of time, dude. I ain't got that kind of time to wait in that fucking line. <laughs> I, value, I value the lives of LGBTQIA plus people more than I value a sandwich. Oh my god, she actually said the entire full fucking acronym with the plus? I would be doing my community a, dis- a disservice if I ate a Chick Fil A. I've had it once and it wasn't that good. I mean, ketchup does belong outside the fridge, dude. Nudes or neither. Wait, can I? Can I say something first? Uh, pegging? Yes. What? <laughs> well, okay. I just wanted to say that because he didn't ask. What? Why didn't he say that earlier? When they were talking about porn. He looks like a dude that would be into pegging. What the fuck? This this guy is like one bad porn search away from getting addicted to Fuda and not being able to perform sexually in real life, dude. Holy shit. Um, and that's the- Also, yeah, that's a good point. She forgot the fucking two-spirit. What a bigot. Uh, that's the digicus thing. Um, you go first, though. Um... I give you my number. I don't. I don't do nudes. Sorry. I mean, I do nudes for myself. But I don't do nudes for other people. What do you mean you do nudes for yourself? Like you take a nude picture and then you bring it up on your phone and you start jerking off and you're like, "Yeah, I'm so fucking hot. I'm gonna fuck myself so hard tonight. You're gonna get it, you filthy slut. That is me. Like, what the fuck? That's so weird." Unless you, you deem yourself worthy of them. I mean, so. I am not shy about my body, but numbers would work. Okay. Cheers. So, dude. Maybe we have to digi kiss now. Please digi kiss! Please digi kiss. What? How boring! You gotta like lean together and make you make you kiss on the mm-hmm. side! You bitch ass! Man, no, no fucking acting, dude. Am I supposed to be doing something? <laughs> please, please kiss. He was trying to be an e boy so hard, but you know, I fucking love these. I fucking love these. They they trimmed them down like really hard when they go like on on the TV block. Like they'd usually be about half an hour or so long on on TV. So, like, the hour-long ones, I guess I miss a lot of it when I watch them on TV. But, uh, if I hit- if I hit close, right? If I hit close on the player, how do I fucking get out of here? How do I fucking digi-kiss? Like, as you can see, these ones just say quarantine valentine. So these ones might only be during the coronavirus, and I'm pretty sure the syphilis one that I was talking about was prior to corona. Because this- this was on TV a little bit- before corona was like i'm pretty sure they have some stuff on youtube from like 2018 but it wasn't as frequent so i i don't even know if it would be possible to find the syphilis one cure's so damaged she thrives in tainted lands like yeah those two people they're boring as fuck but they look they look like they would fit together pretty well like they're maybe maybe they could make each other lives more exciting you know two two boring things come together and they they get they get nice right Awkward overload. Please bring back the medieval torture devices. We we got through talking about Nixbium, the Kidvelli sex cult, the Zion Society, 
Ogden sex cult, the Kingston clan. There was an Israeli sex cult and the Munster 1500s Anabaptists. I have one, two, three, four, five, five, six. I have six more cults I wanted to talk about. So we're probably gonna, we'll, we'll probably do a part two. We'll probably do some sex cult revisited. What was the, what was, what was the Tupperware sex cult? It was like Onisha or something. We'll probably, we'll probably have to do a part fucking two on this, dude. <laughs> who, who can, who can I send you guys today? Huh? Oh, who, no, not the who? double laughter. Where can I, where can I send you guys after this? Where, where can we go? Nice. You know, Fishman drinks heavily because of Pippa, but I'd push him over the edge. Don't say that! I want, I want to be part. I want to be a part of the sad girl industries. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'll go. Thank you. Thank you for the heckin' tier one sub, my guy. Thank you, thank you. Send us to Asmin. That would be hilarious. That, he's actually playing Lost Ark right now. So it's a game that I've played. You know what? Let's, let's fucking do it. Let's fucking, let's fucking raise, raid my dad. All right, my, my daddy. Ooh, woo, my my Discord okay, daddy. <laughs> oh my god. Where's this cocksucker? Twitch denied partner to Pippa. Wait, did they? Did she did she apply for it? Hold the fucking phone. I'ma be angry. Did she apply? Cause I I don't know if she streamed enough. Oh hey Pipkin Pippa. Thanks for applying to the partner program. Unfortunately, we cannot offer you a partnership at this time. What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, because there's, there's like a caveat. There's like a caveat where you can apply for partner even if you don't stream enough on Twitch to do it. Um, if you have like a massive viewership off the platform. But uh, it's, it's a Gundam has actually been denied for Twitch partnership like three or four times now. So he was just like, I'm going to give up applying because like who fucking cares? <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, it just it just said if you have a strong desire to become a partner, please complete the path to partner achievements. So it looks like Pippa applied with the with the caveat application of like, hey, I have this massive audience on another platform, so I should have partner on Twitch. And they just said no, use path to partner. Which like I think it's kind of dumb cuz she definitely has the fucking audience to do it, right? Like she gets very high viewership regardless of where she is. So I think she should have it, even if she doesn't stream on Twitch very often. But if that's the only thing holding her back, she just got to do like seven Twitch streams and then she's done. Like seven, seven Twitch streams, get the badge, never stream on Twitch again. <laughs> Amazed they would even consider her. She runs them down enough. I feel like Asmongold puts his dick in Twitch and their way that they're managed all the time. So... Like, if Asmongold can do that, and he costs them so much fucking money by streaming on his non-monetized account. So, like, they, they, should, they should have more qualms with him. You don't like Twitch? Wish we were on Rumble? If only Rumble had a massive viewer base, right? Like, I, I don't like YouTube, I don't like Twitch, but we gotta, we gotta play by the rules that are set before us. There's not really anywhere else to go, you know, that would, that would be reasonable. You haven't seen Asmin on his main account in weeks. He he put out a video talking about how the thought of streaming on his main account makes him feel incredibly anxious to the point of having panic attacks. So he's only been streaming on his like Zach account for a while. I don't know why. I don't know why he gets panicky because he he still has like a massive audience even on his off account. But I don't know. You need to go where audience is. I mean, but probably. Probably. Like, I, I don't think I could even successfully at this point move to YouTube uh, and be like, okay, right? Like, I, I would need to wait a bit longer, but I, I would like to try splicing in some YouTube streams. In Minecraft! Yeah! I love Twitch. I, on I only uh, destroy the Twitch headquarters in Minecraft. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get into the heckin', the heckin' recap here before we go raid daddy, dude. Wait! Wait, 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 wait! Before we do the recap, I have a sonnet. I have a sonnet to read. Hold on. You posted it somewhere. Where did you post it? If you go through the lines with an even tempo, it should flow naturally. I'm not musically gifted. 
I'm not I'm not musically gifted, dude. <laughs> so I I don't know I don't know what you mean if I go through the lines with an even tempo. I don't know what that means. The guy's fun to watch no matter what account. Yeah, fucking Asmin love, dude. Asmin love. It's clearly not safe. For Just read smoothly. What the fuck? Does that mean? All right, uh. <laughs> I don't know how to read sonnets, okay? Like, this just makes me blush. Pippa's uncontrolled chaos. I'm more like controlled chaos. Like, launch pad McQuack flying a plane. We're going to crash, but we're 100% gonna survive. What the fuck? I mean, I guess I'm glad I insulated you first. <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess, uh... Oh, Pipkin Pippa. You've encouraged me. My videos are just one proof to that. I dearly hope that you can truly see your vulnerabilities effect on chat. My creativity you well produced, an urge to make but inspiration thin. A cute pink bunny was I introduced. And there did my experiment begin. Your laughter brings such light unto my heart. Your choked back sobs pull tears from icy eyes. Yet when the storm clouds finally do part, I'm grateful for the woman tears are nice. So thank you, Pippa. Thanks for being you. Without you, I don't know what I would do. I need a lot of practice. I don't fucking read sonnets, dude. <laughs> Behold the mold bringer. Uh, people love. Golf clap. We needed, we needed, we needed that like room of uh, pretentiously dressed people in berets doing the finger snaps. I can't snap very loud because of my fingernails. <laughs> my my nails prevent me from snapping too loudly, dude. Oh yeah. All right, we got we got the recap in the other browser. I went through high school, right? Yeah, but I don't even remember reading any sonnets. All right, okay. And nor am I going to practice reading sonnets. They aren't relevant to my life. You'll give an example later. It was still nice. Yeah, just like you, you guys are like, yeah, just read it smoothly. Just, just read it. Just read it evenly. Like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Great job on the sonnet. It was well written. Only slightly shit posty, but very heartfelt. The master of mold, the germy goddess. Just read it monotone. What the heck? I don't know how to be monotone. I got, I got too, I got too much emotion. Wrap it. Just go real fast, like reading the fucking side effects on a medication. What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? I don't, I don't actually know many rap songs, so I don't know if I could like imitate Ben Stein. But Ben Shapiro. She's too joyzy for Mana. I'm not from fucking Jersey! What the fuck? Angie, pretend I'm on Adult Swim for a date. I am a normie and I have human interests. I hate Chick-fil-A and I am a part of the LGBTQIA2S+. I am grateful that I have allies. I would never date a Republican. I, I, was, I was trying to remember what the fuck she said. <laughs> beep, beep, boop. Two S plus, yeah, two spirit. And the plus is for everybody else that doesn't have their own letter yet. <laughs> Dude, and gave 25% of her earnings to Batley. How, how the fuck do I earn less on Twitch 
than literal prostitutes in a sex cult. Like, what is this fucking split, dude? I'm actually upset. I'm, actu I'm actually upset, dude. A cult is strongly associated with ancient Egypt. I mean, I guess that's fair. It is upsetting! Why does- why does a cult have a better fucking split than me?! How is that fair?! Twitch, you're very- you're very bad at pimping. I'm upset. Fucking Twitch, dude. What is- what is the- what is the next- what is the next recap here? What do we got? Would ask his followers to sew lingerie and model their finished products. Miss L said, we sewed lingerie that they would sell. They had a company that they would sell to local strippers. I didn't feel that it was wrong, and I didn't feel any pain. The only thing I felt was I hoped that I could stand out somehow to Arvin, and that he'll notice I'm here too. <laughs> she got that heckin' notice me, senpai! Energy, honestly. <laughs> the French are part of the divine plan! I, I have a plan! They'd probably say it was a test and then do a reassignment. That's true. The and dental the destroyer. That's us. rude. You see, and you have passed his test, my beautiful children. <laughs> Man, what am I doing? <laughs> I just went through like four different voices. French fries are divine. I do love French fries. When the dog is around, I can't call them French fries. I have to call them European potatoes. Because French fry are his favorite food. There's there's favorite food. All right, what's this? What's this? What's this one here? What's this one here? Arnold, you're just clipping out of your mind today. Mods doing work. Another time, he forced a different wife's head into a toilet and flushed water over her until she choked. This is this is literally something you can find on Pornhub. Like if if this guy had just gotten people who are into, this, I would have had a like, more interesting answer for that question. Wow, what just happened to my browser? I'm the, the I did show up on me. stream. I'm unearthing too much. I don't know what the fuck. I don't even know if that like came across on the stream, but that was that was fucking spooky. That was fucking spooky, dude. <laughs> but my heck is oh, eh. the it's feds the they're coming. It's not the tabs. You're a Nazarene. All we do is bitch about Catholics. Goddamn, bitch about everybody. Glowy is attempting remote control. I know, in real time. I can't close the tabs. That's what they want. They want me to close the tabs. I will not close submit. Close the fucking tabs. I will you not psychopath. submit. You can't detain me. I know my rights. <laughs> you missed out. Repulse. That's okay. The vod. The vod shouldn't get deleted. I think. I think. I think we're pretty okay today. You know. I just, I just, I just, I just, vod is fine. Everything's fine. We only. We only talked about crazy cult shit. <laughs> I only talked about crazy cult shit. Nothing bannable. All right, you guys, you guys asked for it, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna raid heckin' uh, Daddy Asmin. He's playing some Lost Ark, a game that I played a metric fuck ton of, and really wish that I could have played with him. Unfortunately, he did an interview with someone in my guild, but I never, I never got, got close to the sun. Maybe, maybe one day, but that day was, was not my day. <laughs> the steak vid turned you on to him, dude. Get- get you a man that can make you some steak and potatoes like Asmin. Alright, I gotta show him how to do- how to do potatoes not in the microwave, though. Micro- microwave is shit. Microwave is terrible. Wish I could do a lot with him. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> microwave potato love! No, microwave hate! But thank you, thank you guys for hiking, hanging out here. I'll throw- I'll throw up the raid after I do my thank yous! My thank yous tomorrow! Tomorrow, video game. All right, I said yesterday, no tangent, only video game, and we tangented the entire fucking day. All right, so no tangent, video, I'm gonna beat Observer. I have a whole fucking list of games you guys wanted me to play this month. I'm gonna beat this game. We're gonna find you decapitated, my fucking son. Okay, don't give me those X's. Don't give me those, don't, don't say Asmund Gussie, that's gross. I actually unironically hate the the ussy words. I I don't want to be associated with ussy shit. That's that's it's disgusting. Uh, but please please give him cute emotes though. I do I do like cute emotes when we when we raid people. That makes me happy. That makes me ziz. Just type in yourself, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you everybody for hacking hanging out. 
We got Hacken. A Dagu for 20. A Salt Shaker. Aged Leaf. Ax Axu 13524. Angelus Deva. Army of Flies. Arnold Newham. Axel Crescent. Azehara. Bad to the Bone 77. Banana Cup. BLT and Better Late Than Never. Blue Spear. Sarnabog 565. Captain Battleship, Chaot X, Chim1482, Cody098, Dolly Llama, Darelight, DD Dark Winter DD, Dead Mac, 1990, Default Use, Ditto Melt, Dragon Fat Deposits, Glamour Thrax, Edward Malice, El Ringo, El Ron Hubbard69, Epic Eleven, Evocation, Fry C, Funktavious Rax, Grade Ape 51, Grounder 71, Happy March 24, Hate Hating on Oats, Fuck 'em, Hex and Winter, Hiffler, Hikimoto, Hi Jeb, I am Binary Mind, Ice Shadow 1337216, I do some shit posting, Iridium Knight, It's Big Tiger, it's Ots, Jackal Hog, James Jameson, J Bush, GD, Josie K89, Kagayakuebi, Ho, Capsule, K Bailey098, Colonel32, Cloud Chaser, Crimnox, Kukahau2, Lars, Lars Sad Bro, Alex Keck, Matt YN, Manamajor15, Mantarok888, Marvin4242, Mast Cuckoo, Monkey Magic1945, Moon Berserker, Mr. Palu, Mr. Sazerac, Mr. Down Bad, Mr. Spanner, Nesri, Nyam, Orange Crowbar Man, Phosphorus7, Pillage, Prof J. Volts, Deep Staurinsis, Repult, Red of the Sun, Redox31415, Rexorata, Rock Van, Rusty Row, Ryuzumk, Saint X, Siami, Sad, Sadulicho, Sialok, Scrub CH, Sentient Crabu, Sugars, Sh Shugazi 2, Skilky, Son of Boog, Stray Wolf X, Streamer Psychosis, Trolling, Talati 786, Talon DX, Tamagoopy, Tamarin Tentagon, Teddy Taco Sauce, Terra Jester, The Smiling Reaper, The Hellion One, Tim Tam Tiani, Tony the Mighty, Trigger Point, Tyruku, Ugly Puppy, Umbra Asterum, Unholy Halo, Erst, Ushion Lover, Mind Break, Ziz, 39808, Yuri, Zeketsurai, Zero Phantoms X, and Zexel Gaming! Thank you! Thank you everyone for hanging out. Sex Cult Saturday was a success. I had a fucking good ass time. We're gonna we're gonna raid Daddy Asmin playing Lost Ark. I don't even know what fucking raid this is. Mayhem Legion Commander Kakui Sidon. Give him give him some cute ass fucking emotes. I don't know if his chat's follower only because I've been following him forever, so hopefully it's not. <laughs> But we'll see! Thank you for hanging out! Who we'll fucking video game tomorrow? I promise! Hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Thank you again for spending Saturday with me. Bye bye!